Chapter 201 Gold Armored Beast The words, Thunder God General, seemed to contain infinite attraction. Many young people were attracted. Zhou Wen and company went over to take a look as well. After all, Thunder God General was a very famous companion beast. He had the reputation of being the best offensive pet, with potent offensive abilities. Be it his companion form or his pet form, he had extremely powerful attacks. The most famous aspect of Thunder God General was his primordial energy skill, Thunder God Augmentation. It could augment a person with lightning from the void, giving a person infinite power to battle an enemy. Every strike had terrifying lightning power accompanying it. It struck extreme fear into the hearts of people. Furthermore, even in his companion form, Thunder God Sword, Thunder God Augmentation could still be used. Even someone who had never cultivated a lightning elemental primordial energy skill would be able to use the Thunder God Sword that came with sword beams imbued with lightning. The reputation of Thunder God General, as the number one legendary offensive pet, was definitely not unfounded. However, that was if one had the Thunder God augmentation. However, Thunder God had a total of four skills, so even if one hatched him, he might not have Thunder God augmentation. Without the Thunder God augmentation, Thunder God General was an ordinary legendary companion beast. It was nothing compared to the best legendary offensive pet. Therefore, whether Thunder God General was worth anything depended on whether he had the Thunder God augmentation skill. Unfortunately, the items sold here were all companion eggs. Even with X-ray vision, it was impossible to tell the stats or skills available to the companion beasts. Hence, there were many onlookers, but none of them were willing to pay for it. The price of a Thunder God General companion egg was 2 million. This was definitely not too much to buy the best legendary offensive pet. However, if Thunder God General didn't have Thunder God augmentation when he was hatched, he would be worth at most 100,000 or so. Spending 2 million to buy it was no doubt a waste. Therefore, many people just watched. It was very nicely priced. It made those who wanted to buy it still feel the pinch. Yet, they would find it unacceptable giving it up. After all, Thunder God General Companion Egg was extremely rare. Joe Wen pretended to take a picture with his phone and glanced at Thunder God General Companion Egg stats. He discovered that it was Thunder God General with two skills, and one of the skills was the Thunder God Augmentation. If it's a Thunder God General with Thunder God Augmentation, two million would be worth it. I'm just afraid it doesn't have it. Spending two million for trash would be a terrible loss. Li Xian was also tempted. If you know that it has the Thunder God Augmentation skill, would you even have a chance of making a comment? It would long have been sold. A blonde you said disdainfully. That's odd. Why are there dogs barking randomly in Holy City? Li Xian asked Zhou Wen in surprise. Perhaps someone's dog wasn't tied up and ended up running out. Zhou Wen added. The blonde youth's expression instantly darkened, but he didn't turn hostile. He only said coldly, Are the people from East District so uncultured? For us from East District, that's only reserved for the culture. Li Xian said, unwilling to be outdone. Very good. I won't argue with you. After we enter the Holy Land, we'll settle the scores. The blonde youth said without any expression. I'll be your guest. After Li Xian said that, he ignored him. He looked at Thunder God General Companion Egg before asking Zhou Wen. Unfortunately, Wang Lu isn't here. With her luck, she would definitely be able to help me get one that has Thunder God Augmentation. It's only two million. That shouldn't be a huge sum to you. It's good to bet. If you score one and obtain the best legendary offensive pet, it will be worth a lot more than two million. Zhou Wen secretly nudged Li Xian in the direction, hoping that he would buy the Thunder God General. He already had Banana Fan and had recently picked up Bamboo Blade. He didn't lack any weapons. As for offensive pets, his mutated demonized general was in no way inferior to the Thunder God General. There was no need to buy another one. All right, I'll take that bet. Li Xian gritted his teeth and bought the Thunder God General Companion Egg under everyone's gaze. Two million to buy a Thunder God General Companion Egg. There are so many Vulgarians in rural cities. Someone mocked Li Xian. Although Thunder God General Companion Eggs were rare, they were only worth four to five hundred thousand on the market due to the low probability of possessing Thunder God Augmentation. Buying it for two million was indeed expensive. This was also why nobody had bought it despite the huge crowd. However, Li Xian didn't mind. He went shopping with Zhou Wen and Ah Sheng at other stalls. He had plenty of wealth and wasn't stingy with his money. He bought several legendary companion eggs consecutively. Will you have the time to incubate so many companion eggs? Zhou Wen said with a frown. Since I can't incubate it outside, I'll take it into the Holy Land. After all, we need to stay in the Holy Land for at least 10 days. There will be time. Li Xian seemed to be full of confidence, but he changed the topic and said, However, I want to incubate Thunder God General before entering the Holy Land. I'm just too curious. I wonder if he has Thunder God augmentation. 
There were rooms prepared by the Li government. Li Xian and company each requested a room, while the former began incubating the Thunder God General Companion Egg. Zhou had already knew what the outcome would be, so he wasn't too concerned. He sat down on the sofa in the living room and took out the companion egg Ouyang Lan had prepared for him. He glanced at it with his mysterious phone. Gold Armored Beast, Legendary, Life Providence, Steel Protection, Strength, 19, Speed, 11, Constitution, 20, Primordial Energy, 12, Talent Skill, Tempered Steel, Companion Form, Armor. Just by looking at the attributes, he knew that the companion beast was definitely an excellent grade legendary companion beast. Furthermore, it was one with an extremely high defense. It was very likely to be on par with the three-eyed golden warrior. The most critical thing was that the gold armored beast's companion form was armor. It was obviously given to him by Ouyang Lan to save his life. Li Xian ran out from his room with a broadsword wrapped in lightning bolts as he shouted excitedly, Jackpot! Jackpot! I never expected that I'd have such a day! Old Joe! My Thunder God General has two skills. One of them is Thunder God Augmentation. Don't tell me you want the entire world to know that you have a true Thunder God General? Zhou Wen was speechless. What's the harm? Although as Li Xian said that, he quickly stowed Thunder God General away. With no one knowing, Thunder God General would make an excellent trump card. They did some preparatory work before bidding Ah Sheng farewell, in preparation to head for the Holy Land's entrance. Go in later. Head in when the 24 hours are almost up. That way, you can avoid meeting most people. They won't wait that long since they will be vying for the qualifications. Ashen said. All right. Zhou Wen was very patient, so there was no rush. Although Li Xian didn't think so, he patiently waited for Zhou Wen to head in with him. Zhou Wen had previously asked if Li Xian wanted to head in himself to prevent him from being marked by the use of the six hero families. However, Li Xian didn't mind at all. Since they came together, he believed that it was natural for them to enter together. Chapter 202 Sky Battle The way he entered the Holy Land made Zhou Wen question life. He and Li Xian stood on a stone pillar, and the stone pillar descended like an elevator. Zhou Wen originally believed that the Holy Land was underground, but after the stone pillar's long descent, he suddenly felt the ground beneath him give way. Then, he realized that he was in the air, surrounded by floating clouds with mountains beneath his feet. How is this possible? We were clearly descending, so how did we end up in the sky? Zhou Wen was alarmed, as he sized up the ground beneath him. Soon, he realized that the area below wasn't Holy City's territory. There were no mountains near Holy City, but there were endless mountain ranges below. Li Xian didn't have the Godfiend life providence, so he didn't have the ability to levitate, preventing him from examining his surroundings as Zhou Wen did. Instead, he summoned a huge eagle pet and landed on its back. At the same time, he flew towards Zhou Wen and pulled him onto the back of the giant eagle. How magical! This is the Holy Land! A sacred place. No one knows where the Holy Land is, but it's definitely not underground anyway, Li Xian said, as he looked at the surrounding mountains and rivers. Which holy temple are you going to? Zhou Wen asked. I cultivate in the invincible Kane divine art. This primordial energy art corresponds to the Kane infinite physique, so I'll be going to the Kane holy temple, Li Xian replied. It's highly likely that the family made you cultivate the sun strafe art, right? In that case, you should go to the sun divine temple. However, from the looks of it, your primordial energy doesn't look like it's of the sun strafe art pedigree. I've never cultivated the sun strafe art, so it doesn't matter where I go. Since you are going to the Khanate Holy Temple, I'll go somewhere else to try my luck. Zhou Wen naturally wasn't willing to compete with Li Xian. Every physique only chose one person. If Zhou Wen snatched it away, Li Xian would definitely not have one. All right, where shall we meet later? Li Xian asked. I haven't decided where to go for the time being. If there's nothing special, let's meet up after we exit this place. If Zhou Wen wanted to vie for the special physique, he probably had to fight the youths from the six heroes' families. He was unwilling to involve Li Xian. In that case, I'll accompany you to find a suitable holy temple. After all, the test lasts ten days. It doesn't matter when one visits it. I'm not in a rush either, Li Xian said with a smile. Seeing how Li Xian insisted on accompanying him, Zhou Wen could only say, If that's the case... Let's head to the Khanate Holy Temple first. All right. Li Xian didn't stand on ceremony as he let the giant eagle fly east. Shortly after they flew off, they saw more than 10 people riding on flying mounts. Leading them was someone Zhou Wen still remembered. It was none other than St. John from the Cape family. Zhou Wen, do you think you can escape trouble just by entering late? John said coldly as he rode on a flying lion. As they spoke, 
The group had already surrounded Zhou Wen and Li Xian in all directions. Unable to charge out of the encirclement, the giant eagle could only spiral around in the middle. John, if you wish to have another battle, I'll take up your challenge any time. Zhou Wen shot Li Xian a glance. Li Xian immediately understood and controlled the giant eagle to land on the ground. Trying to run? Aren't you an overly naive one? John sneered as he gave the order. More than ten people together, with their companion beasts attacked simultaneously. Without a word, Zhou Wen summoned the banana fan and sent a gust of granding wind at John. I wasn't prepared the last time, allowing you to successfully sneak an attack on me with your companion beast. This time, you won't have another chance. John clearly came prepared. Upon seeing Zhou Wen's granding wind approach, he didn't fluster or show any intention of dodging. When the granding wind reached John, it was as if it had encountered an invisible barrier that splashed sideways. No damage was dealt to John nor the lion beast that he was sitting on. Zhou Wen was slightly surprised, and he found it odd. However, time didn't permit him to ponder over the reason. The attacks of the other ten-plus companion beasts had already circled him, nearly sealing off all routes of retreat for him and Li Xian. Just as Zhou Wen was about to go all out, he suddenly heard a young bird's tender chirping. It was the yellow-feathered chick. This fellow had been following Zhou Wen all this time. As it stood on Zhou Wen's shoulder, a mere chirp was enough to make the dozen or so flying pets suddenly lose control and be thrown into disarray like a kite with a broken string. Zhou Wen took a careful look and knew that it was all thanks to the yellow feather chick. The flying companion beasts, who were randomly flying about were all birds. Only a minority, like John's flying lion, wasn't affected. With the opponents line up in chaos, there was a weakness to exploit despite the attacks of the ones remaining. Li Xian controlled the giant eagle to rush out of the encirclement and quickly landed on a nearby mountain. Chase after him. John gritted his teeth and chased after him. The dozen or so disciples of the six hero families also joined in the chase. John, are you really going to fight me to the death? Zhou Wen stood on the back of the giant eagle as he stared at the chasing John. You don't have to die. We are very fair. Back then, and Tianzue injured our family members. Now, since you are here on behalf of the In family, we will also be very fair. All we need to do is cripple your primordial energy sea and maim you, John said coldly. And Tianzue had crippled your family members once. Don't force me to do the same thing, Zhou Wen said as he looked at the approaching John. Ha ha, do you really think you're in Tianzue? You're just representing the In family. Your name isn't in Tianzue. The pets you rely on are completely useless against me. Who are you to act so arrogantly in front of me? John held his sword as he began to condense light of judgment. He was prepared to finish Zhou Wen and company in midair, preventing them from having a chance to escape back to the ground. Zhou Wen didn't say anything else as he took out the bamboo blade. With one hand holding the scabbard and the other holding the hilt, he said to Li Xian, You leave first. Then, he leaped up and flew towards John who was charging at him. Old Zhou, what are you doing? Li Xian was alarmed. He wanted to stop Zhou Wen, but it was too late. So you have a death wish. John knew that when fighting in the sky, the death sentence was practically given to those without a flying mount. Without any hesitation, he slashed out with his sword, transforming into a gigantic sword beam that tore towards Zhou Wen. The few youths behind him who weren't using avian mounts also used their own primordial energy skills. Together with John, they surrounded Zhou Wen. Several beams of light instantly intersected with each other, nearly sealing off all possible routes of retreat for Zhou Wen. This was difficult to avoid even on land, much less when in the air. Chapter 203 A Man Doesn't Need Wings Zhou Wen, you won't be able to escape today even if you have wings. I will return the humiliation you made me suffer at Sunset College with interest. The Sword of Judgment in John's hand slashed down. More than ten companion beasts spat out all sorts of light blasts as they worked with the humans to attack the encircled Zhou Wen in the air. From the looks of it, it was impossible for him to escape. Unperturbed, Zhou Wen continued to rise with bamboo blade in hand. At the instant light of judgment and the numerous attacks were about to land on him, Zhou Wen exerted strength in his legs as though he had stepped on an invisible staircase in the air. He accelerated rapidly and changed his trajectory to avoid John's light of judgment. John and company thought they were seeing things. John was right. Zhou Wen was indeed unable to escape if he had wings. Even a real bird would probably not be able to escape the encirclement. Furthermore, Zhou Wen didn't have any wings on his back, but he seemed to be walking on flat ground in the air. It was as though he could move as he pleased. Zhou Wen moved erratically in the sky. In a completely impossible situation, he tore through John and company's encirclement and, like a ghost, rushed in front of a youth riding on a flying bird. The youth wasn't a weakling either. He drew his saber and slashed at Zhou Wen, condensing potent battle aura into a corporeal blade beam. 
Zhou Wen spun like an eagle as he dodged the attack, brushing past the bird. Bamboo blade instantly unsheathed itself and flashed like a cold beam of light. After Zhou Wen flew several meters away, the bird split into two and blood splattered across the sky. Instantly, John and company felt their bodies turn cold. It wasn't as if they had never seen anyone with better movement techniques and saber techniques than Zhou Wen, but in the sky, to be able to fly freely without any external help was terrifying. It would be courting death to fight someone like him in the sky. Unfortunately, they came to that realization too late. Zhou Wen was like a specter in the sky as his body flashed. He slashed out again and again with bamboo blade, aiming for the mounts instead of their owners. Just as John had said, if one did not have a mount in the sky, death was almost a certainty. Those who relied on their mounts clearly couldn't be as agile as Zhou Wen. With the difficulty of dodging plaguing them, they watched their own mounts being killed. Blood filled the sky, and feathers poured down like snow. The youth whose mount had been sliced apart cried out tragically as he fell to the ground. Everyone, return to the ground! John shouted out loudly, feeling extremely infuriated. He originally thought that killing Zhou Wen in Midair was a plan that would be foolproof. But who knew that this would end up becoming their greatest disadvantage? Ah! Tragic screams were heard constantly as people fell onto boulders, fracturing their legs. Only a few people with backup flying pets and flying equipment were spared. Fortunately, these fellows were all from the families of the six League heroes and were the children of the League's wealthiest. They had plenty of good things on them, so they didn't fall to their deaths. The ones that had been roped in to make up the numbers suffered terribly from the fall. John tried his best to control his flying lion, hoping to land back on the ground, but Zhou Wen was too agile in the air. He eventually managed to cleave off the head of the flying lion. John was infuriated as a pair of snow-white wings sprouted from his back. However, he didn't charge at Zhou Wen, and he sped towards the ground. Even with wings, John didn't dare fight Zhou Wen in midair. The mobility his wings gave him was on a completely different level from Zhou Wen's aerial combat ability. How could Zhou Wen let him off? The saber was like a rainbow as it chopped at John repeatedly. Although it wasn't able to kill him, it had severed one of his wings. John lost control of his body and fell to the mountain peak below. He almost broke his bones in the process. Li Xian was dumbfounded as he could not help but laugh out loud. Indeed, you can't escape even if you have wings. John, you're really an honest person. Shou Wen had no intention of letting them off. He charged straight for the mountain peak and landed on it. The group blamed the terrible loss they suffered for their immobility in the sky. So now that Zhou Wen had dared to land, they didn't miss this opportunity and immediately surrounded him. A stocky man held a huge shield with one hand and a huge hammer in the other as he charged straight at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen didn't draw his saber. Instead, he struck out with a gust of granding wind with a banana fan, sending the man's hammer and shield flying. With a loud bang, the man slammed into the mountain like a cannonball, creating a crater in the wall. His hammer and shield flew out of his hand as blood spewed out of his mouth. His hair and brows were covered in a layer of frost. After struggling a few times, the man was unable to stand up. As expected, there's something on John that counters the granding wind, preventing him from suffering its effects. After coming to this realization, Zhou Wen had switched his primordial energy art into Dao Sutra. His life providence then turned into the Dao body that could constantly restore his primordial energy. Seeing a few more people charging at him, Zhou Wen waved his fan again. The few of them were instantly blown away and their bones fractured from the fall. They rolled on the ground screaming. Seeing that Zhou Wen had taken care of the dozen or so people with a few flaps of the fan, John turned around and tried to escape. Didn't you want to fight me? Zhou Wen wasn't willing to let him off as he slashed his bamboo blade at John's back with a cold beam. John raised his sword to block, one that was transformed from a legendary companion egg. Bamboo blade immediately snapped it and didn't stop as it hit John's armor, leaving a foot-long wound on his armor. Blood immediately gushed out. John's expression changed drastically. As he retreated, he summoned his companion beast, hoping to fend off Zhou Wen. Unfortunately, he was already in a state of frenzy. He had no intention of using the companion beasts to battle Zhou Wen. All he wanted was for them to hold Zhou Wen back so that he could escape. The bamboo blade in Zhou Wen's hand shimmered as the legendary companion beasts were cleanly sliced through with a single slash. Before John could run far, Zhou Wen's palm struck his back, sending blood spewing from him as he fell to the ground. It only took moments to have more than 10 people collapsed on the ground. Not a single one of them could get up. Kill me if you have the guts. John shouted angrily when he saw Zhou Wen stepping on his chest. Wouldn't killing you be too easy on you? Zhou Wen thrust out his bamboo blade and pierced through John's primordial energy sea. Zhou Wen, this isn't over. John wailed in excruciating pain 
eager to rip Joe into shreds. You are qualified, Joe Wynn said coldly. He waved his bamboo blade once again and tore off John's armor, revealing a strange necklace around John's neck. There was crystal embedded in the necklace, and within the crystal, there seemed to be swirling wind. It formed a vortex within, making it look rather special. It looks like it was this item that caused Grand Eam Wind to lose its effects. Joe Wynn raised his saber and broke the necklace's latch, allowing it to fall into his hands. Chapter 204 The Goddess of Wind's Protection Li Xian's eyes lit up when he saw the necklace. He could not help but cry out. I asked that the goddess of wind's protection? You know what this is? Zhou Wen asked as he held the necklace. I've only heard that there are extraordinary treasures in some dimensional zones. Those treasures possess magical powers. The goddess of wind's protection is one of them. Legend has it that it's a magical necklace that possesses the power of the wind. Wearing it can give you damage immunity from any wind element. However, according to what I know, the goddess of wind's protection likely belongs to the Kamar family. Furthermore, it's unique so I've no idea if it's real or not, Li Xian explained. It doesn't matter if it's real or fake. Zhou Wen stuffed the necklace into his pocket. Since this item could resist the granding wind, he naturally didn't want anyone else to possess it. When John saw the scene, he was so angry that he vomited blood. The necklace was indeed the goddess of wind's protection. In order to counter Zhou Wen's banana fan, member of parliament Cape had paid a huge price to borrow it from the Kamar family. Now, it had been snatched away by Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen ignored John as he walked towards the others, with the bamboo blade in hand. He ignored their pleas or insults as he stabbed through their primordial energy sea. Quite a number of people fainted either from the pain or anger. Li Xian, help me search. They must have bought quite a number of companion eggs at the market before they came. Let's see if they still have any on them. As Zhou Wen spoke, he personally pulled away a young man's clothes and found two companion eggs. Li Xian didn't stand on ceremony either, as he rummaged through the bodies of the rest. Soon, they had found 14 companion eggs which were likely at the legendary stage. As for what type they were, it wasn't possible for them to tell immediately. John and company see that in anger with clenched teeth. Back then, and Tianzue had crippled his peers, but he didn't do anything else. Zhou Wen and Li Xian were even more ruthless. Not only did he cripple them, he even took everything from them. Let's go! After searching, Zhou Wen turned around and left, ignoring John and company. Old Joe, what sort of movement technique was that? It's way too cool. You actually managed to float in midair like Superman. Li Xian asked Zhou when as he looked at him enviously. Clearly, he was somewhat tempted. That's not a movement technique. Unless you give up the invincible Kane divine art, you can forget about it. Zhou Wen told a half-truth. Even if Li Xian was willing to give up the invincible Kane divine art, he might not be able to master the Godfiend era. Zhou Wen's Godfiend era was simulated by the Lost Immortal Sutra not that he had succeeded in cultivating it. When Li Xian heard that, he heaved a sigh of relief and said depressingly, Forget it. Although flying in the air is very cool, I'm not bad either. The two of them headed east. They knew that Khanate Holy Temple was in the east from maps drawn by their predecessors. However, the exact location was unclear. Every time someone entered the Holy Land, the map they drew was different, but the general location of the Holy Temple's temple was never wrong. There were no dimensional creatures in the Holy Land, so the duo didn't encounter any danger. After walking for more than half a day, they saw a sea in front of them. On the cliff by the seaside stood an ancient purple building. It should be there. Li Xian was delighted as he got Zhou Wen to rush over. By the time they reached the ancient building, there were already several youths standing in front of the building. Clearly, they were all here to receive the Khanate Holy Temple's test. When they saw Zhou Wen, they were slightly taken aback. They were somewhat suspicious as though they were wondering how Zhou Wen had managed to come this far. From their expressions, Zhou Wen knew that these people definitely knew that John was about to besiege him and Li Xian. Zhou Wen, you sure are lucky. You actually weren't stopped by John and the rest, said a black rogue youth coldly. My luck has always been pretty good, Zhou Wen said. However, your luck has come to an end. My goal is in Jing. I found it beneath me to fight you, but since she didn't come and that useless bomb John failed to stop you, I just can't let you return whole now that you have come to me yourself. I have to leave some mark on you to show in Tianzua when you return. The youth in black said arrogantly. What's with all the nonsense? If you want to attack, hurry up. Don't delay us from accepting the Khanate Holy Temple's test. Zhou Wen said casually. Without another word, the black robed youth released terrifying black flames from his body. He threw a punch at Zhou Wen like an erupting volcano. Zhou Wen didn't use the banana fan. Instead, he switched his primordial energy art to the ancient imperial sutra and struck out with ashen palm, meeting the black rogue youth's fist. 
As their fist and palm met, the youth in black felt a scorching pain in his visceral organs. He opened his mouth and spat out a large pool of blood as his body limply collapsed to the ground. The smiles on the faces of the youths beside him froze, and a chill ran down their spines. They knew the strength of the black-robed youth very well. He was rather famous among the six hero families, and was in no way inferior to John. However, he couldn't even withstand Zhou when strike. Could this be another Intianzwa? They had an ominous feeling. In the middle of the mountains, a beautiful butterfly leisurely flew past and, surprisingly, there was a person sitting on its back. As the butterfly flew, the person revealed a look of surprise. The butterfly changed its direction and landed on a mountain peak. More than ten people were lying on the mountaintop, moaning in pain. It was John's group. Lance, you're finally here. John was overjoyed when he saw the person on the butterfly's back. What happened? Lance looked at John and the others while asking in surprise. We had our primordial energy see destroyed by Jolin. He even stole our things. John recounted what had happened through gritted teeth. Finally, he pleaded that Joe and his powerful companion beasts aiding him, and we weren't his match. Now, you are the only one who can maintain the dignity of our six hero families. Perhaps no one else is his match. This show is rather interesting, but I've already said that I'm not interested in him. Furthermore, you were the ones who went knocking on his door and ended up being crippled by him. You only have yourselves to blame for your lacking skills. As Lance spoke, he patted the butterfly beneath him, and it immediately rose up and left the mountain. John and the others were stunned. They didn't expect that Lance would actually disregard the solidarity between the six hero families. Chapter 205 The Holy Temple's Invitation Zhou Wen sat on the stone steps outside the Khanate Holy Temple to game while Li Xian entered to take the test. The youth in black and a few others had long disappeared. The youth's primordial energy C had been destroyed and he had even had his possessions robbed from him. They didn't dare stay here any longer. Zhou Wen couldn't help but feel somewhat disappointed that he had died once again at the hands of the golden flying ant. He didn't know how many times he had been killed by it, yet he had failed to touch the white cocoon. Zhou Wen really wanted to know what was inside the white cocoon. Why are you the only one here? Did no one else come here to the Khanate Holy Temple? Just as Zhou Wen was about to restart his game, he saw a man descending on a butterfly. The man glanced at the sealed temple door and then looked at Zhou Wen. There's another person inside the Holy Temple. Zhou Wen replied when he saw that the man didn't harbor any ill intentions. After alighting from the butterfly's back, Lance unsummoned the butterfly and looked at Zhou Wen's phone. I enjoy playing mobile games too. However, I play fighting games. These kinds of repetitive games aren't suitable for me. Saying that, Lance took out his cell phone and launched a game. It's a pity that the magnetic field here is too unstable and causes excessive signal interference. Otherwise, we could network and play together. I don't play fighting games, Zhou Wen said. That's such a pity. Lance seemed a little disappointed as he sat down on the steps beside him. As he gamed, he asked, Are you also interested in the Khanate Holy Temple? No, I'm just accompanying a friend here to take a look. Are you also here to accept its test? Joan asked. Well, not really. I'm only here to see what the Khanate Holy Temple looks like. I have no intention of receiving the Khanate Holy Temple's special physique. Joan found this person rather interesting. As he spoke, he played games. His actions and thoughts didn't conflict and his handling was extremely fine. This wasn't something an ordinary person could do. Since you came to the Khanate Holy Temple, why don't you give it a try? Perhaps there might be a chance of obtaining a Khanate Infinite Physique. Joe Wen asked with interest. While playing games, Lance said, It's not only the Khanate Infinite Physique, I'm actually not interested in any of the special physiques in the Holy Land. It's just that my family insists that I come. So, I came to take a look and since I'm here, I might as well visit all the Holy Temples. I'll just treat it as a vacation. You sure are interesting. Zhou Wen found this person interesting. You're very interesting too. I've heard of people vying for the nominations here in the Holy Land, but never about someone here to accompany their friend. Lance said with a smile. I plan on vying for them too, but I don't have my sights on the Khanate Infinite Physique. Zhou Wen said. Lance lowered his phone and sized up Zhou Wen for a moment before saying, The six types of physiques in the Holy Land have their own advantages and weaknesses. This Khanate Infinite Physique has very high requirements on one's body, so ordinary people are unable to meet the requirements. According to what I know, in the League, only those who cultivate in the Invincible Khanate Divine Art can barely meet the requirements. From the looks of it, you don't look like someone who cultivates in it. Your aura is a little odd. I'm afraid it's not compatible with any of the Holy Temple's special physiques. If you wish to buy for one, the difficulty might be higher than the others. Human effort can achieve anything. Shouwen wasn't willing to elaborate on his matters 
but he was rather interested in Lance. He asked, Why don't you want a special physique? This is something many want to buy for. It's precisely because everyone wants it. It's been so many years, and although there aren't many people with the six special physiques in the league, there are still quite a number of them. There's no point in me obtaining what others have. It's rather pointless, so I might as well not get it. Besides, and Tianzuovian family doesn't have any special physiques. Yet, he can suppress his peers. And if he can do it, so can I. Lan seldom shared such thoughts, but for some reason, he mentioned it in passing to Zhou Wen. Upon hearing in Tianzuo's name, Zhou Wen's expression turned odd. You know in Tianzuo? Lance acutely guessed that Zhou Wen knew in Tianzuo from his expression. Yes, but we aren't on good terms. If you wish to ask me about him, I'm afraid you will be disappointed. Zhou Wen said with a shrug. There's no need. There's no need. Please don't tell me anything about in Tianzuo. Lance hurriedly waved his hands. Why is that? Zhou Wen looked at Lance in puzzlement. I will personally defeat him in the future. If I hear about him now, it will be too boring if I end up learning about his weaknesses. The Ntianzwa I want to defeat is the strongest Ntianzwa I can face, said Lance solemnly. Zhou Wen thought to himself, from the looks of it, this person should also be from the six hero families. Otherwise, he wouldn't be thinking about defeating Ntianzwa all day. However, it's strange. Doesn't he know that I'm the one coming on behalf of the Ntianzwa family? After chatting for a while, they seemed to get along pretty well. They also talked about their experience in cultivation and martial techniques. Although they understood things differently, their shared concepts that were congruent with each other. As the two were chatting, they suddenly saw the door to the temple open. Li Xian walked out. How was it? Zhou Wen got up and asked. I passed, but I've no idea if anyone will have better results than mine. We'll know in ten days, Li Xian said with a smile. I'm done. Which holy temple do you want to head to? I'll accompany you. At that moment, Li Xian saw Lance. Clearly, he didn't know him. Seeing that he and Zhou Wen seemed to get along pretty well, he asked curiously, Who is this? Someone you know? I just got to know him. Only then did Zhou Wen recall that he didn't know of his name. Neither of them had said their names. Lance stood up and said, It's time for me to go in. See you again if there's a chance. However, before Lance could enter the Khanate Holy Temple, a WYRM statue coiled around a stone pillar in front of the door suddenly opened its eyes. Its body moved as it came alive. It stretched out its head and stared at Zhou Wen. Are you willing to be the representative of my Khanate Holy Temple? The three of them were slightly taken aback. Lance looked at Zhou Wen with a strange expression. As a member of the six hero families, he had never heard of anyone receiving an invitation from a holy temple. Even the first six heroes, who came to the Holy Land had only been chosen after many trials. It was the first time he had seen an invitation extended by the Holy Temple. Zhou Wen, what are you waiting for? Quick, agree. Li Xian hurriedly nudged Zhou Wen when he saw him in a daze. However, Zhou Wen wasn't feeling happy about being invited. The reason he was stunned was because after the WRM sent out the invitation, his life providence, Sai of the King, seemed to be in a frenzy. A sense of disgust spread through him, affecting him with those emotions. Chapter 206 Who's the Real Scion? That feeling was intense so intense that Zhou Wen didn't hesitate to reject it. Sorry, I only accompanied my friend here to take a look. I don't wish to obtain anything from the Khanate Holy Temple. The WYRM shot Zhou Wen a look again before slowly retreating back to the stone pillar and slowly transforming into a lifeless statue. Lance looked at Zhou Wen with piqued interest. Li Xian sighed and said, Old Zhou, if you rejected it because of me, I will be touched and also sad. That's not it. Khanate Infinite Physique wasn't my goal to begin with. Even without you, I would still reject it. Zhou Wen was telling the truth. That makes me even more depressed. Li Xian joked. Let's go and visit the other holy temples. Zhou Wen only wanted to visit the other holy temples to take a look. The Sai of the King was a result of his own attributes and the lost immortal sutra. But now that the Sai of the King had ostracized the holy temple, it was likely difficult for Zhou Wen's original advancement plan to succeed. If I can't use a special physique to raise my stats to 21 points, how can I advance to the epic stage? Zhou Wen was puzzled. This fellow sure is interesting. Seeing Zhou Wen and Li Xian leave, Lance turned and entered the Khanate Holy Temple. Zhou Wen and Li Xian rushed to the Sun God Temple, not because of the Sun Strafart, but because it was closest to the Khanate Holy Temple. However, they did not know that the members of the six hero families were already gathered together, discussing how to deal with Zhou Wen. Previously, when Liz had gone to the various families to seek their cooperation, most of the members of the six hero families thought nothing of it. They felt that there was no need for them to involve themselves in dealing with Zhou when Sinsen Jing wasn't coming. 
However, who knew that John would have his primordial energy see crippled by Zhou when despite leading more than 10 people to teach him a lesson. Even the black-robed youth of the Xia family had been crippled. Zhou would appear to be another in Tianzhua, making many of the members of the six hero families find it unbearable. And Tianzhua has already humiliated our six families. Now, there's another Zhou Wen. Such a tendency cannot be encouraged. What do you think? Xia Bing said coldly. The black-robed youth that Zhou Wen had robbed of his primordial energy see in front of the Khanate Holy Temple was Xia Bing's younger brother. Originally, I couldn't be bothered with him, but I never expected him to be so outrageous. We should really teach him a lesson. Otherwise, others will think that we are easily bullied. In the future, anyone will dare to bully us. Dugu Chuan of the Dugu family added. Zhou Wen has to be crippled. However, he has an abnormally powerful companion beast on him. It can transform into a fan that can even withstand my light of judgment. If we can't deal with the fan, I'm afraid it will be difficult to subdue him. John said weakly. A companion beast's primordial energy skill that even the light of judgment can't withstand is something we have to be wary of. If only the goddess of wind's protection was here. That treasure is most resistant to wind elemental powers, said Xia Bing. John said with a bitter smile. I did bring the goddess of wind's protection, but Zhou Wen snatched it away. However, even with the goddess of wind's protection, it was useless. After all, that item can only protect one person. The others will still be injured by the fan's strength. Xia Bing and company were taken aback when they heard that. They never expected John to spend that much. He had even brought the goddess of wind's protection. It was a pity that Zhou Wen had robbed it from him. De Gu Chuan pondered for a moment before saying, Such a primordial energy skill definitely expends a great deal of primordial energy. All we need to do is use a tag team strategy and expend his primordial energy. That way, it will be useless even if he has the fan. John hurriedly shook his head and said, This method won't work. When we were fighting him previously, he used it six times during the battle. However, he still had plenty of primordial energy to use other primordial energy skills. I believe he has some treasure that can rapidly recover his primordial energy. In that case, it's really a big problem. Dugu Chuan frowned. It's not much trouble. Leave that fan to me, Xia Bing said. Xia Bing, are you confident? We can't fail again. Otherwise, the six hero families will become laughing stocks, Dugu Chuan said. It's not convenient for me to elaborate on the details, but don't worry. As long as I confirm that the fan is a manifestation of the wind elemental companion beast, I have a 100% chance of making it useless. Xia Bing was confident. All right, I'll leave the fan problem to you. Let's find Zhou Wen now, said Dugu Chuan as he stood up. Wait, John called out to him. Is there anything else? Dugu Chuan frowned. John coughed lightly and said, Besides possessing the fan, Zhou Wen is also very skilled in flight. Without using any flying companion beasts or mounts, he is able to move freely in the sky, almost like Superman. I wonder what primordial energy skill he cultivates in, or what kind of flying treasure he possesses. You have to be constantly on guard when you head over. Don't let him use his flying abilities to escape. Is it a wind elemental flying skill? Xia Bing asked. I don't think so. I didn't sense the power of the wind on him. John shook his head. This is a little troublesome. If it's not a wind elemental flying skill... I won't be able to do anything to him, Xia Bing said with a frown. Leave this problem to me. I promise I won't let him escape, said a blonde youth. When Xia Bing and Dugu Chuan saw that the person who spoke was prose, they all nodded slightly. They fully trusted his abilities and didn't say anything else other than prepare to set off. Wait, John called out to them again. What else is there? Xia Bing was getting impatient. Zhou Wen still has a saber. It's extremely sharp. My legendary snake of brilliance was easily chopped apart by it. Also, the flying mounts we used previously were also split into two with a single strike. You have to be careful, John added. What else do you know? Say it all at once. Dugu Chuan already had a headache. A terrifying pet, a powerful flying skill, and an extremely sharp weapon. Any one of these items was enough to make an ordinary person world famous. Yet, Zhou Wen actually had all three at the same time. It was no wonder that even John had been defeated by him. It wasn't simply because of his incompetence. There's nothing else. By the way, Zhou Wen still has a companion beast. Its defensive strength is extremely high, making it difficult for ordinary legendary weapons to injure it. There's also a night pet that has a powerful offensive and destructive power. John added after some thought. To Gu Chuan, Xia Bing, and company looked at John as a thought arose in their minds. Who's the real Silent? Aren't our six hero families the most powerful and rich families in the Alliance? Why does it seem like Zhou Wen is richer than us? Chapter 207 Battle in Front of the Temple 
When Zhou Wen and Li Xian arrived at Sun God Temple, they were somewhat surprised to discover that there wasn't a single person in front of it. Furthermore, the temple's main door was open, proving that no one was undergoing a test. That's odd. Is the Sun God Temple that unpopular? Why isn't anyone here undergoing the test? Li Xian looked around in puzzlement. Indeed, there was no one. We came rather late after being caught up with matters. Perhaps the people who came here to take the test have already left. Zhou Wen walked towards the Sun God Temple's interior, intending to give it a try. He wanted to know if the Sun God Temple really ostracized the special physiques. After Zhou Wen entered the temple, the door automatically closed. Li Xian sat on the stone steps outside and waited for him. However, just as he sat down, he saw a group of people walk over. When Li Xian took a glance, his expression changed drastically. His lackadaisical appearance instantly vanished as his expression turned solemn. The people who approached were all members of the six hero families, so it was obviously not a coincidence that they were here together. You are Li Xian from Luoyang's Li family? Nearly 50 people surrounded the temple as Xia Bing sized up Li Xian. I'm Li Xian. Hello, Miss Xia. Li Xian bowed slightly at Xia Bing. Li Xian recognized Xia Bing. Among the six great hero families, the Xia family had its roots in the East District. It was the biggest and wealthiest family there. Even though the Li family was considered a wealthy family in Luoyang, it was nothing compared to the Xia family. Furthermore, the Li family and the Xia family had business dealings and had many connections. Even the Li family's invincible Kane divine art was obtained from the Xia family. Since you address me as Miss Xia, I'll let you leave on account of your father and second brother. Don't interact with people like Zhou Wen again. It won't do you any good, Xia Bing said as she walked towards the main door. Miss Xia, Zhou Wen is undergoing a test inside. You can't enter now, Li Xian said with a smile, but he didn't make way. We are precisely waiting for him to take the test. Does he really think he can obtain the sun god body? And Tianzhu have failed to obtain it. It will be the same for him. Furthermore, he has to pay the price, said Prose disdainfully. What do you mean? Li Xian's smile deepened, but he realized that something was amiss. Although Li Xian didn't know what they had done, things were definitely not that simple. Logically speaking, outsiders wouldn't be able to enter the temple during someone's test, nor would they be able to disturb the people inside. However, from the way Prose spoke, they clearly had a way of influencing Zhou when who was undergoing the trial. They might even be able to deal him some form of damage. Cut the crap and get out of my way! Xia Bing was already impatient. She was infuriated that her brother had his primordial energy see crippled by Zhou Wen. She couldn't wait to personally destroy Zhou Wen's primordial energy see. Miss Xia, what are you planning to do? Li Xian didn't move as he continued to block her way. Xia Bing frowned slightly as she stared at Li Xian and said, Li Xian, do you have a death wish? Seeing that he couldn't get anything out of her, Li Xian wiped away his smile and looked at Xia Bing. Miss Xia, I really don't wish to be enemies with you. However, the person undergoing the test is my friend. I haven't had friends since I was young, and two of my friends died not long ago. It greatly upset me, so I really do not wish to see my friend get hurt. Can you tell me what you wish to do to Zhou Wen? To have the courage to say such things, Wu Yang's Li family can be considered quite impressive. However, you have to understand your limits, or you might not be able to bear the consequences. Xia Bing said. Cut the crap with him. I'll finish him off first before destroying Zhou Wen's trial. Without Xia Bing's patience, Prose threw a punch at Li Xian. The fist flashed with terrifying lightning, bringing about horrifying beams of light. Li Xian raised his fist to receive the punch. When the fists collided, Li Xian's body immediately trembled, as though he had been electrocuted before he was sent flying by Prose's punch. Li Xian's body slammed into the Sun God Temple's door, and he immediately spat out a mouthful of blood. However, he stumbled to his feet and walked back to Prose with gritted teeth. You are courting death. With another punch, Prose's lightning-like punch sent Li Xian flying once again. It looked like Li Xian was even more miserable than the last time. However, Li Xian still stubbornly walked back. He looked like he was about to lose his footing, as though a gust of wind would topple him. Prose frowned and said, Li Xian, do you really want to die here? Is it worth it for Zhou Wen? I don't want to see my friend get hurt again. Let him off, please. Li Xian muttered. Pros, don't waste any more time. Just cripple him, said Du Guchuan. With a nod, Pros punched Li Xian again, but this time, he struck Li Xian's abdomen. Typically, when a person cultivated in a primordial energy art, they would need to store their primordial energy in one area. This area was the primordial energy sea, but the locations varied depending on the primordial energy art. Most of the primordial energy sea was in the lower Dantian, which was where the abdomen was. If the primordial energy sea was crippled, 
primordial energy would leak, making it impossible to store any more primordial energy. It was equivalent to being crippled. There were also some primordial energy arts that had primordial energy seas not in the lower Dantian, and that made it more difficult to find. Pros didn't know where Li Xian's primordial energy sea was, so he first attacked Li Xian's abdomen. If his primordial energy sea was there, such a terrifying lightning blast could penetrate his primordial energy, causing his primordial energy to leak and turn him into a cripple. Bam! Li Xian was sent flying once again. He looked even more miserable than before. He struggled to get up, but he staggered around, unable to even stand properly. Yet, he still attempted to get up and walk back. Everyone was perturbed. There were not many people in this era who would be so foolish for their friends. However, Xiao Bing suddenly said with an odd expression, Something's not right. His body has a jade-like luster, and his eyes are faintly glowing. It's a sign that he has mastered the invincible Kane divine art. Such injuries are nothing to a legendary who has cultivated the invincible Kane divine art. Furthermore, his primordial energy sea isn't in his lower Dantian. It's impossible for him to be in such a wretched state. Xia Bing's words left everyone stunned. When Li Xian heard Xia Bing's words, his staggering body also straightened up. Wiping away the blood from his mouth, his entire bearing changed. From the looks of it, I can't hide it from you, Miss Xia. Li Xian sighed slightly. He originally wanted to stall for time, but unfortunately, with Xia Bing, who was familiar with the invincible Kane divine art, there was no use no matter how superb his acting was. When Pro saw that he had been fooled, he was immediately enraged. The lightning on his body flared, as the bolts of lightning around his fist struck Li Xian like a sun. Li Xian didn't retreat. Instead, he advanced. A heavy sword that was wrapped in lightning appeared in his hand. Lightning flashed on the sword as it headed straight for Pro's fist. Boom! Two types of lightning exploded in the sky, only to reveal Li Xian standing proudly on the stone steps with his heavy sword in hand. As for Pro's, he had taken a few steps back and spat out a mouthful of blood. Chapter 208 Sun God Temple Everyone was astonished. Even among the six hero families, Pro's was rather famous. It was truly shocking that he had been defeated by Li Xian. Isn't that Thunder God General? The one he bought at the trading market actually had the Thunder God augmentation skill. How lucky! Immediately, someone recognized the Thunder God sword in Li Xian's hand. He's really lucky. He bought a Thunder God General with Thunder God augmentation for only 2 million. This punk is really lucky. Someone said jealously. Back at the trading market, Li Xian's spending of 2 million to buy a Thunder God companion egg had made him the target of mockery. It was a companion egg that could be bought for four to five hundred thousand outside. Yet, he chose to spend two million here. It was an act of a fool. However, when they saw Thunder God General with Thunder God augmentation, many of them turned green with envy. The Thunder God General was the best offensive pet among legendaries. Even a fellow like Prose, who was adept at lightning elemental forces, suffered quite a bit. So Prose, who claims to be the son of lightning, is nothing much after all. He can't even defeat the lightning forces of a companion beast. How disappointing. Li Xian wanted to infuriate Pros and make him fight him alone. That way, he could delay things. Pros, he's deliberately trying to provoke you to stall for time, Xia Bing said. Pros nodded slightly as lightning flickered in his golden pupils. He stared at Li Xian and said, You successfully provoked me, so die. However, he wasn't the only one who made a move. A few members of the six hero families attacked Li Xian in a bid to finish him off in the fastest time possible before destroying Zhou Wen's trial. I've been unknown for 16 years. Today, I'm fighting the masses with one sword. I don't seek a place in history, only an eternal name. Li Xian held the Thunder God sword in hand and stood proudly in front of the Sun God Temple. This was the first time he had looked this serious. The sword struck out like lightning, causing ripples to form as it surged towards the attacks of his assailants. When Zhou Wen walked into the temple, he originally thought of it as merely a palace, but after entering it, he realized that the inside of the temple was a void. In this void, there was a sun hanging high above. It emitted an extremely resplendent divine light, as though it was the center of this empty universe. At Zhou Wen's feet were a stone staircase floating in the void, one that extended towards the sun. Path Seeker, step on the stone steps and walk towards the sun. The closer you are to the sun, the more likely it is for you to obtain the god of the sun's power. An ethereal voice sounded in the void. Zhou Wen didn't sense any abnormal reaction from the sigh of the king as he walked towards the stone steps ahead. After taking a few steps, he felt the temperature around him increase significantly. The temperature had risen quickly. After walking more than 10 steps, Zhou Wen felt as though he had walked into a furnace. On the other hand, the chick on his shoulder looked like it was enjoying itself, as if this heat made it very comfortable. 
Before Zhou would enter the hall, he had switched the primordial energy art to the ancient imperial sutra. The ancient imperial sutra also seemed to have a portion of the power of fire, but it was completely different from the power of the sun god temple. Zhou would originally believe that ancient imperial sutra's powers of a similar trait would allow him to take advantage of the situation, but now, he realized that that wasn't the case. Despite using all his strength to resist the sun's mighty splendor, he was already covered in sweat after taking about 20 steps. If he continued walking another 10 steps, he might end up dehydrated by the sun. With no other choice, Zhou Wen had no choice but to activate his Lotus Flower Buddha Body Primordial Energy skill to resist the Sun God's splendor. But even so, he only managed to take a few more steps. He was still a long way from the sun in the void. From the looks of it, ordinary people can't withstand the power of the Sun God Temple. Unless they cultivate in a corresponding primordial energy art and receive the recognition of the temple. Otherwise, even an epic expert wouldn't be able to walk to the front of the sun. Zhou Wen already had the intention to retreat. He was only here to seek out a way to break through, not to risk his life. Since he knew that there was no possibility, there was no need to continue. Just as Zhou Wen was about to retreat, the ancient imperial sutra inside him automatically changed back into the lost immortal sutra. The lost immortal sutra slowly circulated as the originally ethereal lost immortal sutra gradually turned warm. As the lost immortal sutra heated up his primordial energy, the sun god's splendor around Zhou Wen's body no longer seemed to be as hot as before. Zhou Wen immediately felt energized. The Lost Immortal Sutra has finally shown its effects. Could it be that there's hope of advancing this time? Zhou Wen was delighted as he dispelled the thought of retreating and continued proceeding. After the Lost Immortal Sutra showed its effects, the effects of the Sun God's splendor on him grew less and less. When it shone on Zhou Wen, he found it comfortably warm. It wasn't anything like the scorching heat from before. If I were to cultivate in the Sun Strafe Art, the effect would probably be like this if I came to the Sun God Temple, right? Zhou Wen thought to himself as he walked towards the sun. The sun that seemed to be far away also seemed to become much closer. With every step Zhou Wen took, he could sense that he was rapidly approaching the sun. How is this a test? It's clearly a selection. Those who are selected by the temple would be able to get close with a casual stroll, but those who aren't selected will not be able to succeed no matter how hard they try. If not for the fact that the lost immortal sutra is able to fool the terrifying existence here, even if I had advanced to the epic stage, I wouldn't have been able to reach the sun. Indeed, nothing in the world is fair. It's the same for the miraculous sun god temple. As he pondered, Zhou Wen was getting closer and closer to the sun. The sun was no longer as blinding as before, allowing him to see it clearly. It turned out that it wasn't a sun, but a golden seed. It looked like a pine nut, and its entire body was like a golden crystal. The seed emitted light and heat, making it look like a sun. Zhou Wen glanced at the chick on his shoulder, and was surprised to see it still looking relaxed. It didn't seem to be affected by the sun's temperature at all. He had the lost immortal sutra that played the role of confusing the sun god temple's mechanism. Therefore, he wasn't suppressed by the power of the sun god temple. This was how he had managed to reach this point. However, the chick didn't have the lost immortal sutra. The fact that it relied on its body to withstand the forces made it rather terrifying. I wonder what level this chick's mother is. From its appearance, it's unlikely that its mother is as simple as an epic creature. Zhou Wen proceeded forward step by step, approaching the seed without suffering any effects. Finally, when Zhou Wen was on the last stone step, the seed floated inches away from him. All he needed to do was stretch out his hand to obtain the sun like seed. Chapter 209 The Sun Disc Chapter 209 The Sun Disc Outside, Li Xian had his back against the temple's door. He brandished the Thunder God Sword crazily, blocking one attack after another. However, no matter how powerful he was, he couldn't withstand all the attacks or beams, battle aura, flames, ice, and various powers tore through the flaws in his moves, tearing apart the armor he was wearing. Even his three-eyed golden warrior's golden silk soft armor was damaged from the numerous attacks. A terrifying sword beam directly tore through Li Xian's body of flesh and blood. The powerful battle aura made his bones produce cracking sounds, as all kinds of attacks left countless wounds on him. Li Xian's injuries were now in more than a hundred spots. However, he still stood in front of the hall and continued brandishing the Thunder God Sword, as though he was a tireless war machine. As for the injuries on his body, they healed at an unbelievable speed. Often, wounds that had just been formed would be healed a few seconds later. The wound seemed to only flow through his body like water, disappearing from a mere flick. Xia Bing and the others were appalled by the rapid recovery of his injuries. Although the Invincible Kane Divine Art has powerful recovery abilities, he's only at the legendary stage. It can't have such a powerful effect unless there's something wrong with his life providence. Xia Bing had already guessed the reason, 
and she couldn't help but feel envious and jealous. The invincible Kane divine art was the first primordial energy art the Xia family had obtained. It also corresponded to the Kane holy temple. However, the invincible Kane divine art needed a virgin male to cultivate it. Once he wasn't a virgin, he would become a cripple, and it would require cultivating all over again. Therefore, the Xia family would only give up the invincible Kane divine art unwillingly. Back then, one of the six heroes, a Xia family elder, had turned from an invincible hero to an ordinary person in order to get married and have children. In order to prevent such things from happening again, the Xia family's elders had sought out several other primordial energy arts to replace the invincible Kane divine art. However, the Xia family had no intention of handing the invincible Kane divine art over to someone else. The Li family had once helped the Xia family a great deal and suggested using the invincible Kane divine art as an exchange. Although the Xia family had given it to them, it was only a simplified version. It was still far from the true invincible Kane divine art. Furthermore, without the corresponding Kane infinite body, the power one was able to use with the invincible Kane divine art was extremely limited. However, Li Xian, who was only practicing a simplified version of the invincible Kane divine art and didn't even have a Kane infinite body, was able to condense a life providence that was in no way inferior to the Xia family's hero. It was truly enviable. Li Xian's life providence was clearly different from that of the Xia family's elders. Xia Bing only knew that of a powerful recovery ability, but she wasn't too sure of its exact functions. This fellow is an unkillable monster. There's no point in fighting any further. If we don't quickly enter the Sun God Temple, I'm afraid Zhou Wen will be out soon. All the work we did previously would be for nothing, said Dugu Chuan. I know that too, but what can I do? Pros pummeled Li Xian's chest with his punches, causing it to cave slightly. But in a blink of an eye, his chest bulged once again, as though he had never been injured. I do have a companion beast that should be useful. Although it won't kill him, it can control him. However, with this pet down, I'm afraid you'll have to put in more effort when dealing with Zhou and later, said Dugu Chuan hesitantly. Aren't you aware of the situation? Let's get rid of this monster first. As long as we destroy Zhou Wen's trial, he'll be severely injured. Will it be difficult for us to cripple him when that happens? Pro said. All right. After some thought, Dugu Chuan agreed that it made sense. Without any hesitation, he summoned a companion beast. It was a huge, snow-white spider with blood-colored patterns on its back. The patterns looked like a woman's face. In the next second, the spider transformed into a snow-white pole and landed in Dugu Chuan's hands. Soon, he found an opportunity and struck Li Xian with the snow-white pole. The weapon, that looked like a pole, instantly transformed into a huge net that bound Li Xian's body. Dugu Chuan pulled the net with all his might, trying to pull Li Xian away from the door. Li Xian tried using the Thunder God Sword to slice through the net, but it was stuck to the net. The more he struggled, the tighter the net became. However, Li Xian was rather powerful. Dugu Chuan alone was unable to pull Li Xian away. Why aren't you helping? shouted Dugu Chuan. A few people beside him rushed over to help him pull the net and soon, Li Xian's figure was forcibly pulled out. After Dugu Chuan pulled Li Xian away, he said to the nearby pros, Pros, we'll hold him back for now. Quickly take action. Don't let Zhou and complete the trial. All right, leave it to me. Don't worry. Without the need for Dugu Chuan to mention it, Pros had already rushed to the door. Li Xian wanted to stop him, but there was nothing he could do. Pros carried an item in his arms, a sun disc. He searched the sun god temple's main door for a while before he placed the sun disc into a groove on the door. The sun disc fitted perfectly with the door, as if they were born together. The sun disc was left behind by an elder of the Pros family, who was also one of the six heroes of the past. The physique he obtained was the sun god body. The sun disc was also an item that the elder had taken out of the sun god temple. As the first generation representative of the sun god temple, it gave him authority. If his descendants ever inherited the sun god body's bloodline, then they could bring the sun disc back to the sun god temple and use the sun god body to activate the sun god body's enhanced trial. An enhanced trial was specially prepared for people with the sun god body and its difficulty far exceeded that of ordinary trials. Even people with the sun god body might not necessarily pass this trial, much less ordinary people. In the past, someone from the pros family had attempted the enhanced trial at sun god temple with a sun god body, but in the end, not only was he unable to pass the trial, he was even seriously injured. He only fully recovered after three to four years of recuperation. It was quite a coincidence. Xia Bing and pros knew that the in family had the sun strafe art, which was most compatible with the Sun God Temple. They believed that Zhou Wen must have cultivated the Sun Strafe art and would come to Sun God Temple to take the test. 
This was why they set up this trap. Although Zhou Wen didn't cultivate in the Sun Strafe art, it was a coincidence that he came to Sun God Temple. It could only be said that Pros and company hit the mark by fluke. Zhou Wen was just about to reach out to pluck the sun like seed, when he suddenly saw the seed light brighten up, turning abnormally resplendent. Chapter 210 Getting the Seed Chapter 210 Getting the Seed As the seed's temperature rose abnormally, the surrounding temperature also increased abruptly. Terrifying golden flames burned in the entire sun god temple, instantly filling the void. The seed was like a piece of golden glass with golden symbols shimmering within. Zhou Wen jumped in fright as his clothes ignited. He immediately knew that something was amiss. The lost immortal sutra was only masquerading his physique after all. He didn't really possess a sun god body, so if he was consumed by the flames, he would definitely be burnt to ashes. With the golden flames about to engulf him, Zhou Wen was just about to use his summoned banana fan when a cold sensation emanated from his neck as the flames on his body automatically extinguished. Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback as he looked down and realized that the coolness had come from a pendant hanging around his neck. It was the ivory pendant Wang Mingyuan had given him before he left. The pendant that teacher gave me isn't an ordinary item? Zhou Wen was secretly alarmed. Without any time to think, Zhou Wen held the banana fan and attempted to rush out of Sun God Temple. As for the seed, even though he wanted to attempt taking it, he didn't dare to do so. The temperature on it was terrifyingly high, so even metal would melt upon contact. Suddenly, the chick on Zhou Wen's shoulder opened its beak and inhaled. The golden flame surrounding Zhou Wen immediately gushed towards the chick's mouth like a breach of a dam. Zhou Wen watched as the golden flames that filled the sky surged like a heavenly river into the chick's tiny mouth. Its tiny body seemed like a bottomless abyss. All the golden flames, no matter how many were there, were gone the moment they were sucked in. As the golden flames were swallowed, the pale yellow feathers on the chick's body began to show a luster. Its feathers looked fuller with a faint golden glow. The more golden flames it absorbed, the more vibrant its feathers became. It even seemed to have grown bigger in size. Zhou Wen watched as the golden flames in the void were completely absorbed by the chick. The terrifying heat also vanished, leaving the sea glowing like a miniature sun. At that moment, the chick's body had grown to the size of a pigeon. Its feathers were pale gold and looked like a pigeon with a somewhat special color. It's all thanks to you this time. Zhou Wen patted the chick's head and stowed away the banana fan. Although the banana fan's granding wind could suppress the golden flames here, Zhou Wen's primordial energy was limited after all. With his Dao body's recovery abilities, it was impossible for him to continuously use the granding wind. He would have suffered no matter what. With the flames extinguished, Zhou Wen looked at the golden seed and frowned slightly. The golden symbol in the seed was still coruscating, allowing him to sense the extreme temperatures of the seed. He tried to grab it with his hand, but before his fingers could touch the seed, he felt as though he was scalded by the terrifying heat. Seeing that there was no way for him to obtain the seed, Zhou Wen had an idea. He took out his mysterious phone and aimed at the seed. Indeed, the camera had successfully locked onto the seed. With a snap, the seed immediately vanished and was stored into his phone. Zhou Wen couldn't help but be overjoyed. He hurriedly put away his phone and turned to leave. With the abrupt turn of events happening inside the Sun God Temple, Zhou Wen suspected that something had happened outside. Outside Sun God Temple, pros and company were waiting for Zhou Wen to come out. Although there were others who wished for him to die there, they knew that he wouldn't die so easily. However, it was likely that he would be severely injured. Facing a heavily injured Zhou Wen would most likely be a lot easier for them. If John hadn't described Zhou Wen as he had, they wouldn't have come up with such a plan. If this were any other time, they would have directly approached Zhou Wen and suppressed him with force. Boom! Finally, the door to the Sun God Temple opened. All of them hurriedly prepared their respective companion beasts and primordial energy skills. They planned on taking Zhou Wen down when he rushed out. However, when they saw the situation inside the Sun God Temple's main door, they were stunned. At the moment the Divine Palace opened, the carvings and patterns on it began to emit a holy glow. The stone palace that looked ancient was now resplendent in divine light, as though it was a palace found in myths. The portrait of the sun at the highest point of the palace emitted unparalleled light, as though it was announcing something to the world. Why would there be a phenomenon at the Sun God Temple now? Isn't this a phenomenon that will only happen after 10 days? We are still days away before the trial ends. Why is it now? The more pros spoke, the softer his voice became and the nastier his expression became. He had already understood the only reason for such a situation to take place. Someone had already walked up to the sun seed and taken it away. However, the result of his guess was something that even pros found unbelievable. Ignoring the fact that using the sun disc could enhance the difficulty of the trial, few people could walk to the sun seed and take it away in an ordinary sun god temple trial. 
even in their families, only two people had done so after all these years. One of them was a first-generation hero, and the other was a person who had inherited the sun god body bloodline. The latter had obtained the sun seed by undergoing the ordinary trial. As for the enhanced trial, even if one had the sun god body, no one had ever obtained the sun seed. Zhou Wen naturally didn't have the sun god body. Pros refused to believe that Zhou Wen was able to obtain it in the enhanced trial. However, no matter how much he refused to believe it, the truth was already in front of him. Zhou Wen had walked out unharmed. Even the pigeon on his shoulder was unharmed. Pros, what's going on? Didn't you say that no one can pass the enhanced trial? That without the sun god body, it's unknown if one can even survive? Seeing Zhou Wen unscathed, Du Du Chuan couldn't help but question him. How would I know? Pros was also furious. He too wanted to know what was going on. This was completely different from what he imagined. Now's not the time to talk about this. Let's take down Zhou Wen first and act according to plan. Even if he wasn't injured in the temple, we can still cripple him. Xia Bing said as she drew her sword and attacked Zhou Wen. You guys sure don't know when to quit. Zhou Wen turned his gaze and saw Li Xian bound in a white net like a fish. He immediately relaxed when he realized that he wasn't in a terrible state. With Xia Bing and the others surrounding him, Zhou Wen held the banana fan and fanned them, sweeping out the granding wind. However, to Zhou Wen's surprise, Xia Bing held a calabash in her hand as she directed it at the granding wind and sucked it in. The strong wind was sucked into the calabash, leaving nothing behind. Chapter 211 Sun God Power Crystal Zhou Wen was alarmed. As for Duga Chuan and the others, they were overjoyed. They increased the forces in their hands as all colors of light beams shot towards Zhou Wen. Pros was already prepared, ready to cast the Myriad Thunder Sky Dungeon at any time to prevent Zhou Wen from escaping through the sky. Duga Chuan summoned a strange shield to block Zhou Wen sharp bamboo blade. Xia Bing also summoned three companion beasts, preparing to restrain Zhou Wen's three-eyed golden warrior and mutated demonized general. The others also showcased their full range of abilities, hoping to take down Zhou Wen on the spot, leaving him no room to resist. However, before Zhou Wen could draw his saber, the chick on his shoulder suddenly spat out resplendent light from its mouth. Golden flame spewed out like a flood, instantly turning the square outside Sun God Temple into an inferno. Immediately, tragic screams sounded out as everyone was left dumbfounded. They had prepared meticulously for this for so long, having thought of several strategies to use against him. Yet, before those strategies could be used, all of them were burned to a crisp by the chick on Zhou Wen's shoulder. At once, there were endless cries of agony. Many people were screaming as they rolled on the ground, trying to extinguish the flames on them. Some even took off their clothes while running. Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen drew his saber and charged in. Without throwing any caution to the wind, he mercilessly stabbed their danchons. Most people had their primordial energy see in their dungeons. So with Zhou Wen stabbed, they were practically crippled. The few who didn't have primordial energy sees at their dantian weren't any better when they were impaled by Zhou Wen in their abdomens. They writhed on the ground, screaming endlessly. Zhou Wen tried finding Xia Bing in the chaos, but she was nowhere to be seen. Even Dugu Chuan had disappeared. As for pros, he had attempted to escape amidst the chaos, but was still slashed at by Zhou Wen. Pros, feeling alarmed and furious, summoned his companion beast to block Zhou Wen. He still had full intention of escaping, having no illusions that he could put up a fight. The chick's flames had frightened him out of his wits. There were many legendary companion beasts that could spew fire, but to be able to instantly turn an entire square into a sea of flames was something that he had never seen before. What was even scarier was that those golden flames were clearly not ordinary flames. They could even burn through defensive battle auras. It was appalling. However, Pros wasn't as fast as Zhou Wen no matter how fast he fled. Zhou Wen split his companion beast into two and slashed his saber at him. In this perilous situation, Pros turned around and summoned a gigantic axe to meet Zhou Wen's bamboo blade. However, the gigantic axe was cleaved apart upon contact. In his shock, he didn't dare fight anymore and retreated as fast as he could. With a flash, Zhou Wen pierced through Pros's dantian, causing him to fall to the ground in pain. Zhou Wen withdrew his saber but didn't look at him. He brandished his saber and stormed through the crowd. Bamboo blades sliced through everything it met, be they primordial gold weapons or companion beast weapons. It was terrifyingly sharp. To have a single person chase after dozens of people, with the pursues being members of the six hero family would probably deal a shock to the league if they saw this scene. Fortunately, other than the members of the six families, there were only a few descendants of powerful figures from all over the world. Not many were there to watch. There was only one spot for all the big shots in the world, unlike the juniors of the six hero families. As long as they were young and strong enough, they could enter the Holy Land. After they entered, 
they headed straight for the holy land that they had set their sights on. No one wasted time wandering around. Originally, Xia Bing and company believed that other than Zhou Wen, it was unlikely that descendants of other big shots would choose the Sun God Temple. Therefore, it was unlikely for anyone to see this. However, to their dismay, this scene was witnessed by someone who had even recorded it. The incident of Ntianzhu crippling the six hero families has been repeated. That guy is so strong, the person praised as he recorded. However, he was rather careful. He only hid in the shadows and didn't expose himself while recording, afraid that the six families would discover him. By the time the battle ended, the people on the square were all lying on the ground, clutching their abdomens and screaming. The spider web, which Bound Li Xian had been burned through by the golden flames, protecting him as a result. After escaping, Li Xian joined the battle without any hesitation. However, he wasn't beating people, but plundering those who collapsed. Zhou Wen couldn't help but feel regretful that he hadn't found Xia Bing. He wanted to know what the calabash in her hand was. After plundering the area with Li Xian, the two of them left, leaving behind the children from the six family clans screaming in pain. When they arrived in an uninhabited cave, Zhou Wen and Li Xian sat down to divide the loot. After all, they didn't know what breed the companion eggs were. Each person got half the pile, allowing Zhou Wen to obtain 26 companion eggs. They definitely wouldn't be cheap considering who had purchased them. Zhou Wen planned on finding a time to use his mysterious phone to check the attributes of the companion eggs before choosing to hatch or fuse them. The worst ones were, of course, a present for the banana fairy. As Zhou Wen was making his plans, the chick flew down from his shoulder and pecked at a companion egg. It lowered its head and sucked all the essence in it. Since the chick had just helped tremendously, eating two companion eggs wasn't a big deal. In a rare instance, Zhou Wen generously gave it another companion egg. But to his surprise, it didn't show any appreciation. It didn't even look at it as though it was completely uninterested. You're rather picky with food. Even the better if you aren't eating it. Zhou Wen put away the companion eggs and ignored the chick. Compared to a companion egg, he was more interested in the sun seed. He wanted to know what it was. Previously, he had been in a hurry to come out and had taken in the sun seed into his mysterious phone, so he hadn't had a chance to look at it again. He took out his cell phone to take a look and, seeing that the sun seed was still in the blood-colored avatar's hand, he heaved a sigh of relief. Using his phone to check the sun seed's attributes, he was slightly taken aback. Sun God Power Crystal, a product of the sun god's blood essence. Absorbing it will improve one's body. A choice to absorb or not appeared on the game screen. Zhou Wen didn't sense any rejection from the side of the king, so he chose to absorb it. The sun god power crystal immediately transformed into a golden beam that fused into the blood-colored avatar's body. This made Zhou Wen also feel a burning sensation surge into his body, causing his body to heat up. When everything returned to normal, Zhou Wen saw that the blood-colored avatar's strength stat had already changed to 21. And behind 21, there was also the word sun. What does that mean? Zhou Wen was somewhat puzzled. Chapter 212 Trajectory Holy Temple Zhou Wen attempted using his strength, but he didn't sense any additional attributes or burning effects. He didn't know what the word, sun, behind strength meant. However, he had finally found a way to make a breakthrough. Zhou Wen planned on visiting the other temples. If he could succeed in obtaining power crystals there, he might be able to advance to the epic stage. When that happened, learning the mutated fairy skill would be a piece of cake. Among the six holy temples, Zhou Wen had already been to two, the Khanate and Sun God Holy Temples. The nearest one to them was the Divine Emperor Holy Temple. However, after some consideration, Zhou Wen didn't head to the Divine Emperor Holy Temple. Instead, he headed for one that was slightly further away. Zhou Wen had seen John's Holy Emperor body before, and guessed that it was likely a strength-type physique. The Sun God Holy Temple had boosted his strength, and the two seemed to overlap. Therefore, Zhou Wen planned on taking a look at the Trajectory Holy Temple first. It was said that it gave one the physique body of Trajectory. It was the most mysterious physique among the six. The Dugu family, which had the body of Trajectory, didn't seem to offer any outstanding performance. Hence, this physique was the most controversial. Some people even claimed that the owner of the body of Trajectory, the first generation hero of the Dugu family, didn't deserve to be ranked alongside the other five heroes. However, the Dugu family's lineage had continued most stably amongst the six families to date. In contrast, the other five families were more famous and had more power. However, they would occasionally have people die for various reasons. However, up till now, no one from the Dugu line died. The other first-generation heroes of the five families were mostly dead, but the original hero of the Dugu family remained alive and well. Now, the power of the Dugu family was so great that it was ranked in the top three of the six families. Quite a number of people jested in private, 
that having superior martial arts wasn't as good as having a long life. The Duga family's hero had outlasted several young heroes of the other five families. In the future, perhaps once the members of the five families were all dead, the Dugu family would be able to rule the world. The name, trajectory together with the fact that the people from the Dugu family had long lifespans, made Zhou Wen suspect that the body of trajectory was a speed-type physique. Therefore, members of the Dugu family could escape quickly. This allowed them to survive several dangers and stay alive. Zhou Wen was extremely interested in opportunities to augment his escaping abilities, so he planned on heading to the Trajectory Holy Temple to take a look. Many of the people from the six families had been crippled by Zhou Wen, so the few remaining ones didn't dare cause him trouble. It was as though they had vanished into thin air. Zhou Wen and Li Xian spent more than a day walking in the Holy Land without meeting a single member of the six families. Instead, they encountered the descendants of several powerful figures from other places. Those people had indifferent attitudes towards Zhou Wen. They neither offended him nor showed any intention of getting cozy with him. Clearly, they didn't wish to interfere in the feud between Zhou Wen and the six families. When they arrived at the Trajectory Holy Temple, there was no one outside, but the door was closed. Clearly, someone was undergoing a test inside. Zhou Wen and Li Xian could only wait outside. Zhou Wen took out his cell phone and continued gaming while Li Xian studied them, having the intention of hatching them all. After waiting for a while, they suddenly heard a rumble. The door to Trajectory Holy Temple opened, and a person rushed out. The person really sped out and ran very quickly. Furthermore, his hair was disheveled, and he looked like a lunatic. His face was awash with extreme horror, as though he had seen something unbelievable. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! I didn't see anything! I didn't see anything! Pal, what's wrong? Li Xian went forward to stop the person and pressed his shoulder as he asked. Li Xian wanted to ask what exactly was going on in the Trajectory Holy Temple to scare him to such an extent. However, the moment Li Xian pressed down on the man's shoulder, the man immediately turned pale from fright. What happened next shocked Zhou Wen and Li Xian. The person reached out and stabbed his eyes until they were two bloody holes. Then, he struggled to free himself from Li Xian's grasp. As he ran, he shouted, I didn't see anything! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! The duo was stunned as they looked at the bloodstains on the ground wondering if they were dreaming. Old Joe, I think it's best if we don't enter this holy temple. Although we aren't afraid of death, if we become a lunatic like that fellow, it'll be a fate worse than death. Li Xian gulped his saliva and turned to look at the trajectory holy temple. The way he looked at it was as though it was a diabolical din. Indeed, Zhou Wen felt that what Li Xian said made sense. He didn't wish to become a lunatic, and he was indeed afraid of death. The holy land appeared extremely safe without any dimensional creatures threatening their lives. However, the real danger was within the temples. Previously, the Sun God Holy Temple had nearly injured Zhou Wen. With the trajectory Holy Temple being so bizarre, Zhou Wen felt that he didn't necessarily have to enter. The two of them had a short discussion before preparing to leave. But at that moment, they saw the crazy man who had just stabbed his eyes run back again. His eyes were still bleeding, and he looked extremely terrifying. As he ran, he shouted, Help! Help! His eyes were blinded, so he stumbled as he ran. It took him a few stumbles before coming in front of the duo. He fell to the ground and hugged Li Xian's thigh. Save me! I don't want to die! Save me! Li Xian could sense that his body was trembling terribly, as though something extremely terrifying had affected his thoughts, causing such intense convulsions. What happened? Tell me clearly first! Li Xian felt apologetic towards the person, so he didn't push him away and comforted him. Li Xian thought that if he hadn't stopped this person just now, this person might not have blinded his eyes. Even a lunatic would be happier to see things than being blind. The person hugged Li Xian's calf and said in an extremely terrified tone, I saw a ship, a very, very large ship. Someone on the ship was engaging in murder. All of them died. All of them died. I didn't see anything. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. The person said a few more words before his madness worsened. He released Li Xian's leg and attempted to escape again. Zhou Wen extended his hand to pull the person. Since he was blind, there was a chance of him running off a cliff to certain death. Zhou Wen grabbed the man's arm, but the man struggled with all his might. He managed to escape with his extraordinary strength, but his sleeve was ripped off by Zhou Wen. When his gaze landed on the man's arm, Zhou Wen's pupils constricted. On the man's arm, there was an anchor-like tattoo. Chapter 213 Lunatic Chapter 213 Lunatic This was not the first time Zhou Wen had seen an image of the anchor. This was because women were typically taboo to sailors out at sea. Therefore, it was impossible for women to be engraved on an anchor, but this anchor symbol had a woman's side profile on it. This left a deep impression on him. 
Zhou Wen hadn't figured out what the anchor symbol meant, so he was rather curious. Now, suddenly seeing such a tattoo on the person's arm, he really wanted to ask him about the origins of it. Alas, this person was another lunatic. He was running around like a madman. Despite being blind, he kept running. He stumbled and fell several times, but refused to stop. He mentioned that he had seen a ship, and that someone was engaging in murder on it. Does that anchor symbol have any relationship to the ship he mentioned? Zhou Wen thought to himself. Looking at the ancient trajectory holy temple in the distance, Zhou Wen suddenly realized that his previous guess was wrong. Most of the six original heroes died in the dimensional zones. Only the old hero of the Dugu family remained well and alive. Perhaps it was not because he had run the fastest. From the looks of it, he must have seen something terrifying in the trajectory holy temple. Typically, there are two possibilities. One is that there's really something terrifying inside which is why he is so afraid. Another possibility is that there aren't any terrifying things inside. All he saw was an illusion. Either way, this doesn't look like a test of speed type physique. As Zhou Wen was in thought, the person had slammed himself into a tree due to his blindness. He fainted as a result. Zhou Wen walked to the madman and checked his injuries. He realized that he had only suffered superficial wounds and there weren't any serious problems. He had only fainted. Do you know who he is? Zhou Wen asked Li Xian. Those who were able to enter the Holy Land were either descendants of the six heroes or the representatives of powerful figures. Although Zhou Wen didn't know him, a knowledgeable person like Li Xian might. If he could figure out the identity of this lunatic, he might be able to figure out something about him. However, Li Xian shook his head and said, I don't know him. However, judging from his attire, he doesn't look like someone from the six families. He might be here to represent some big shot. With Li Xian not being able to recognize him, Zhou Wen was out of ideas as he said to Li Xian, Is there any way to take him out? He's a lunatic, and now he's blind. If we leave him here, he might not be able to survive. I'm afraid there's no other way now. It's easy to enter the Holy Land, but to leave, the six temples need to make a decision regarding their successors before a path will be opened. Now no one can leave, Li Xian said with a shake of his head. Zhou Wen had the intention of taking him out and asking about his background. But if he had to wait that long, it wouldn't be convenient to take a lunatic along the way. Let's do this. Tie him on my mount, and we can bring him with us. After all, I caused him to become blind. It's not good to leave him here, Li Xian said with a sigh. All right. Zhou Wen happened to share the same thoughts, so he immediately agreed. After Li Xian summoned a pet cow, the duo lifted the madman onto the cow's back and used a rope to secure him on it before continuing on their journey to the other temples. After walking for a short distance, they heard the crazy man on the cow's back speaking. The two of them thought that he had woken up, but when they took a closer look, they saw him lying there and muttering to himself as if he was deliriously talking in a dream. Trajectory Holy Temple I must go to the Trajectory Holy Temple. As long as I enter the Trajectory Holy Temple, I'll know what exactly happened on the ship. Why are they killing each other? Why? Don't! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! I didn't see anything! He mumbled incoherently in his dreams. Everything was fine at first, but it developed into a nightmare like whale. After listening for a while, Zhou Wen suddenly had the urge to enter the trajectory holy temple to take a look. Although this lunatic was somewhat incoherent, from what he had said, it was very possible that he had indeed been on a ship before. However, something unexpected had happened on the ship in the end. The people on the ship had been killing each other or killing someone. And this person had survived. However, even the person in question didn't know what had happened on the ship back then so he wanted to use the power of the Trajectory Holy Temple to find out. If this theory was valid, then the power in the Trajectory Holy Temple's trajectory was very likely to allow people to see the past. That was why this person wanted to use its power. In other words, it shouldn't be because the power in the Trajectory Holy Temple had driven him mad. It was the happenings on the ship that he had seen that left him so frightened. As Zhou Wen was pondering over it, the man seemed to wake up from his nightmare. He immediately straightened his body, but he couldn't sit up after being tied down. He could only stick to the cow's back as his body stiffened like a stick. Who are you? What are you trying to do? The lunatic shouted in horror. Brother, don't be afraid. We don't have any ill intentions. We were afraid that you would go crazy and run around, so we tied you up on the cow's back. When the exit is opened, we will take you out of the holy land. The treatment techniques these days are excellent, and with the usable powers of a companion beast, you can definitely have your eyes healed. Li Xian didn't care if he could understand and spoke quickly. That person seemed to sober up a little. He wasn't as afraid as before, but he was still a little agitated. He shouted, I don't want to leave. Let go of me. I want to enter the trajectory holy temple. Zhou Wen and Li Xian exchanged looks, 
and could see the shock in each other's eyes. This person had been so afraid moments ago that he was about to commit suicide, but now, he was insisting on returning to the trajectory holy temple. It was truly baffling what he was up to. Brother, don't be agitated. You just came out from the trajectory holy temple. Why do you want to enter now? Li Xian asked curiously. I want. I want. The madman thought for a long period of time, but couldn't come up with a reason. Then, he suddenly froze and said in a daze, What do I want? What do I want? This person is really crazy. Li Xian shook his head with a wry smile. Zhou Wen looked at the lunatic with a frown without saying a word. He really was curious about the madman's affairs, but from the looks of it, he was unlikely to fathom anything out. This fellow's brain was completely damaged. The madman suddenly used all his strength to break the rope. He jumped off the cow's back and ran in the direction of the trajectory holy temple. His speed was so surprisingly fast that Zhou Wen and Li Xian didn't react in time. Chapter 214 Unable to Tell the Truth Chapter 214 Unable to Tell the Truth Xia Bing, Du Guchuan, and the others were gathered together, their expressions not looking very good. More than 30 people from the six families that had entered the Holy Land had been crippled by Zhou Wen. This was only thanks to some people's primordial energy see not being located at the lower Dantian. Otherwise, there would have been even more. Zhou Wen is another in Tianzhua. If we were to let him leave the Holy Land, the reputation of our six families will be destroyed. John's face was pale, but he was flushed red from agitation. So what if you don't let him leave? Which one of you has the means to restrain his companion beast? Xia Bing said coldly. I'm not afraid of that kind of flame, but I'm no match for Zhou Wen alone. This fellow's companion beast is just too powerful. The Yin family has been in charge of the primordial gold mine for so many years that they are filthy rich. In terms of wealth, they aren't much inferior to our six families put together. From the looks of it, they went all out this time to smack us in the face. Du Guchuan said with a sigh. He imagined that Zhou Wen was a result of the Yin family's arrangements. If I had known this would happen, I would have made more preparations. In terms of companion beasts, our family won't lose to them in terms of quantity. It's not impossible for us to incubate a few epic companion beasts. At most, we would have to pay a tiny price. Prose was feeling both angry and hateful. His primordial energy sea was not in his lower dantion, so he wasn't crippled. However, he didn't feel good after being stabbed in his abdomen. What's the point of all this hindsight? If I had known, I would have cried like a woman and thrown a tantrum. I would have taken the mythical companion egg from my aunt and wouldn't have allowed Zhou Wen to be so arrogant, said Du Guchuan gloomily. Many of the six families' members had special physiques, ones that allowed them to explore certain special dimensional zones. If they had a certain affinity, they would be able to obtain a mythical companion egg like Zhou Wen in small Buddha temple. A few of them had previously obtained mythical companion eggs. However, they were only at the mortal stage when they hatched. They needed to be fed for growth. As for whether they could advance to the mythical stage, it was still an unknown. After all these years, it was rare for one to actually raise a companion egg to the mythical stage. It was rare even in the six families. Ever since Du Guchuan inherited his family's body of trajectory, he had a chance to incubate a mythical pet. However, it wasn't safe enough. Therefore, Du Guchuan's aunt hadn't given him the mythical egg she had single-handedly obtained in the dimensional zone. Prose glanced at Xia Bing and said, You have foresight. That Calabash should be a mythical companion beast, right? Now isn't the time to talk about this. Let's think about how to deal with Zhou Wen first. Xia Bing said indifferently without answering the question. What else is there? We don't have any powerful companion beasts that can fight Zhou Wen. It's useless no matter what ideas we come up with. In this holy land, only one person from our six families can defeat Zhou Wen. John said. You mean Lance? Xia Bing frowned. He's the only one. John nodded. But didn't you say earlier that Lance has already rejected the request? With his personality, he won't do a thing, Xia Bing said. Now, things are different. People from his family have also been crippled by Zhou Wen. Even if Lance doesn't help us, is he going to ignore kinship? John asked. Xia Bing and the others looked at each other, realizing that what John said made sense. Although what you said is true, you know Lance's personality too. He's very strange, and it's not necessarily possible. Let's go find Lance first. As Du Guchuan spoke, he prepared to get up. Hold on. Tell Lance that Zhou Wen has two mythical pets after you find him. John suddenly said. Du Guchuan and company were slightly taken aback. Although Zhou Wen's companion beasts were powerful, they didn't think in the direction of the mythical beast. They only believed that Zhou Wen had used some special method to hatch an epic companion egg. Due to the lack of special physiques, it was impossible for him to obtain a mythical companion egg, much less incubate it. 
Zhou Wen didn't have the bloodline of the six families, so it was impossible for him to have inherited a special physique. How could he have a mythical beast? Therefore, they believed that Zhou Wen's companion beasts only had high levels and powerful techniques. Zhou Wen's bird and fan are mythical companion beasts, asked Du Guchuan as he stared at John. Is it really that important? As long as it intrigues Lance, no? John said with a smile. Du Guchuan immediately understood and nodded slightly. All right then. Those two pets indeed have extraordinary qualities and look like mythical pets. When Du Guchuan took his guys to look for Lance, Zhou Wen and Li Xian were sitting in front of the Trajectory Holy Temple's entrance, waiting. That blind madman had actually charged into the Trajectory Holy Temple again. They wanted to wait for the lunatic to come out before reassessing the situation. Old Joe, do you think that lunatic's words are reliable? If it's really as he said, wouldn't the power inside the Trajectory Holy Temple be something that can't be seen? Li Xian said casually as he was bored. I don't know. You'll need to enter to know. Zhou Wen stared at the temple's door. He was already tempted, but he didn't want to take the risk. Earlier on, he had searched the surroundings of the Trajectory Holy Temple, but he hadn't found any sign of the tiny palm, preventing him from downloading this place into his phone. Strange, why don't the dimensional zones in the Holy Land have tiny palm symbols? Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed. If he could download them onto his cell phone, he could enter all the Holy Land without any scruples. If I must say, he's a lunatic. He's definitely spouting nonsense. Think about it. Although the League controls the entire Earth in name, it doesn't dare head into the sea, nor do they dare go out to sea. That lunatic is only the same age as us. He's definitely still a student. How can he head out to sea on a ship at such a young age? Therefore, what he said must be illusions he saw in the Trajectory Holy Temple. Li theorized. Li Xian's words reminded Zhou when that going on a cruise was probably something that had happened before the dimensional storms came. After the dimensional storms, even an aircraft carrier wouldn't return once it set off, much less an ordinary cruise ship. It was impossible for an ordinary person to board a ship to head out into the sea. Just like them, this lunatic was a young man who was participating in the trials. At his age, even if his elders had the ability to go out to sea, they wouldn't dare take him along. Could it be that the power in the trajectory holy temple is just an illusion? Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss. The anchor symbol on the lunatic's arm still bothered him. Moreover, that lunatic had also said that he wanted to use the power of the trajectory holy temple to see what had happened in the past. From the looks of it, I'll only know if that lunatic's words are true after I enter the trajectory holy temple and take a look. As Zhou Wen pondered, the temple's door slowly opened. The madman was lying in front of the door with one hand on the sill, motionless. They couldn't tell if he was dead or unconscious. Chapter 215 Crossroads Zhou Wen and Li Xian hurriedly went over and pulled the lunatic's hand out of the door. When they went over, both of them had been very careful and hadn't crossed the threshold. As long as they didn't cross it, it wouldn't be considered as entering the temple for a trial. However, just as Zhou Wen grabbed the madman's hand, he felt a strange force from inside the trajectory holy temple pull him in. Zhou Wen immediately sensed that something was amiss. He and Li Xian had clearly held onto the madman's hand at the same time without crossing the threshold. Why was Li Xian fine, but he had been pulled into the door by some force? Li Xian reached out his hand to grab Zhou Wen, but it was too late. Zhou Wen was sucked inside, and with a bang, the door to the temple automatically closed and left Li Xian outside. Seeing that he and the lunatic were locked inside, Zhou Wen pulled the lunatic away in a bid to head back. Typically, even if the trial had begun, he could still choose to withdraw. However, when Zhou Wen turned around, he was dumbfounded. There was no stone door behind him. Not only so, was nothing there, but there was only a straight road leading far into the distance. At the end of the road were blue skies and white clouds. Zhou Wen turned his body 360 degrees and immediately realized that he and the lunatic were standing at a crossroads. All four directions led straight to the horizon. Apart from the road, there was nothing else. Neither the holy temple or stone walls existed. What's happening? Is the test to get us to choose a path? But the four directions are the same. How do we choose? You need to give us some hints, right? Zhou Wen shouted into the sky. There had to be some creature in the temple controlling everything, otherwise, he wouldn't have been pulled in. However, Zhou Wen didn't hear any response after waiting for quite a while. At that moment, the unconscious lunatic woke up. He rubbed his head and sat up, then sized up his surroundings. His face was filled with confusion. The lunatic didn't look as crazy as before while he asked, What is this place? Haven't you entered the trajectory holy temple twice? Zhou Wen gave him an odd expression. He had clearly been blinded, but he was now completely fine. This is the Trajectory Holy Temple? Isn't there a ship in the Trajectory Holy Temple? 
The madman looked at Joe Wen in surprise, as though he was trying to determine if what Joe Wen said was true. You saw a ship when you entered the trajectory holy temple before? Joe Wen felt that something was amiss. If that ship was really an illusion that only the lunatic could see, it would be very difficult for him to get anything out of the lunatic's mouth. That's right, it's a ship. When he mentioned it, the expression on his face changed again, but fortunately, he didn't act up like before. Joe Wen hurriedly changed the topic and pointed at the anchor tattoo on his arm. This tattoo of yours is rather interesting. Is there any special meaning to it? The madman seemed to be lost as he subconsciously answered. This was tattooed by my father when I was young. He was a sailor, and he said that this was the mark of their ship. When I grow up, I can become a sailor like him and work on his ship. Are there still sailor professions these days? Joe Wen asked in puzzlement. From what he knew, no ship had dared to enter the sea in the past few decades. Even if someone were to enter, they would still be epic experts steering a companion beast. A ship wouldn't be required, much less a sailor. Yes, why not? Our hometown has many fishing boats that go out to sea every day to fish. It's just that my dad's ship is different. It's a ship that travels across many countries and sells different goods to different countries. The lunatic looked much more awake. Wait, you mentioned countries? Zhou Wen stared at the madman with an odd expression, trying to determine if he was being fooled. Countries were a concept before the dimensional storms. After the dimensional storms, there was only the league and no countries. Humans had united together to survive that calamity. That's right. Is there something wrong? The madman looked at Joe when in astonishment, as though whatever he said could only be right. Brother, how old are you? Joe when asked. Seventeen, why are you asking this? The madman asked, puzzled. Then are you joking with me? After the dimensional storms, how can there be any countries? There are dimensional zones everywhere over the sea. No one in the league dares to enter the sea now, much less fish. It would be pretty good if they weren't eaten by fish. Joe Wen said. What do you mean? What lead? What dimensional storm? The madman looked at Joe when like he was looking at a lunatic. All right, don't tell me that you were born before the dimensional storms. Joe Wen frowned as he looked at the lunatic. He felt that this person was messing with him. Perhaps he hadn't gone mad from the beginning. The madman looked at Joe Wen seriously and said, I don't know what you mean by that. My name is Olai. I was born in a town not far from the seaside named Langya Town. I came here for to... At this point, Olai was stunned, as if he couldn't recall why he had come here. Joe Wen didn't know if this person was mad or faking it, so he asked. How did you know about the Holy Land, and how did you come here? What Holy Land? Isn't this the Six Path Temples? Asked Olai in puzzlement. The Six Path Temples? Zhou Wen was also dumbfounded. He felt like he was communicating with an alien, completely at a loss as to what the man was talking about. That's right. It's the Six Path Temples. This is... Olai realized that he couldn't recall anything. He rubbed his head, but he still couldn't think of it. You know that this is the Trajectory Holy Temple, right? Zhou Wen asked again. That's right. This is one of the Six Path Temples, the Trajectory Holy Temple. Olai answered with certainty. Do you still remember why you came here? Zhou Wen continued asking. Olai thought about it, and his expression gradually turned ugly. I seem to remember that I followed Dad onto his ship, then, then, we encountered a storm. After that, after that. At this point, Olai suddenly hugged his head and screamed out in pain. Soon, he fell to the ground and twitched continuously. He passed out shortly after. Zhou Wen checked his body and realized that he wasn't faking it. Zhou Wen was confused. What's wrong with this fellow? Is he really? Impossible. He's only 17. Impossible. Zhou Wen looked at Olai as countless thoughts flashed through his mind. Since Olai didn't wake up, Zhou Wen had no choice but to think of a way out. However, all he could see was four straight roads. Zhou Wen summoned the mutated lotus flower ant, made it carry Olai, and chose a direction to walk in. Chapter 216 Trajectory Krista There was no concept of north or south, east or west here. Zhou Wen carefully observed his surroundings for a long time, but he failed to discover any differences. All he could do was choose one. It was no longer within Zhou Wen's consideration whether he could pass the trial. All he wanted was to leave quickly, and leave the Holy Land before getting the League's authorities to investigate all lies' origins. Every person who entered the Holy Land had their information recorded. If he had entered with the rest of them, information about him was definitely available. If there's no information about him. The corners of Zhou Wen's eyes twitched when he thought of this. The road seemed endless as it extended to the end of the horizon. After more than an hour of walking, the surrounding scenery remained unchanged. Suddenly, Zhou Wen realized that there was something different in front of him. He quickened his pace, and continued proceeding. 
he discovered that there was another crossroad ahead of him. It didn't seem different from the one he had set off from. The only difference was that there was another stone statue in the middle of the crossroad. The stone statue was a three to four meter tall root. The four sides of the stone statue were faces. The face that faced Joe and said, Congratulations, human. You have completed the test and can become the representative of the trajectory holy temple in the mortal world. The moment the stone statue said that, Joe Wen felt a strong sense of aversion from the sigh of the king. Even his emotions were affected. Joe Wen suppressed his emotions and looked at the stone face, saying, Sorry, I don't plan on becoming the representative of the trajectory holy temple. I only wanted to get my friend out and accidentally entered. Joe Wen secretly cursed inwardly. It's clearly you who forcefully pulled me in. Besides, how is this a trial? It's a forced selection. Since you are already here, why don't you consider it? As the representative of my trajectory holy temple in the mortal world, not only will you obtain a trajectory holy body, you will also obtain a mythical companion beast that's compatible with it. Added the stone face. Thank you for the offer, but I already have my own goals. The trajectory holy temple isn't my choice. Please open the door and let us leave this place. Zhou Wen increasingly felt that this fellow was up to no good. One who was unreasonably solicitous was definitely hiding evil intentions. The stone face didn't say anything else. Its originally expressionless face slowly turned stiff, turning into a lifeless stone statue. Zhou Wen shouted a few more times, but the stone statue didn't react at all as though it was just an ordinary stone statue. Zhou Wen thought for a moment before circling around the stone statue and continuing forward. After walking for some time, another crossroad appeared in front of him. In the middle of the crossroad was the four-faced stone pillar. Zhou Wen surveyed his surroundings and felt that this was the crossroad that he had previously arrived at. He couldn't help but frown slightly, but the stone statue remained silent. All he could do was switch directions before continuing forward. Soon, Zhou Wen realized that no matter where he went, he would ultimately return to the four-faced stone pillar, as though this place was an endless cycle. Why are we still here? Ah Lai, who was on the mutated lotus flower ant's back, woke up as he rubbed his eyes. Zhou Wen looked at Ah Lai and suddenly had a thought. You previously said that there was a ship inside the trajectory holy temple when you entered? Yes, a ship, one identical to the one my father worked on. Ah Lai answered. Did you board your father's ship before? Zhou Wen asked again. I did. On the first day after graduation from high school, my dad took me onto the ship, answered Ah Lui. Then take a careful look. Have you been here before? Have you seen it before? Zhou Wen pointed at the four-faced stone pillar. Ah Lai looked at it for a while before answering with certainty. No, I've never seen it. After Zhou Wen heard that, he seemed to understand something as he secretly frowned and thought. Based on Ah Lai's situation, the people who entered the trajectory holy temple will be trapped in their memories. However, since Ah Lai has never been here before and has never seen the four-faced stone pillars, this might be my memory. However, I've never been to such a place before, right? Guide City, where Zhou Wen was born, was a flat plain. Even if there were large swaths of flat land, they were farmland. It was impossible for there to be such a large grassland. Zhou Wen was certain that he had never been here before. After a moment of silence, Zhou Wen suddenly drew his bamboo blade and slashed at the four-faced stone statue. The bamboo blade was extremely sharp, splitting the stone statue into two upon contact. The broken stone statue vanished with a poof. The roads and plains around him vanished as well. Zhou Wen couldn't help but break out into cold sweat when he saw the scene in front of him. He was indeed standing at a crossroads, but this crossroad was not built on grasslands, but built on a volcano lava pool. If Zhou Wen hadn't walked along the path and stepped onto the plains, he would probably have fallen into the lava pool. In the middle of the crossroads, there was a stone platform with a black seed floating above it. It was like the condensation of night, emitting a strange and mysterious aura. This aura was similar to the sun god crystal he had previously obtained, but there were differences. Zhou Wen attempted to grab the seed with his hand, but nothing special happened. He easily removed the black seed. Boom! The moment the black seed was removed by Zhou Wen, the entire temple quaked as the door opened once again. Zhou Wen saw Li Xian standing outside. He quickly took Ah Lu out of the temple with him. As expected, a bright light was shining from the trajectory holy temple. The various engravings emitted a strange black fog, a sign that the trajectory holy temple had selected an heir. From then on, the trajectory holy temple would shut its doors until the holy land opened again. Old Joe, don't you have a body that matches the sun god temple? How did you pass the trajectory holy temple's trial? Li Xian looked at Zhou Wen in astonishment. I don't know what's going on either. I find it a little baffling. Zhou Wen looked at the black seed in his hand and felt that something was amiss. He felt that the black seed had been given to him 
by the temple itself, and not something he had obtained from a real trial. At least, he was not trapped in his memories. Zhou Wen even suspected that what the four-faced stone statue had said wasn't a test or an illusion, but to genuinely rope him in. Why bother? It's better to have something than nothing. If the six families learn that you have actually obtained the recognition of two temples, their expressions will be very interesting. Li Xian chuckled. There's nothing to show off about. Zhou Wen made Li Xian watch over a lie as he secretly snapped a picture of the black seed on his cell phone, sending it into the game. He had a strange feeling that the trajectory holy temple was odd, so he didn't dare absorb the black seed directly. Chapter 217 It's You? Trajectory God Power Crystal, a product of the God of Trajectory's blood essence. Absorbing it will enhance one's bloodline. Seeing that there was no problem with the game's judgment, Zhou Wen allowed the blood-colored avatar to absorb the Trajectory God Power Crystal. As the black power was absorbed by the blood-colored avatar, its stats changed once again. His speed stat also increased to 21 points, and in the end, it revealed the word. Trajectory. The Trajectory Holy Temple really increases speed. It's quite a coincidence. Zhou Wen was secretly amused. Although he had previously believed that the Trajectory Holy Temple corresponded to speed, the situation inside the temple was completely different from what he had imagined. Therefore, Zhou Wen was surprised that the Trajectory God Power Crystal could increase speed. Zhou Wen and Li Xian asked a lot more questions, but the latter really seemed to have forgotten many things. He only remembered that he had come from Langya Town, his father was a sailor, and that he had followed his father onto the ship after he graduated from high school. Later, he encountered a storm at sea, and he couldn't remember what happened after that. Zhou Wen had some doubts about a lie and planned on figuring out his origins after taking him out. However, before that, he had to wait until the end of the Holy Land's trials. Zhou Wen had originally wanted to head to the other temples, to obtain their god power crystals to raise his four stats to 21 points. But when they arrived at a few other temples, they realized that they had already completely closed. Clearly, the god power crystal had been taken away by someone else. There are indeed hidden dragons and crouching tigers in the league. In just a few days, the god power crystals have been snatched away. Zhou Wen was somewhat worried about Li Xian. If the Kane infinite physique was taken away, Li Xian would have zero hope left. As he was deep in thought, he suddenly heard the sound of thunder coming from the sky. The wind and cloud stirred as if a hole had collapsed in the sky, forming a huge vortex. Zhou Wen's body involuntarily flew towards the vortex. He could see other people flying around the holy land and being sucked into the vortex. Zhou Wen didn't resist the suction force of the vortex as he allowed himself to fly into it. He even patted Li Xian's shoulder. There was only one possibility of such a situation. The god power crystals of the six holy temples had been taken away by others. It was why everything had ended ahead of time, opening up a passageway to leave the Holy Land. However, Li Xian didn't mind. Since I couldn't obtain it, it means that I wasn't destined to get it. It's no big deal even if I don't have any special physiques. With my immortal god of combat life providence, I can still forge my own path. The world is my oyster. You're right. It might not be a bad thing not having a special physique. Zhou Wen had a nagging feeling that the six holy temples were somewhat odd. All right, don't console me. I've suffered too much since I was young. Such a trivial matter isn't enough to make me depressed. Li Xian believed Zhou Wen was consoling him. Zhou Wen didn't explain. After all, everyone wanted a special physique, and he didn't have any evidence and was speculating without any grounds. It was pointless explaining. Together with all Lai, the trio flew towards the vortex and arrived near it. They happened to see pros being sucked up as well. In turn, he glared at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen, don't be too happy. This matter isn't over yet. As he spoke, he was sucked into the vortex. Zhou Wen and company were also sucked in. Soon, they returned to the stone altar from before. Zhou Wen originally wanted to take Ali elsewhere to check his identity, but he discovered that many young people had yet to leave the altar. Instead, they surrounded it, clearly targeting him and Li Xian. Why are you crowding here? Hurry up and move aside. Do you want to fight here? Li Xian said with a twitch of his lips. They could do whatever they wanted in the Holy Land, but now that they were out, they would be bound by the League's laws. Although the six families enjoyed special privileges, they did not have the privilege to openly challenge a representative of the Yin family here. Lance, it's him! No one bothered with Li Xian. John pointed at Zhou Wen and said to Lance, You are Zhou Wen? Lance looked at Zhou Wen in surprise. Your name is Lance? Zhou Wen was surprised as well. Before coming, Jiang Yan had warned him that the only person he needed to be afraid of was someone named Lance. Did you cripple their primordial energy seas? Lance asked Zhou Wen. Yes, but they were the ones who initiated it. Zhou Wen originally didn't plan on explaining, but
but after taking a glance at Lance, he still decided to explain. Lance nodded. Actually, that's not important. I want to fight with you. Choose the venue and time. Because I'm the representative of the Yin family? Zhou Wen knew that Lance cultivated because of his goal of defeating Yin Tianzhu. Not for anyone else. Just because you are Zhou Wen. Apart from Yin Tianzhu, you are the second person that has intrigued me. I didn't plan on taking action back when they asked for my help, but since you are Zhou Wen, I'm interested in fighting you, said Lance. But I don't wish to fight with you. Fighting is troublesome, Zhou Wen said as he spread out his hands. He wasn't a battle maniac like Feng Chuyin. He wasn't interested in a meaningless fight. It was time that Zhou Wen could use to game. Fight me. No matter who wins or loses, I'll ensure that you leave the holy city safely. If not, you will ultimately be in trouble. Those guys won't let you off easily. Compared to fighting me, those guys will delay your gaming time more, right? Lance suddenly came close to Zhou Wen and whispered in his ear with a voice that only he could hear. It looks like I can't reject it, but the time and place is up to me to choose. Zhou Wen said with a shrug. Lance's words were half-truths, but there was one thing he was right about. Those from the six families definitely wouldn't let this matter rest. Their best chance was in Holy City, so it was impossible for them to allow Zhou Wen to leave so easily. Although Zhou Wen didn't expect Lance to really allow him to leave, stalling for time gave Ah Sheng time to prepare. You can choose any time and place in the next two days, said Lance. Lance, two days is way too long. John turned anxious as he was afraid Zhou Wen would take the opportunity to escape. However, Lance only smiled and said, He won't run, so don't worry. There's no need for two days. Let's do it tomorrow afternoon. I still want to make an early return after the fight, Zhou Wen said. All right. Where will it be? Lance asked. I'll inform you when the time comes. Zhou Wen didn't answer directly. He planned on getting Ah Sheng to choose the location. With Ah Sheng's abilities, he would definitely be able to choose a suitable spot. Chapter 218 Soundless In the hotel room, Ah Sheng looked at Zhou Wen with an odd expression. That's what happened. Is there a problem? Zhou Wen recounted his experience in the Holy Land. Not at all. Don't worry, leave the rest to me. Ah Sheng said without any hesitation. All right then. I'll go back and prepare. As Zhou Wen spoke, he prepared to return to his room and absorb the mutated fairy's primordial energy skill crystal. Due to the earlier stat requirements, Zhou Wen wasn't able to master it. Now that his speed had increased to 21, he had reached the requirement. He could then battle Lance after practicing it. Young Master One, you have to be careful of Lance. Although he's not as famous as John, those who truly are in the know of the six families know that Lance is the most terrifying person of this generation. Ashun said. I know. Even if Ashun hadn't said anything, Zhou Wen could sense it. He also has a nickname, Soundless. Ashun continued. Why Soundless? Is the primordial energy art he cultivates related to sound? Zhou Wen asked curiously. Ashun said. There are all kinds of sounds in this world. Every sound has its own unique rhythm and charm. Every life has the right to make its own voice, proving that they are part of this world. However, there are some voices that are loud enough and some sound softer. Ah Sheng didn't directly mention the reason behind Lance's nickname, but Zhou Wen already understood why. The meaning behind it was that when Lance made a sound, the entire world would quieten down. There wouldn't be any other noise except for his sounds. Returning to his room, Zhou Wen took out the mutated fairy primordial energy skill crystal and took a picture and took it in game. The blood-colored avatar held the mutated fairy crystal and chose to absorb it, but Zhou Wen was notified that it couldn't absorb it. Zhou Wen switched his primordial energy art to the small perfection of Wisdom Sutra before the notification was removed. The crystal immediately transformed into strands of black and white auras that fused into the blood-colored avatar's body. Zhou Wen felt as though there was a faint immortal aura flowing within him, making his body float up like a hydrogen balloon. After a while, the feeling gradually disappeared until it returned to normal. Only then did the system in the game give a new hint. Absorb the mutated fairy crystal. Attain Transcendent Flying Immortal. Zhou Wen took a look at the blood-colored avatar's information. Indeed, there was an additional skill, Transcendent Flying Immortal, not the Dragon Gate Flying Immortal technique that Zhou Wen knew of. Is this Transcendent Flying Immortal a primordial energy skill that only mutated fairies possess? Could it be a mutated version of the Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill? Zhou Wen hurriedly took a look at the introduction of Transcendent Flying Immortal. Although the other techniques of a mutated fairy were powerful, what Zhou Wen wanted the most was the Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill. There were countless primordial energy skills in the world, and there were countless powerful primordial energy skills, but they only had one effect to defeat or kill the enemy. However, Zhou Wen didn't like to kill, and he cherished his life greatly. 
the Dragon Gate's flying immortal skill was undoubtedly the best life-saving technique. If he couldn't beat his adversary, he could run, preventing them from catching up to him. It was useless even if his opponent was strong. Transcendent Flying Immortal Ascension Technique for Other Realm Immortals The information was very vague, but it was likely a primordial energy skill similar to the Dragon Gate Fairy skill. When Joe Wen carefully sensed the information he had obtained from the Transcendent Flying Immortal, he looked even more pleasantly surprised. The next morning when he woke up for breakfast, Zhou Wen saw Li Xian and All Lai sitting at the table chatting. Zhou Wen originally wanted to investigate All Lai's origins, but with the hoo-ha caused by the six families yesterday, he had ended up delaying the matter. All Lai had also followed them back to the hotel. Zhou Wen had recalled the matter on the way back. He originally wanted to take All Lai to the officials to investigate the identity the latter had used to enter, but after informing Ah Sheng, Ah Sheng told him that there was no need for him to go. There was no such person on the Holy Land list. Ah Sheng was very certain if it was a person on the name list. There was no way he had never seen him before. This left Zhou Wen very puzzled. If Ah Lai wasn't part of the batch of people who had entered the Holy Land, where did he come from? How did he end up within the trajectory Holy Temple? Ah Lai, what plans do you have for the future? Are you interested in hanging out with us? There's absolutely nothing wrong with following me. I guarantee you that you'll live in the lap of luxury. There will be endless beautiful girls. Li Xian seemed to be trying to seduce him. All I said with an odd expression. How did the world become like this? It doesn't matter what the world turns into. A good man treats the four corners of the world as his home. What difference does the place make? If you follow me in the future, I guarantee you that you will have a brighter future than being a sailor. Li Xian said as he patted All Lai on the shoulder. Zhou Wen found it odd. Although Li Xian wasn't a bad person, he wasn't that good enough to be a philanthropist. It didn't seem like his personality at all. All Lai didn't reply. When he saw Zhou Wen walk over, he said, Zhou Wen, you said that I came from inside the Trajectory Holy Temple, and you also entered the Trajectory Holy Temple. Do you know why I was there? It seems like you entered the Trajectory Holy Temple because you wanted to investigate what happened to your father's ship. I don't know anything else. Have you completely forgotten? Zhou Wen asked. All Lai shook his head. I only remember that my father's ship encountered a storm. I can't remember what happened afterward. There's no rush. You can think about it slowly. Li Xian isn't a bad person. If you have nowhere to go, why don't you bunk with him for now? After all, he's rich. He's not afraid of being bankrupted. Zhou Wen said. That's right, that's right. I'll definitely make sure everything is the best. Li Xian did not retort at all, making Zhou Wen find it even odder. After breakfast, Ah Lai went out for a walk, claiming he wanted to know what the world looked like. Hence, he went out alone. When Zhou Wen saw Ah Lai leave, he asked Li Xian. Why are you so enthusiastic and nice? This isn't like you. Tell me honestly, what are you planning? Heavens, haven't you noticed? Li Xian said in an exaggerated manner. What? Zhou Wen asked with a frown. Ah Lai is very strong. Li Xian seemed to find this description insufficient as he added. He's especially strong. At least he's stronger than us. Why do you say that? Zhou Wen asked in puzzlement. Ah Lai didn't seem to show any special combat ability. Didn't I use a rope to tie him to my companion beast's back? That rope was formed from a legendary nine-scaled serpent. If I were tied up by it, there's no way I could break free. As for Ah Lai, he easily broke through it in a seemingly trivial manner. Li Xian said. Now that this fellow has lost his memory and there's nowhere for him to go, isn't it a perfect win-win situation for me to take him in while he helps me with certain matters? Chapter 219 Battling Lance Little Lin's pet combat arena was Ah Sheng's chosen venue for the match. Many of the younger generation of the six families had come to the arena, including some who were in their 20s or 30s. Back then, Antianzua had suppressed and crippled that generation. Now another, Zhou Wen had appeared. He had crippled more than 30 members of the six families. This was an absolute humiliation to them. Xia Bing glanced at Lance, who was sitting in the resting area as she said with a complicated expression. Thankfully, this generation of the six families produced Lance. Otherwise, they would have to swallow their anger as they did back then. She had always wanted to chase up to Lance or even surpass him, but no matter how hard she tried, the distance between her and Lance just grew further and further, so much so that she couldn't see his back anymore. Despite Lance not having inherited a hero's physique and not cultivating his family's primordial energy art, he was able to steam ahead, making it impossible for others to even have the thought of chasing up to him. Fortunately, there's only one Lance in this world. Xia Bing sighed inwardly, unsure if she was feeling happy or sad for herself. Here he comes! Du Vu Chuan suddenly said. Xia Bing looked over and indeed saw Zhou Wen arrive in the arena with Ah Sheng and Li Xian. 
The latter two remained in the spectator stands, while Zhou Wen walked into the arena alone. When Lance saw Zhou Wen, he stood up from the bench in the resting area and walked into the arena. The members of the six families were rather calm. Others might think that Zhou Wen had a chance, but they knew better Zhou Wen had no chance at all. No one under the epic stage was Lance's match. Even someone at the epic stage might not be his match. In a corner of the spectator stand sat a man and a woman. Both of them wore hats and sunglasses that covered most of their faces. However, anyone familiar with them would be able to recognize them Liz and Xiao Siyuan. What do you think? Xiao Siyuan asked as he looked at Zhou Wen and Lance. Liz replied with a dark expression. Lance is a talented genius. No peer of his is more outstanding than him. It's impossible for Zhou Wen to win. Xiao Siyuan said nonchalantly. Don't forget that Zhou Wen is someone who has come into contact with Jing Dao Xian. If he was really fancied by Jing Dao Xian, do you still think that Lance will certainly win? Yes, Liz said with certainty. Minister, you are not from the six families. Perhaps you don't understand Lance very well. His talent is unparalleled. Unless one has absolute power to crush him, no one can defeat him. Xiao Siyuan only smiled and did not refute Liz's words. Instead, he asked, Make another confirmation. Is everyone in place? Liz nodded slightly and contacted the personnel of the Special Investigation Bureau around the arena to confirm that they had arrived. Minister, everything is in place. Zhou Wen won't be able to escape today, Liz said to Xiao Siyuan. Xiao Siyuan didn't say a word. He only looked at Ah Sheng, who was sitting in the spectator stands. Ah Sheng was wearing a trench coat and a hat. He was seriously observing the situation in the arena and had seemingly not placed any attention elsewhere. With that person around, I'm afraid it won't be easy to complete this mission. If I had a few people like Ah Sheng aiding me instead of Liz, I wouldn't need to go through all this trouble. Xiao Siyu inside inwardly. There were too many personnel in the Special Investigation Bureau that entered thanks to nepotism. Everyone in the six families wanted to have their own people in it, but it was hard to determine how capable those people were. Although the six families did have many outstanding people, their background made many of them overly proud to the point of arrogance. Sometimes, it was difficult for them to truly become good inspectors. A good inspector isn't as simple as being strong. However, it can be considered as having pros and cons. Without these people in the bureau, the bureau wouldn't have obtained such a huge privilege. Xiao Si Yuan turned to look at Liz and said, Get someone to keep an eye on and shun at all times. If he shows any abnormality, report it immediately. Even the smallest details have to be reported. In fact, Xiao Si Yuan was also looking forward to seeing the people from the six families learn to give up their pride and dignity under his guidance. When that day happened, they might turn out to become the most terrifying. On that day, they might be the most terrifying inspectors. However, Liz didn't think much of it. He's just in Tianzhu's adjutant. What else can he do when we're watching him? Xiao Si Yuan could only patiently explain. Don't underestimate in Sheng. He has been in charge of the In Family's security for the past few years. Every year, countless people set their sights on the In Family, but there have never been any problems with the In Family. Such a person cannot be underestimated. Do you know another nickname he has in Luoyang's military? Devil's adjutant. His name is a lot more useful in the military than in Tianzhua. Although Liz felt that the Holy City was their territory and an adjutant that was being watched couldn't do anything, Xiao Si Yuan was her superior after all. Thus, Liz immediately contacted the people responsible for watching and Sheng and exhorted them. In the arena, Zhou Wen came in front of Lance. He didn't wield any weapons, as he had stowed away the bamboo blade in the chaos space. He had no intention of using it. Bamboo blade needed to see blood once, it was drawn, or it would deal a backlash to its owner. Although Zhou Wen didn't believe in such things, he didn't think that there was a need for him to draw his saber because he wasn't skilled with it. It was fine using the sharp bamboo blade to chop up some vegetables, but fighting with Lance would instead become a flaw. They said that you have two mythical pets. Is that true? Lance asked Zhou Wen. Does it matter? I don't plan on using pets, Zhou Wen said. Lance smiled brightly, revealing two rows of snow-white teeth. I'm starting to look forward to it now. In that case, hurry up. I'm still planning on returning home to game. Zhou Wen took a step forward and struck out with the first stance of the seven distribution palm compunction free at Lance. Compunction free was a masculine move that was extremely direct and open. This stance was actually somewhat incompatible with the ash and palms forces that Zhou Wen had trained in. However, Zhou Wen still managed to fuse the power of the ash and palm into this move. Lance didn't dodge either. He also struck out with his palm to meet Zhou Wen's. His palm turned purplish red, looking like a special primordial energy skill. Bam! Zhou Wen felt a pricking pain in his palm and couldn't help but retract his palm. However, Lance's chest quivered violently as he took two steps back. 
Zhou Wen glanced at his palm and saw that it was covered with bloody holes that seemed to be a result of countless needles. He couldn't help but say, What a vicious primordial energy skill. Likewise, your primordial energy skill is also very vicious, said Lance with a smile. Chapter 220 A Person That Fights As Though In A Game Zhou Wen used the seven stances of the seven distribution palm one by one. They were disjointed with completely different styles. Zhou Wen's continuous usage made it difficult for his opponent to adapt to such changes in style. However, Lance acted as though he didn't feel anything. He blocked and parried all of Zhou Wen's seven strikes. Furthermore, apart from the first palm, the ashen palm's forces that were secretly included in the seven distribution palm, none of them were able to injure Lance. When the mild concealed force touched Lance's palm, it immediately dissipated, unable to enter his body. After striking seven times, Zhou Wen immediately retracted his hands and said to Lance, I only know these seven strikes. Since all seven of them were countered by you, I have no choice but to admit defeat. It's fine if you want to admit defeat, but you have to satisfy me first. Lance didn't care what Zhou Wen said as he charged forward and struck out with a wind lightning fist. The wind lightning fist was a relatively common fist type primordial energy skill in the district where Lance lived in. The punch contained the power of wind and lightning. There was no need for any powerful technique as it used brute strength to subdue the enemy. Zhou Wen also knew that it was impossible for Lance to let him off so easily. When he saw Lance deliver the punch, he used the Dragon Gate Fairy skill and circled around him. After Zhou Wen learned the transcendent flying immortal, the Dragon Gate Fairy skill hadn't been replaced. Clearly, the former wasn't a primordial energy skill. There was still a difference between the two. Zhou Wen really only knew the seven palm strikes and had no time to learn other techniques. Upon seeing Zhou Wen dodge, Liz sneered. Zhou Wen is finished. In front of Lance, retreating is equivalent to losing. It wasn't just Liz. Everyone who had sparred with Lance, including Xia Bing and Du Chuan, knew how scary it was to let Lance take the initiative to attack. No one could remain undefeated under his relentless attacks. Du Chuan's movement techniques were considered top-notch among his peers, but he managed fewer than 20 of Lance's strikes. With just two punches, Zhou Wen could sense the pressure that Lance was exerting on him. His attacks were unique, something that Zhou Wen had never seen before. Although a fist combo was common as a combat technique, when it came to actual combat, the fist combo was actually of not much use. Unless one could hit the opponent with the first punch and leave the opponent open for more attacks, the subsequent chaining of the fist combos wouldn't be possible. However, if the first punch was enough to hit the target, then one should strive to take down one's opponent with that one punch. What was the point with the remaining punches? Therefore, the fist combo was just a supplementary measure. What was really effective was the first punch that hit the opponent. How could one connect the first punch? This was the answer everyone wanted to know. However, Lance's fist combo was different. He was like a character in a fighting game. His moves were connected without any gaps, giving Zhou Wen no chance to counterattack. It even made Zhou Wen have the illusion that if he revealed any flaws and allowed him to connect the first strike, then the subsequent attacks from Lance would be like a raging storm that would directly KO him without giving him any chance to react. The Dragon Gate Fairy skill had been pushed to the extreme by Zhou when as he constantly dodged. His arms and legs were also fending off the attacks from Lance. Every clash of their limbs made Zhou when feel a terrifying force surge at him, causing his bones to protest in pain. What looked like ordinary punches and kicks produced an effect that resembled an extremely explosive primordial energy skill. It left Zhou when very surprised. Soon, he realized that Lance's seemingly ordinary punches and kicks were everything but ordinary. It was really some kind of primordial energy art that greatly augmented him in his strength and in all other aspects. Every action of Lance's was supported by different primordial energy skills. This was the first time Zhou Wen had seen someone fight like that. Zhou Wen had only practiced primordial energy skills with his fists and palms, he had never trained his other parts. All he could do was use the Lotus Flower Buddha body to protect himself. However, the defensive strength of the Lotus Flower Buddha body wasn't enough for Zhou Wen to fight Lance head on. Every clash of their bodies made Zhou Wen feel like his bones were about to break apart. All he could do was dodge with his movement techniques. However, there was no way to completely dodge Lance's crazy attack. Just a dozen punches placed Zhou Wen at an absolute disadvantage. When Du Chuan saw this, he laughed. Do you want to use your movement technique to dodge the attacks of Lance and hope for him to expend all his primordial energy? You're too naive. This strategy might work on others, but against a person like Lance, it's useless. That was what I thought back then, but I ended up being pummeled. Xiao Bing said faintly. Back then, in order to act as a character in a combat game, Lance had specially learned a primordial energy art that allows rapid primordial energy recovery. Furthermore, 
In order to reduce the primordial energy expenditure, he had found dozens of the most basic primordial energy skill crystals. Those primordial energy skills themselves used up very little primordial energy to begin with. After he learned them, he raised dozens of mortal stage primordial energy skills from rank 1 all the way to legendary rank 10. Not only are they extremely powerful, but they also consume very little primordial energy. Lance completed something so unthinkable to the average person in just 4 months. If I had the talent of Lance, I could be as willful as him. I could also abandon my hero physique and not learn the family's primordial energy art. I could also play games all day like him, John said through gritted teeth. Although he was known as a saint at Covenant College, he knew very well that he was far inferior to the fellow who gained all day in school. No matter how hard he worked, he was not even qualified to be his opponent. Bam! When the fists collided, Zhou Wen felt a surge of power penetrate his body. It ran up his arm, making his organs feel like they had suffered a heavy blow. He couldn't help but take a few steps back. Lance could actually use concealed forces, but they were just not as strong as Zhou Wen's ashen palm. The look in Zhou Wen's eyes gradually turned serious. He had never encountered such an opponent before. Among his peers, no one had ever given him such pressure. Although Jing had defeated him with one strike back then, that was an absolute difference in speed and strength due to their difference in level. That kind of battle had nothing to do with Zhou Wen's abilities. Furthermore, Zhou Wen had never learned any combat techniques back then. This time, it was different. In terms of physical strength at the same level, Zhou Wen felt immense pressure. This was something he had never experienced before. Jiang Yin is right. Lance is much more terrifying than John. Zhou Wen's heart gradually burned with passion. Although he knew that beating Lance was not beneficial to him, he still wanted to win. He didn't want to lose. After all, Zhou Wen was a 17-year-old. He was unable to completely control his young and competitive heart, especially when facing a peer like Lance. However, Zhou Wen had spent too much time practicing his primordial energy art in the past. He had an excessively low starting point and had spent his golden years cultivating ascetic meditation which ended up being useless. Eventually, it was replaced by the Lost Immortal Sutra. After that, he continued gaming and grinding instance dungeons. His level and physique had been enhanced, and he had obtained quite a number of primordial energy skills. Fighting ordinary people with these was enough, but against someone like Lance, he was still greatly lacking. Chapter 221 Flying Immortal Skill Zhou Wen calmed down. The more he was placed in such situations, the calmer he became. He had pushed the Dragon Gate Fairy skill to its limits as he dodged like a ghost and attacked Lance from time to time. It's still not enough. If my movement technique could be a little faster, and if this transition move of mine in midair could be a little more sudden, and the angle a little smaller. Zhou Wen constantly gained insight into the battle, and his raising a weighted feather realm had become increasingly proficient as he used it. Fifteen punches, and he still isn't using a companion beast? De Chuan was somewhat astonished. Zhou Wen's dodging and ducking had allowed him to withstand 15 of Lance's punches. It should be soon. In less than 10 punches, Zhou Wen will definitely use his companion beast. Otherwise, defeat is the only outcome for him. Xia Bing could tell that Zhou Wen was about to reach his limit. Lance's attacks became more and more incisive, making Zhou Wen feel like he wasn't facing a single person, but a massive tsunami. He had the feeling that he was powerless to resist. Under such terrifying attacks, Zhou Wen could keep pushing himself and make his every move simpler and more efficient, just as Lance had done. It was impossible for him to be able to use all sorts of primordial energy skills, like Lance. Therefore, he could only bet everything on his movement technique to make it faster, stronger, and more efficient. Even if it was just a millimeter, he had to try his best to shave as much as he could, so that his body wouldn't produce any additional movements to squeeze out every bit of potential and possibility. The countless deaths he had experienced in game now played a tremendous role. This was because Zhou Wen experienced the same thing when the blood-colored avatar faced death. Therefore, even in such a disadvantageous situation, he could still maintain his clarity of mind and focus, allowing him to devote himself to battle without any distractions. It was a talent of his. Gradually, Zhou Wen's movement technique exceeded the limits of Dragon Gate Fairy skill and fused with his unique style. Suddenly, Zhou Wen felt that Lance's attack wasn't as difficult to resist as his motion trajectories seemed to be able to keep up with Lance's attack. Even if he didn't use his palm to block, just using his movement techniques allowed him to slowly dodge Lance's continuous attacks. How can that be? Du Guichuan widened his eyes as he looked at Zhou Wen. As a person who was proficient in all kinds of movement techniques, he had naturally studied a famous primordial energy skill like the Dragon Gate Fairy skill. He even knew it himself. Furthermore, his Dragon Gate Fairy skill was not inferior to Zhou Wen's in terms of ranks. However, Du Guichuan had better movement techniques so he rarely used Dragon Gate Fairy skill. 
back when Zhou Wen used Dragon Gate Fairy skill, and the way he kept switching between styles left Du Guchuan somewhat impressed. However, it was only praise attributing to Zhou Wen's ingenious way of using such a method to push the Dragon Gate Fairy skill to rank 10. However, it was just a compliment. He also had rank 10 movement skills that were even more outstanding than Dragon Gate Fairy skill. However, he hadn't lasted more than 20 blows under Lance's barrage of attacks. Zhou Wen's current movement technique clearly exceeded the realm of Dragon Gate Fairy skill, but it had the foundation of the Dragon Gate Fairy skill. Du Gu Chuan had also seen similar movement techniques, the Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill possessed by the epic dimensional creature fairy. Although the difference between the Dragon Gate Fairy skill and the Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill seemed to be just in its name, the two were worlds apart. The Dragon Gate Fairy skill came from a fairy monkey, but the Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill came from a real branch of the fairy. There was an insurmountable difference in quality between the two. Zhou Wen was at the legendary stage, so it was impossible for him to master the Dragon Gate's Flying Immortal skill now. Furthermore, Zhou Wen's movement technique previously indicated that he had indeed never learned it before. However, Zhou Wen's movement technique had hints of the Dragon Gate Flying Immortal skill. Did he raise the Dragon Gate Fairy skill to the epic stage without using primordial energy crystals, having only relied on his battle experience and insight? Du Du Chuan's expression was capricious. If one's comprehension of a primordial energy skill reached rank 10, it was something only a genius was capable of. But to directly raise the primordial energy skill to a whole new level, especially if one hadn't reached that level, would be too terrifying. Although Du Du Chuan didn't wish to believe that Zhou Wen could reach such a level, his movement techniques were becoming more and more pronounced with the bearing of the Dragon Gate's flying immortal skill. That poise and elegance was something the Dragon Gate fairy skill didn't possess. This person seems a little scary. Du Gu Chuan suddenly had such a feeling. Xia Bing also looked at Zhou Wen in astonishment. She wasn't an expert with movement techniques like Du Gu Chuan, but she could tell that Zhou Wen was dodging more easily. It was as though Lance's attacks were increasingly unable to force him to block with his body. Zhou Wen's body was like a flying immortal. When Lance threw a punch, his fist remained three inches away from Zhou Wen's body, preventing him from hitting him. It felt like Zhou Wen was using the wind generated by the first to gracefully float back in the air. Although Du Gu Chuan was right, he wasn't completely right. Zhou Wen's movement technique had indeed imitated the fairy's movement technique, but it wasn't an ordinary fairy's movement technique, but a mutated fairy's. He had infused the mutated fairy's movement technique he had seen into the Dragon Gate fairy skill, causing it to gradually transform, forming a brand new movement technique. Old Joe's movement skills are getting more and more impressive, but why does this fellow like movement techniques so much? Isn't it better to fight head on? Don't you think so? Li Xian clearly didn't appreciate Zhou Wen's style. He still preferred to attack directly. And Sheng, who was sitting beside Li Xian, remained silent as he continued watching the battle. Xiao Siyuan would occasionally look at the duo, and when he saw the scene, he couldn't help but frown slightly. After some thought, Xiao Siyuan asked Liz beside him. Asked the guy monitoring Ah Sheng. Is there anything abnormal there? Liz was in a bad mood when she saw that Zhou Wen had managed to dodge Lance's attack. She said, It should be fine. If there's anything, they should report it. So should I hand over the post of minister to you then? Xiao Siyuan's voice turned cold. When Liz met Xiao Siyuan's cold gaze, her heart turned cold, and she hurriedly said, I'm sorry, minister. I'll ask immediately. Liz didn't dare to be negligent. She immediately contacted the surveillance personnel, and only after confirming it repeatedly, did she tell Xiao Siyuan. And Sheng hasn't done anything out of the ordinary. He's been watching the competition the entire time. Something's wrong. But what? Xiao Siyuan's expression did not change because of what Liz had said. Just as Liz was about to say something, Xiao Siyuan suddenly stood up, quickly left his spot, and walked to the other side of the spectator stand. It was right across from Li Xian and Ah Sheng. Xiao Siyuan stared at Sheng like an eagle. He kept sizing up his face, and the more he looked at him, the worse his expression became. And Sheng was wearing a trench coat and a hat, but he didn't deliberately lower his hat or wear sunglasses. He looked like Ah Sheng, but Xiao Siyuan was certain that it wasn't him. Xiao Siyuan's heart turned cold immediately. Chapter 222 A Battle Without Limits Minister, what happened? Liz walked over as well. She followed Xiao Siyuan's gaze, and also recognized in Sheng. She took a look but didn't notice anything abnormal. I was too careless. That guy was only wearing a hat. He didn't lower his cap or wear glasses. He even revealed his entire face so as not to arouse my suspicion. I should have known that Nsheng wouldn't sit here and watch the competition without doing anything. All personnel is to immediately report their locations. Xiao Siyuan was no longer in the mood to teach Liz. He directly issued the order to everyone through the comms. Everyone reported their positions one by one, 
and Liz could hear them clearly from her earpiece. After all the personnel had finished reporting, she said, Minister, everyone is at their designated spots. Everything is normal, and there's nothing out of the ordinary. What's wrong with you? Xiao Si Yuan's expression was as cold as ice. Ignoring Liz, Xiao Si Yuan directly said on the channel, And Shang, I know you're listening. Answer me. In the monitoring room of the Little Lin's pet combat arena, and Shang was sitting on a chair. He was looking at Xiao Si Yuan through the surveillance footage. The two inspectors beside him were like puppets sitting there mechanically. Hearing the voice from the walkie-talkie, and Shang said calmly, Go ahead. Liz thought that Xiao Si Yuan had gone crazy, but when she heard the voice coming over the comms, her expression immediately turned ugly, and she wore a look of incredulity. Xiao Si Yuan took a deep breath and said, Don't hurt my people. During this period of time in the Holy Land, the Bureau will not do anything. Killing an inspector in Holy City was an extremely serious offense. Most people wouldn't dare do so, but Xiao Si Yuan could not forget Ntianzu's words. He also couldn't forget how Ensheng had crippled Liz without any thought. The title of Devil's Adjutant was not just a simple name. As long as Ntianzu gave the order, and Shun would do anything. He was a lunatic. Calm down. Sit down and drink some water. This match is very exciting. Don't you want to finish watching it? And Shung said, as he watched the surveillance camera footage. And Shung, if you dare to harm even a strand of their hair, I will make sure none of you can leave the Holy Land. Liz said angrily. Shut up. Xiao Si Yuan suppressed his voice and stopped Liz. Then, he sat back down on the spectator stands and surveyed the entire Little Lin's pet combat arena. If he found in Shun's location before the competition ended, there was still a chance of a comeback. Suddenly, when he saw a camera in the arena, Xiao Si Yuan's eyes lit up. He got up and prepared to leave his seat, but in Shun's voice came through the earpiece again. Minister Xiao, you better sit there and not move. From now on, one of your inspectors will die with every step you take. I wonder if the lives of these inspectors are enough for you to reach the monitoring room? If there's enough, you can take your time walking. I'll be sitting here waiting for you to send me to jail. This is Holy City, so it's not like I can run, right? Xiao Si Yuan gritted his teeth and returned to his seat. He said dejectedly, You won. Don't hurt them. Enjoy this match. It looks like it will be really exciting. And Sheng said calmly. In the arena, Lance's eyes shone as if he had seen a classic game he had long wanted. He couldn't hide his smile. How interesting. It's indeed interesting to have an opponent in a fighting game, said Lance as he stopped his attacks. Sorry, I've already said that I don't like to play fighting games. I don't understand what that feeling is, Joe Wen said. However, Lance ignored Joe Wen's words as he continued. Do you know why I like to play games? It's because, in reality, I can't find a match, so I can only find joy in games. The rules and skills in the game restrict my performance, which makes me feel a sense of difficulty. Unfortunately, a game is still a game after all. There are still rules that can be found. No matter how the mechanism is adjusted, once one knows the rules, after playing for some time, one can easily defeat them. This is also why I do not wish to know anything about Ntianzwa before meeting him. I'm afraid that I will discover a pattern. That will make defeating him boring. Then you can try leveling up games. There will always be a stronger boss waiting for you, Joe said. So what if it's an even stronger boss? It's just tweak strength and skills to make it stronger. In essence, it's no different from those ordinary monsters. Powerful bosses are identical in every way, but an interesting soul has a different charm to it. Lance stared at Joe when with a fervent gaze. It's been a long time since I had such a great battle. You are the one who has made me reacquire the joy of combat. I originally imagined I would find it again on the day I meet in Tianzhua. To be honest, I prefer to hunt those soulless bosses, Joe Wen said as he shrugged. No, you aren't that kind of person. You are just like me deep down. You thirst for battle, said Lance as he relaxed his body. As he walked towards Joe Wen, he said, Let me see what your limit is. With that said, Lance suddenly moved. However, this time, he didn't use his continuous combo attacks like a game. At the instant he moved, his speed left behind images that instantly appeared in front of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen tapped his toes on the ground as he rapidly retreated. However, in the next second, the lance in front of him turned blurry. The real lance appeared above Zhou Wen's head like a god that had descended to the mortal world. Along with it came his fist that crashed down with a terrifying battle aura. Even the Dragon Gate Fairy skill, after its evolution, couldn't dodge the punch. Zhou Wen gathered strength for Golden Palm and used the seven distribution palm sky supporting pillar to meet Lance's fist. Boom! The battle aura blasted out as terrifying forces caused Zhou Wen's legs to sink into the specially made rubber ground. With the clash of powers, 
Lance's figure strangely used the force in the air as leverage. He turned blurry once again, leaving behind an afterimage. His true body had already plummeted to the ground like a meteor, shattering the ground through the quaking. At the same time, he sent another punch straight at Zhou Wen. With Zhou Wen's leg sinking into the ground, it was already impossible for him to dodge. He switched the primordial energy art to a Dao body, and used astral suction palm at the same time. He sucked and guided Lance's fist, causing it to tilt to the side as his body brushed past Zhou Wen. However, Lance's reaction was too fast. In the split second, he passed him by, he leveraged the momentum from the charge to twist his body and kicked Zhou Wen like a sweeping blade. His actions happened in one swift motion. It was unworldly. His primordial energy skill seems to have broken through the rules of a legendary stage's rank. Xia Bing looked at Lance as she felt mixed feelings. Du Duchuan also smiled bitterly to himself. Lance had gone even further than they had imagined. He had never been serious in their previous battles. Chapter 223 Transcendent Flying Immortal Lance had trained his combat skills to the extreme. If Zhou Wen were to focus on training his combat skills for a few years, he might still have a chance to match Lance. But now, Zhou Wen was unable to fight Lance with pure combat skills. However, Zhou Wen didn't waste his time. His combat skills were indeed inferior to Lance's, but he also had his strengths and unique traits. Seeing that there was no way to dodge, Zhou Wen suddenly released a stream of power that shot up from his legs that had sunk to the ground. Almost instantly, he shot up into the sky, dodging Lance's foot. Lance's actions weren't slow either. A terrifying power erupted beneath his feet as he charged towards Zhou Wen, bringing with him numerous afterimages. His entire body was burning with a raging battle aura like a volcano eruption. This Lance is so powerful! Even Li Xian had to admit it. Li Xian would only qualify to be beaten if he went up alone. Xia Bing, Du Duquan, and the others all had smiles on their faces as they waited for the moment Lance won. Zhou Wen couldn't dodge Lance's attack on the ground, much less dodge in the air. Indeed, there's no one at the same level who can fight Lance. If Zhou Wen were to use a companion beast, he might be able to hold out for a little while longer. To think he wants to engage in melee combat with Lance shows how naive he is. However, Zhou Wen can hold his head high after fighting so well with him, thought Du Duquan. Liz was also feeling delighted. Their operation had completely failed, and they were being threatened. She felt aggrieved, but now that Lance could defeat Zhou Wen, it was the only thing that would cheer her up today. Now, all she wished for was for Lance to cripple Zhou Wen's primordial energy C, giving him the taste of being crippled. But in the next second, everyone's jaws dropped in disbelief. In the air, Zhou Wen's figure seemed to be completely free from the limitations of gravity, as though he had transformed into lightning. He streaked across the sky in a zigzag manner and quickly charged forward. His target was Lance, who had rushed into the air. The fighting spirit burned in his eyes as his battle aura flared wantonly. His bodily functions were also pushed to the limit as he twisted his body. He threw a barrage of quick punches to block Zhou Wen's attacks that appeared like lightning bolts. Due to his actions being too fast, he left behind after images, making it seem like he had multiple limbs that could block the lightning fast phantoms. However, no matter how fast Lance's actions were, he was still inferior to Zhou Wen's lightning like attacks that crisscrossed like a net. Even with his multi limb form, he failed to withstand the unparalleled barrage of attacks. In the end, he was unable to withstand it. After being struck in the chest by a beam of light, his defensive stance instantly crumbled as the crisscross figure struck Lance's body like bolts of lightning that passed through his body. The final figure fused together to reveal Zhou Wen's body as he struck Lance's chest and immediately sent him flying. Bam! Lance fell to the ground and cracked the ground while blood seeped from the corner of his mouth. The spectator stands fell completely silent. The members of the six families, including Du Chuan and Xia Bing, were all in disbelief. They couldn't believe that Lance would be beaten by someone and even bleed. They had never imagined such a scene. Furthermore, the person who had defeated Lance was a youth about the same age. The scene of the crisscrossing of lightning bolts left them extremely shocked. Liz was so infuriated that she nearly vomited blood. She yearned to mobilize the troops to immediately tear Zhou Wen into pieces. Lance stood up from the ground, ignored the blood trickling down the corner of his mouth, and stared at Zhou Wen. What was that move called? Transcendent Flying Immortal. Zhou Wen replied. Transcendent Flying Immortal? I'll remember that. I'm very happy that I finally found a path for me to continue advancing. I hope that you can give me more surprises the next time we fight. With that, Lance collapsed to the ground. His injuries were too severe, and he was suffering from internal injuries. To be able to stand up and persist to the end of the conversation with Zhou Wen showed how unparalleled his willpower was. 
The medical staff immediately rushed into the arena to save him. Fortunately, Lance had only fainted. Although he was heavily injured, his life wasn't in danger. With his physical condition, he would make a quick recovery. Zhou Wen left the battlefield and left Little Lin's pet combat arena with Li Xian. Xia Bing and company watched Zhou Wen leave, but no one stopped them. Their expressions were extremely complicated. They hadn't witnessed in Tianzhu's incident with their own eyes, back then, but now, they had personally experienced everything. The transcendent flying immortal's name was like that person. It would probably stay on their minds for a very long period of time. After leaving the arena, Zhou Wen and company boarded a car and drove out of the holy city. The driver was none other than Ensheng. As for the Ensheng sitting beside Zhou Wen, he took off his hat and wiped the disguise from his face. It was a lie. Young Master Wen, I'm afraid that your name will be marked by the six families in the future. You must be more careful of where you go, Ensheng said. Zhou Wen nodded and didn't say a word. He thought about his battle with Lance. If he didn't have transcended Flying Immortal, he would definitely have lost. If Lance had learned a primordial energy skill that matched transcended Flying Immortal, he would have equally lost. From the looks of it, although level and primordial energy skills are important, combat techniques can't be neglected. I'll have to continue learning from teacher when I return. Zhou Wen secretly made up his mind. He had to make up for his lacking combat techniques when he returned. And Sheng originally thought that they would encounter a lot of trouble on their way out of Holy City, but he was puzzled that nothing happened. As a result, many of his preparations were useless. In the medical ward, Lance was sitting by the bed. Beside him was a long-haired girl peeling an apple. Has Zhou Wen and the rest left Holy City? Asked Lance. Don't worry, everything has been done. The ones from the other families have been stopped. The girl passed the peeled apple to Lance. That's good. I'll definitely beat him next time. Lance took the apple and took a bite. If you wanted to win, why didn't you use your life providence? The girl seemed to think that as long as Lance used his life providence, he would definitely have one. That would be boring, said Lance in excitement. Although I lost this battle, it made me understand something. Previously, I only pursued combat techniques, but I neglected the ultimate attacks found in games. In the past, I could defeat my opponents with ordinary offensive techniques, but a fellow like Zhou Wen couldn't be defeated so easily by me. Likewise for Antianzwa, so if I could learn several primordial energy skills, like Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal, mixing it with my combat techniques, that would be even more interesting. Looking at Lance's focused and excited expression, the girl by his side listened quietly with a gentle smile. Chapter 224 Boundary Stone Zhou Wen was somewhat vexed. His strength and speed had been enhanced by the god power crystals, making him break through to 21 points. However, his primordial energy and constitution were still unable to break through. Now, he had no god power crystals to obtain unless he waited another 10 years for the holy land to open again to head to the temples once more. Unfortunately, Zhou Wen couldn't wait another 10 years. Even if he could, the Yin family probably wouldn't give him the spot. How do I get my constitution and primordial energy to break through to 21 points? Zhou Wen had no idea what to do. Since there are god power crystals in the holy land, they might exist in other dimensional zones as well. I can only look around in the game dungeons. Zhou Wen couldn't help but recall the golden flying ant and the white cocoon. Now that his dragon gate fairy skill had improved and he had mastered transcendent flying immortal, he might have a chance of obtaining that white cocoon. I was planning on taking you to the dimensional zones that we didn't have a chance to visit when we returned, but I think we can forget about it now. We'll go again when we have the chance, said Ensheng as he drove. No one objected. Zhou Wen had offended the six families terribly, so it wasn't appropriate for them to continue wandering outside. It was best they returned to Luoyang as soon as possible, as he was afraid that something would go wrong, and Sheng didn't choose to take the plane back. He drove all the way until they arrived at a mountain road where they saw a girl waving at them in the middle of the road. The car stopped and they saw that the girl's ankle was severely injured as if she had been bitten by something. The wound was very deep, and her bones were injured. I was attacked by a dimensional creature nearby. All my companion beasts died in battle, and I couldn't walk due to my injuries. Can you take me to a nearby city? The girl requested. You were injured in this area? There shouldn't be any dimensional zones nearby, right? Li Xian asked the girl. I thought that too, but a dimensional creature appeared here. I nearly died because of it. The girl said. Where did you encounter dimensional creatures? What kind of dimensional creatures were they? And Sheng stared at the girl and asked. It was on a mountain road about a kilometer ahead. It's a snow white ape shaped dimensional creature. The girl recounted what had happened. After Ensheng heard this, he agreed to let the girl hitch a ride. Li Xian found an opportunity while Ensheng was checking the car and whispered to him. Brother Sheng, is there a problem with this woman? We just offended the six families 
and ended up meeting an injured woman in the wilderness. Isn't this too much of a coincidence? If she has a problem, then all the more reason I should take her with me. I'd rather keep the enemy in my hands, and Shun said. Li Xian felt that it made sense and stopped talking. As the car continued its journey, Zhou Wen saw that there were many signs of a battle. There was quite a lot of rubble and terrifying claw marks on the road. This woman didn't seem to be completely lying. At the very least, there had been a fight here. As for whether her opponent was a dimensional creature or a human, it was hard to tell. Li Xian was very good at talking with women, so he quickly started chatting with her. The woman said her last name was Zhang, Zhang Yuji, from the eastern capital. She was a dimensional creature hunter who was a freelancer. Typically, even if one entered a dimensional zone to adventure or kill dimensional creatures, they would join large organizations or the League's organizations. Only a small number of people chose to become a freelancing hunter. They would enter dimensional zones to hunt dimensional creatures alone or with a few friends. This woman was only in her early 20s. According to the current education system, most people went to university at the age of 16. After four years of college, they would only be in their early 20s. It was surprising that a newly graduated woman would choose to become a freelance hunter. There was also something that left Zhou Wen and company very concerned. The eastern capital was very close to Luoyang, and it was now under Luoyang's jurisdiction. This woman was from the eastern capital, so she happened to be on the same path as them. While Li Xian and Zhang Yuji were chatting, he deliberately asked a lot of questions about the eastern capital. Zhang Yuji answered them proficiently like she was a native. She even knew some of the tinier shops in the old alleys. When they arrived at the place Zhang Yuji mentioned that she had encountered the dimensional creature, they didn't see White Ape. Instead, there were many fallen stones on the road ahead that blocked the way. Li Xian went down to clean up the road and swept the rubble to the bottom of the mountain. However, after moving the rubble away, he realized that there was a corpse beneath it. The corpse was a white ape, similar to Zhang Yuji's description. It was undoubtedly the same one she had seen before. You killed it? And Shun looked at the white ape's corpse and asked Zhang Yuji. No! It nearly killed me! It killed all my companion beasts, so how could I have the ability to kill it? Zhang Yuji shook her head with certainty. That's strange. If you didn't kill it, why would it die here? Li Xian asked. I don't know about that. Maybe there's someone else here. Zhang Yuji scanned her surroundings, but this was one of the Kirby Mountain Roads. There was no one here. One side of the mountain road was a cliff, while the other side was a straight mountain wall. It was impossible to hide anyone. Zhou Wen was also looking at the corpse and saw a bloody hole in the white ape's chest. It was as though someone had dug its heart out and it had died a tragic death. Get in the car. Let's continue moving. And Shung moved the white ape's corpse to the side and got into the car. Just as Zhou Wen was about to get into the car, he glanced to the side in passing and realized that there was a boundary stone erected by the roadside. Boundary stones weren't rare. In the past, they were used to divide the boundaries between regions, cities, and countries. Some even demarcated the borders between villages. Boundary stones were used to separate territories. After the dimensional storms, no one really used the boundary stones anymore. This was because most regions had dimensional zones, making it difficult to divide them. There were still some boundary stones remaining that were often seen. However, they were of no use now. It wasn't a rare sight to see one here, but what was rare was the tiny palm symbol on it. Zhou Wen was very familiar with the palm symbol. Although it looked inconspicuous in the corner of the boundary stone, he saw it at a glance. In the strange palm symbol was a skull. It looked even eerier. And the four words carved on the boundary stone didn't look like a location's name. The four words were actually In Yang Boundary Stone Chapter 225 Red Clothes Zhou Wen took out his cell phone and snapped a picture of the boundary stone. Indeed, it was downloaded into his interface. Zhou Wen, what are you doing? Get in the car! Li Xian shouted at Zhou Wen from inside the car. Look at this boundary stone! There seems to be a problem, Zhou Wen said as he pointed at it. Li Xian and company alighted from the car and walked to the boundary stone. Li Xian said with a glance, Is this a prank? And Shum walked to the stone monolith and touched it. He dug the soil under the stone monolith with his hands before he frowned and said, This stone monolith wasn't buried recently. It has existed here for a long time. It doesn't seem like a prank. It's not a prank. Why would there be such a thing as an Yin Yang boundary stone? Could it be that after crossing the Yin Yang boundary, one will reach the netherworld? Li Xian joked. I don't know if we will enter the netherworld, but there's nothing wrong with being careful. All of you, be on your guard. And Shum carefully looked around but didn't find anything unusual. There was only one path on the mountain. Furthermore, there were no dimensional zones nearby. 
and Shang couldn't directly turn back just because of the appearance of such a boundary stone. Zhou Wen said, Ah Sheng, let's switch paths. I think there's something off about the area up ahead. Could it be a newly appeared dimensional zone? Not a bad idea. And Sheng nodded slightly. He also felt that something was amiss. However, if he had to take a detour, they would have to travel another additional 10 hours or more. He turned the car around and drove back the way they came. He drove to a fork at the foot of the mountain and made his way to another mountain road. He continued driving along another path that was a huge detour. Furthermore, it wasn't easy to drive on, limiting the car's speed. The path was riddled with potholes, and it was extremely difficult to drive across it. The car was shaking violently as Zhou Wen looked at his phone. The download had been completed, and the Yin Yang World icon had appeared on the phone's home screen. However, Zhou Wen usually only played the Ant Nest dungeon in front of others. Now that there were so many people, it was not appropriate for him to open the Yin Yang World's instance dungeon. After driving for half a day, the tremors were so intense that Zhou Wen felt like his bones were about to fall apart. Li Xian and Ah Lai felt a little uncomfortable as well, and the three nearly fainted. Screech! A sudden slamming of the brakes woke the three of them up. Their heads almost squeezed against the back of the front row. Brother Sheng, what happened? Li Xian asked. There's another boundary stone in front of us, said in Sheng before he opened the door and got out. Zhou Wen and company followed. Indeed, there was a boundary stone by the side of the mountain. On it were the same words, Yin Yang World. However, Zhou Wen didn't see the tiny palm symbol. Must it be that creepy? Li Xian looked around. It was almost getting dark, so there was a limit to what he could see. Ah Sheng, is there another way? Zhou Wen asked. That's it. Now, most of the dimensional zones have cut off the routes available. If we want to take another detour, we will have to leave this mountainous area, but it would take too long. And Sheng thought for a moment before saying, How about this? It's getting dark, and there aren't any street lamps. It won't be convenient for us to go back. Let's find a place to camp. After daybreak, we can return to the airport and take a plane back. All right, let's do that then. Zhou Wen felt that it was best not to risk crossing the Yin Yang World Stone Monolith. And Sheng took out a simple tent and other tools from his car and found an empty space by the side of the road. He set up a tent and placed a few warning pins to prevent any other vehicles from crashing into their tents while driving past. Although there was a small possibility of cars passing through, and Sheng still managed to consider everything. Li Xian and Zhang Yuji were chatting, while Ali started a fire to prepare some food. Zhou Wen sat in the car, and was about to open the Yin Yang World Instance Dungeon, to see what was inside, when he suddenly heard Li Xian's surprised voice. What is that? Zhou Wen hurriedly got out of the car, and looked over. He saw Li Xian pointing in the direction of the Yin Yang Boundary Stone, with a look of shock. He looked over and saw a woman in red standing on the other side of the Yin Yang Boundary Stone. To be precise, it was likely a woman wearing a red wedding dress. Zhou Wen had seen such clothes when he was watching television when he was young. It was said to be a rather ancient tradition. Women nowadays wore white wedding gowns when they got married. In the East District's ancient times, white was something only when there was a death in the family. People wore red for marriage. The daughters of rich families all wore embroidered red silk wedding gowns, with a red veil covering their heads. The groom would only be able to remove the bride's red veil on their wedding night. The woman standing on the other side of the Yin Yang boundary stone was like a bride dressed in red from a television drama. She had a red veil over her head and was standing behind the stone monolith, seemingly looking at them. Who's trying to act mysterious there? Perhaps the trembling Zhang Yuji had triggered Li Xian's male hormones. At that moment, Li Xian was shockingly bold as he shouted at the woman in red behind the Yin Yang boundary stone. The woman in red didn't respond and stood there motionless. Although the red cloth covered her head, it didn't deter Zhou Wen and company from feeling as though she was staring at them. Without any response from the woman in red, Li Xian became somewhat angry. He summoned a legendary black-eyed leopard and ordered it to pounce at the woman. And Sheng, Zhou Wen, and company stared at the black-eyed leopard. It quickly passed the stone monolith and leaped into the air, bearing its sharp claws as it pounced at the red-dressed woman. The next scene caused the five of them to widen their eyes as their scalps tingled. The black-eyed leopard actually passed through the woman's body, as though her body was just an illusion. Don't tell me we've really run into ghosts. When Li Xian saw this scene, he felt a little nervous. He wasn't afraid of guns or bullets, but a ghost would still make him feel uneasy even if he was strong. Li Xian was just about to order the black-eyed leopard to continue attacking when he saw the woman's body move. Only then did everyone notice that the woman's feet were not touching the ground. She had always been levitating in midair, so they could clearly see the red floral embroidered shoes on her feet. Due to the boundary stone's obstruction, everyone had imagined that she was standing there. 
Upon seeing this scene, they had the urge to flee. Even Joe Wynn was no exception. When he was young, he had heard many ghost stories from his grandfather. One of them was the story of the ghost bride. He thought to himself, did I really encounter a ghost bride? When his grandfather told the story of the ghost bride when he was young, it scared Joe when so much that he didn't dare sleep the entire night. The moment he fell asleep, a red-dressed female ghost came looking for him, determined to kill him. It was a childhood nightmare. Chapter 226 Breaking Out of the Seal However, Joe had only felt a little creeped out. He didn't really turn around to run. He knew that even if she was a ghost bride, she was only a dimensional creature. He now possessed the strength of a legendary stage, so there was no need for him to be afraid of any ghost brides. Li Xian seemed to have shared the same thoughts as he grew bolder. He ordered his black-eyed leopard to once again pounce at the ghost bride. The ghost bride also rushed towards the black-eyed leopard. Their bodies met in midair, and the black-eyed leopard once again passed through the ghost bride's body, unable to hurt her at all. However, when the black-eyed leopard landed, it let out a tragic whimper as it staggered to the ground. There was a bloody hole in its chest, as though someone had dug its heart out. Companion beasts were manifestations of life crystals, so they naturally didn't have a real heart. However, such an injury caused the black-eyed leopard's body to collapse. A legendary pet was gone just like that. From the way the black-eyed leopard died, it looked almost identical to the white ape from before. After the ghost bride killed the black-eyed leopard, she stood behind the boundary stone and looked at Joe when in company without any intention of rushing over. She doesn't dare to cross the boundary stone! Upon realizing this, Li Xian immediately became emboldened. He summoned another legendary pet, and had it charge at the ghost bride. Previously, he and Zhou Wen had robbed quite a number of legendary companion eggs in the Holy Land. He had obtained quite a number from the splitting of the spoils, so he had hatched a few out of boredom on the way. Now, it was a good opportunity to use them. A snake-shaped legendary pet rushed in front of the ghost bride and spat out a mouthful of venom. However, the venom didn't manage to touch the ghost bride's body. After passing through it, it landed on the ground. The snake lunged at her and attempted to coil itself around her. However, it was useless. The ghost bride was a ghost that couldn't be touched. In turn, the snake pet's body had an additional five claw holes that caused it to die. Li Xian was enraged. He was just about to summon another companion beast to fight the ghost bride, but was stopped by Enxiong. Don't waste your companion beasts. That should be a dimensional creature that's a ghost type. Ordinary physical attacks are ineffective against ghost type dimensional creatures said in Sheng as he summoned a companion beast. Zhou Wen and company didn't even see what the companion beast looked like as it transformed into a wooden fish one that a monk often used, that fell into in Sheng's hands. And Sheng struck the wooden fish a few times. Zhou Wen and company didn't find anything special about the sound it produced, but the ghost bride's body trembled as though her body had been punched. And Sheng kept striking the wooden fish, but the ghost bride's body stopped trembling. The sound of the wooden fish seemed to have lost its effect on her. And Sheng frowned slightly. This Buddhist wooden fish is considered an excellent great item among the legendary stage. It is effective against ghost-type dimensional creatures, yet it can't injure this ghost bride. From the looks of it, her level isn't low. Then, do you have any other companion beasts that are effective against her? Asked Li Xin. I don't have any. Not all Buddhist companion beasts can restrain ghosts. I only obtained this Buddhist wooden fish by chance. I've never used it before. With a pause, Enshun added. From the looks of it, this place has indeed formed a new dimensional zone. Furthermore, it's a dimensional zone that is filled with ghost-type dimensional creatures. Thankfully, young Master Wen was meticulous and discovered the Yin Yang Boundary Stone. If we had rushed in, we could have died inside without any companion beasts that are effective against ghost-type dimensional creatures. Zhou Wen secretly felt ashamed. If he hadn't seen the palm symbol, he wouldn't have noticed that there was something amiss with the Boundary Stone. I don't believe it. I don't believe that there's no companion beast that can deal with her. Li Xian refused to believe it as he summoned a few more companion beasts. However, all of them were killed by the ghost bride without exception. Furthermore, they couldn't even touch the ghost bride's body. Li Xian was so infuriated that he nearly vomited blood. However, Li Xian only relied on his numerous companion beasts. He wouldn't dare fight the ghost bride himself. Humans usually relied on their companion beasts to open up a path in new dimensional zones. Even so, deaths were frequent. For example, if Zhou Wen and company had entered the Yin Yang world by mistake, it would have been very easy for them to be killed by ghosts even if they had many companion beasts. The few companion beasts that Li Xian had hatched had been killed by the ghost bride. He still had a few other companion beasts, but they were all excellent grade ones he had specially selected. He couldn't bear to use the companion beasts like the three-eyed golden warrior and thunder god general. If they were to be killed by the ghost bride, 
his heart would ache terribly. Although Li Xian couldn't accept this outcome, he gave up on attacking her. But at this moment, the ghost bride drifted out from behind the Yin Yang boundary stone. No good, she's a creature that has broken out. Get in the car and leave immediately. And Sheng's expression changed. He rushed in front of everyone and shouted at the same time. They didn't dare to delay any further. They ignored the tent and went straight into the car. However, they realized that the car couldn't be started. The color of the bonfire lit turned from yellow to blood red. It made them reel with anxiety. The ghost bride ignored and Sheng, who was standing in front of her, and floated over to Zhou when in company. A cold glint flashed in Sheng's eyes, as he struck the ghost bride's body with his palm that had produced lightning. Instantly, the ghost bride retreated dozens of feet and floated far away. Brother Sheng, why didn't you say earlier that lightning is effective against ghosts? Let me help you. Li Xian was delighted when he saw this. He hurriedly summoned his thunder god general and transformed him into the thunder god's sword. As he held it in his hand, he slashed at the ghost bride. When the thunder god sword slashed at the ghost bride with lightning bolts, the ghost bride stretched out a pale hand and grabbed the thunder god's sword. Then, with a strong swing, she threw Li Xian and the sword out together. Bam! Li Xian's body slammed into the mountain wall, and immediately, his face was swollen. Even his bridge of his nose was fractured. The power of the lightning element deals a certain level of damage to ghosts, but the effects are still greatly reduced. When I used the power of an epic stage lightning bolt to hit her, it only achieved about 10-20% of its effect. What's the use of that bit of lightning power of yours? As in Sheng spoke, he struck out with another palm of lightning, sending the ghost bride flying again. However, it was only enough to send her flying. He was still unable to seriously injure the ghost bride. The ghost bride was forced back by Sheng time and time again, but she pounced forward again and again. The situation was tense. We don't have the strength or companion beasts that are effective against ghosts. It's very difficult to kill her. I'll hold her back. You guys leave first. We'll rendezvous at Dadong Town, said Nsheng. Zhou Wen's heart stirred when he heard Nsheng's words. He summoned Truth Listener. This fellow was a mythical pet from Small Buddha Temple. Furthermore, the legendary Truth Listener was a soul-suppressing beast of hell. Perhaps it was possible that it had the ability to counter ghosts. Just as Truth Listener was summoned, its eyes flashed with golden light as it stared intently at the ghost bride. In the next second, Truth Listener transformed into a golden beam of light that tore towards the ghost bride. Chapter 227 Jinx's Husband Truth Listener transformed into a golden beam of light and instantly appeared in front of the ghost bride. The ghost bride's body trembled as a result. Facing the epic stage in Sheng, the ghost bride hadn't shown any fear, but now, she turned around and attempted to escape. However, Truth Listener clearly wasn't letting her go. It pressed its claw on her back, and it seemed to resemble a golden seal that left a mysterious golden branding on the ghost bride's back. No matter how far she ran, her body shimmered with golden light. Soon, her soul dissipated amidst the golden light, dropping a red crystal. Truth Listener's tiny claw grabbed the red crystal and leaped back with a whoosh, landing in Zhou Wen's palm. It then placed the red crystal in his hand. Li Xian widened his eyes as he looked at Truth Listener, who resembled a golden silk monkey in Zhou Wen's palm. He asked in surprise, Old Joe, what kind of pet is that? Why is it so awesome? And Shum also sized up Truth Listener in surprise, clearly very curious. A legendary companion beast. However, it has Buddhist attributes, so it should be effective against ghosts. Probably the reason why it killed the ghost bride so easily. Joe would unsummon Truth Listener and carefully looked at the red crystal in his hand before realizing that it was a companion egg. Ghost-type companion beasts are very rare at the moment. Typically, a ghost-type companion beast can avoid physical attacks and most of its attribute attacks. However, typically speaking, a ghost-type companion beast's attack strength is relatively weaker. They are more adept at curses. This ghost bride's offensive strength was very powerful, so it's relatively rare among ghost-type pets. Although she's only at the legendary stage, she will be very useful when exploring new dimensional zones due to her characteristics. Even if she were to encounter an epic creature, she probably wouldn't be killed unless the opponent is of a counter attribute. And Sheng said, as he looked at the companion egg in Zhou Wen's hand. Zhou Wen threw the ghost bride companion egg at Sheng, who was slightly taken aback when he caught it. Young Master One, what are you doing? I'm still a student, so I naturally don't have the chance to explore new dimensional zones. It's useless keeping her around. Take this with you to the military. Perhaps it can reduce the number of military sacrifices. And Sheng had spent a lot of effort taking care of them along the way. It could even be said that he had risked his life. All Zhou Wen wanted was to do something in return. Although Ghost Bride Companion Beasts were rare, Zhou Wen had already downloaded the Yin Yang World's Instance Dungeon 
and had Truth Listener, who was effective against the Ghost Bride. It wouldn't be difficult for him to obtain Ghost Bride companion beasts in the future. A companion egg can't solve the military's problem. It will be of great use if there's a large number of Ghost Brides. As in Shung spoke, he returned the Ghost Bride companion egg to Zhou Wen. Young Master One, if you really wish to help the military, you can join after graduation. You will definitely be of help with your capabilities. We'll see when the time comes. Zhou Wen said with a shake of his head. Even if he wanted to join the military, he had no plans of joining in Tianzhu's unit. As though he had seen through Zhou Wen's thoughts, and Shung shook his head slightly and said nothing more. They packed their things and followed the path back. Even with an epic expert like Shun around, they couldn't randomly enter an unknown dimensional zone and risk their lives. Furthermore, this dimensional zone had the most bizarre ghost-like creatures. Old Joe, quickly hatch that ghost bride and take a look. I want to see what she looks like. After you hatch her, get her to remove the red veil for us to take a look. Li Xian said to Joe when when they got into the car. He was curious. Joe would also wish to see the ghost bride's stats, but it wasn't convenient for him to use his cell phone in front of Li Xian and company. He listened to Li Xian and took out the ghost bride companion egg. Zhou Wen seldom hatched companion eggs himself, as he typically hatched them in game. With the companion egg in hand, he injected his primordial energy into it. Immediately, he felt his primordial energy flow into the companion egg like it overflowed a dam. Soon, all the drops that flowed out were gone. There was even a feeling that he had provided an insufficient amount. This left Zhou Wen slightly taken aback. Although his primordial energy had yet to reach 21 points, he still had 20 points. Typical legendary companion eggs that could be hatched with 18 or 19 primordial energy were already considered excellent grade. Yet, the ghost bride found 20 primordial energy points insufficient. This made it rather impressive. She sure is a powerful creature that dared to walk out of the dimensional zone. She really seems different. Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and forcefully survived the pressure the companion egg exerted on him. Thankfully, he had a Dao body and his primordial energy recovered quickly. It wasn't difficult for him to last through the ordeal. The companion egg was finally hatched as it transformed into a red glow that imprinted onto Zhou Wen's forehead. It transformed into a red dotted tattoo that resembled a red birthmark on his forehead. Quickly summon her and take a look, Li Xian said eagerly. It's so crowded in the car. How do I summon her? Zhou Wen asked. Your intelligence sure is lacking. She has a ghost body. Nothing in the car can touch her, Li Xian said. Zhou Wen shook his head. Let's wait until we arrive at a rest area. He found an opportunity when no one was watching to glance at the Ghost Bride's stats and never expected her name to really be Ghost Bride. Ghost Bride, Legendary, Life Providence, Wife of the Ghost King, Strength, 19, Speed, 20, Constitution, 19, Primordial Energy, 21, Talent Skills, Ghost, Spirit Suction, In Wind Claw, Jinx's Husband, Companion Form, Ghost Eyes. Her Primordial Energy is actually at 21 points. Isn't this a stat point that only mythical creatures have? How can ordinary legendary creatures reach such a level? Zhou Wen was alarmed. Seeing her talent skills, his expression turned even odder. How is jinxing a husband considered a skill? Looking at her companion form, he had no idea what ghost eyes meant. He could only guess that the ghost bride could become an eye. Zhou Wen was studying the ghost bride's stats when he suddenly felt in Sheng break. The tires screeched as it dragged across the road, producing ear-piercing sounds. Li Xian was about to doze off, so without sitting properly, he slammed into the back of the seat in front of him. Just as he was about to say something, he heard Zhang Yuji, who was sitting in the front passenger seat, let out an extremely sharp scream. In front, there are ghosts in front. Zhou Wen and Li Xian looked ahead where the car lights shone. Immediately, their expressions changed. A group of white-robed ghosts appeared on the main road ahead of them. They walked over in a daunting manner, and amongst them, there were even ghosts carrying a red-painted coffin. When they walked over, the entire sky seemed to be enveloped by a terrifying ghostly aura. Instantly, the surroundings became a place filled with ghosts. The white-robed ghosts had long green fangs that didn't resemble human teeth. As for the red coffin, there was a strange black gas emitting from it. It looked ghastly and terrifying. Chapter 228 Ghost Hide Zhou Wen and company's faces turned grim. There were countless ghosts in front of the mountain path. They were carrying a coffin, like a funeral procession. When they were about a hundred meters away from Zhou Wen and company, the ghost that carried the coffin stopped. However, it was a momentary pause. In the next second, the ghost roared and charged forward like a tidal wave. There's no other way. We can only storm through. And Sheng summoned a dagger and opened the door to get down. Zhou Wen, Li Xian, Ali, and Zhang Yuji got out of the car. Zhang Yuji's face was pale, 
but she was already prepared for battle. Clearly, she knew that it was useless no matter how afraid she was. She had to storm through. You guys follow behind me. And Shung took charge and stared at the approaching ghosts. When they were about five meters away from him, the dagger in his hand finally moved. The dagger brought with it a beam of light that resembled a blade. The blade beam slashed at the surging ghosts, instantly cleaving through the first row of ghosts that were leading the charge. The few ghosts behind were struck by the impact, and their bodies were sent flying backward. Although the might of one strike appeared powerful, Zhou Wen couldn't help but frown. If in Shung's blade beam was facing ordinary legendary creatures, it would probably have killed a large number of them. However, this strike only managed to kill the first four ghosts, and they were only ordinary legendary ghosts. Clearly, the effect of Enshung's strength was limited when dealing damage to a ghost. In an instant, the legion of ghosts inundated Zhou Wen in company as they attacked from all directions. Enshung was in charge of leading the charge while All Lai and Li Xian defended the flanks. Zhou Wen stood at the back while the injured Zhang Yuji, who had lost all her pets, remained in the middle to guard against the occasional one that slipped through their defenses. Enshung's gaze was cold as he constantly brandished his dagger. Wherever the blade beam hit, even ghosts were forcibly cut through. A path of destruction emerged from the sea of ghosts as he charged forward with Zhou Wen in company. Although the Thunder God's sword in Li Xian's hand was limited in effect against the Ghost Bride, it was still effective against ordinary ghosts. Furthermore, his invincible Kane divine art seemed to have a certain effect on him. Although he wasn't capable of slaying the ghosts like in Sheng, he still caused the ghosts beside him to howl in pain. Ah Lai's situation was somewhat odd. He was clearly a little afraid, and had apparently not cultivated any specialized combat techniques. It did not seem like he had been augmented by any primordial energy skills, but when his fists struck the ghosts, he was able to send them flying. A few ghosts were nearly blasted apart by him. Li Xian is right! Alai does indeed possess immense power! Zhou Wen was relatively relaxed. Truth Listener was right in front of him. When ghosts charged at him, Truth Listener would charge out like a stream of light, dissipating a ghost with a single swipe of its paw. Zhou Wen switched his primordial energy art to the small perfection of Wisdom Sutra. The ghost that slipped through the cracks would suffer a strike of his palm. He discovered that with the augmentation of the small perfection of Wisdom Sutra, hitting a ghost was no different from hitting a living creature. It directly shattered the ghost's head. The small perfection of Wisdom Sutra does have the ability to restrain ghosts. Zhou Wen felt a lot more at ease. According to their current situation, if they were only blocked by this legion of ghosts, they should be able to tear through the obstacle. However, Zhou Wen had an ominous feeling when his gaze landed on the red-painted coffin that emitted black gas. And Sheng led the group all the way forward, killing countless ghosts along the way. There were many ghost crystals that dropped on the ground, but none of them had the time to pick them up. Truth listeners seemed to enjoy the crystals of these ghosts as it charged forward like lightning and devoured them. It reveled in the killing and, without waiting for Zhou Wen's instructions, he took the initiative to kill the nearby ghosts. It was very effective against ghosts. Legendary ghosts basically just needed one swipe of its claw. Those ghosts had no ability to resist it at all. The five of them continued their relentless assaults in the midst of the ghost tide, almost closing in on the coffin. Perhaps due to the agitation caused by the group's slaying of ghosts, the red-painted coffin that emitted black gas began to shake violently. Just as Zhou Wen and company were less than ten meters away from it, the lid suddenly opened and a hand extended out, pressing it to the side of the coffin. It was as pale as snow with long slender fingers. They looked like bones wrapped in skin, but the nails were silver, long and sharp, like sharp blades. And there seemed to be a faint black gas emitting from that hand. Zhou Wen's heart sank as in Sheng's expression turned solemn. They continued charging forward without a word. The ghost hand pressed down hard on the coffin, and a figure slowly stood up. It was a person with white hair and black armor. There was even a ferocious ghost mask on its face, and a faint black gas emitted from its body one that exuded a sinister charm. The black armored, white-haired ghost slowly floated up from the coffin as it stared at Truth Listener and Nsheng. The next moment, it seemed to teleport and appeared in front of Nsheng. It thrust its silver fingernails at Nsheng's head like five sharp daggers. Nsheng quickly reacted as he whipped his dagger upwards and slashed at the ghost's hand like a streak of light, giving it a great impulse. Retreat, Nsheng said with a solemn expression. Zhou Wen and Li Xian knew that something was amiss. Behind them was the Yin Yang boundary stone. If they retreated, they would retreat into the Yin Yang world. And Sheng clearly knew that this was the case. Yet, he still got them to retreat. Clearly, they had encountered a very serious problem. Even he was not confident about defeating the black armored, white haired ghost. Without another word, Zhou Wen charged back with Truth Listener. Li Xian, Ah Lai, and Zhang Yuji followed closely behind. However, 
and Shum didn't retreat. He held onto the dagger and stared at the black armored, white haired ghost intently. The black armored, white haired ghost also looked at and Shun as the black aura around it became more obvious. As for the other ghosts, they appeared to not see and Shun at all. They no longer attacked him, and instead charged at the escaping Zhou Wen and company. And Shun's aura grew stronger, as a strange light rose up from his body, as if a demon had possessed him. The purple light seemed to dye his body purple. Boom! Zhou Wen only heard a terrifying explosion from and Shun when he saw ghostly auras rise up. It was mixed with a strange purple hue. Countless ghosts had been dispersed. However, there were just too many ghosts, and countless ghosts were still rushing at them. Without Enshun holding back most of the ghosts, their situation immediately became dire. Although Truth Listener was effective against ghosts, it was a legendary pet after all. It could only kill one ghost at a time without a mass attack. With it only killing one ghost, more ghosts would lunge at them. Chapter 229 In Yon World Zhou Wen charged forward as he constantly punched out with his fists, but he could only send two or three ghosts retreating. Seeing more and more ghosts surrounding them, Zhou Wen and company were unable to move far. They were trapped in their spots. Zhou Wen summoned Banana Fairy and sent a gust of grinding wind at the ghosts ahead of him. A strong gust of wind blew past, instantly blowing away the large group of ghosts ahead. However, after the ghosts were blown away, they quickly lunged forward again, not suffering too much damage. Zhou Wen immediately understood that the power of the grinding wind was an in elemental wind. As for ghosts, they were of an extreme in nature. The wind attribute of the grinding wind was effective against them, but the in attribute wasn't of much use. All he could do was send them flying, but he couldn't freeze them. It's good enough to send them flying. Zhou Wen gritted his teeth as he charged forward. His Dao body quickly recovered his primordial energy, and once he did that, he would fan the back. Li Xian blocked most of the ghosts in the rear, but the wounds on his body kept increasing. With Zhou Wen's fanning, a large number of the ghosts behind them were sent flying, giving Li Xian some breathing space. Zhou Wen summoned the three-eyed golden warrior, the saber shield knight, demonized general, the silver winged flying ant, and the mutated lotus flower ant, but the effects weren't that great. Among them, only the golden warrior's golden palm did significant damage to the ghosts. The damage dealt to the ghosts by the other pet's attacks was very limited and was of not much use. Soon, Zhou Wen unsummoned them. This was the real world. They died permanently here with no way to revive them. These were excellent great companion beasts that Zhou Wen had. He couldn't bear to send them to their deaths. Zhou Wen summoned the ghost bride and saw her figure move erratically. Wherever the pale white hands with red nails touched, a ghost's head would be pierced through by her claws. Then, the ghost would be absorbed by her palm, turning her nails even redder like blood. The ghost bride's wanton killing was much more efficient than Zhou Wen's. She shared the burden for the four of them. With the aid of the banana fairy, truth listener, and ghost bride, Zhou Wen and company finally arrived at a spot not far from the Yin-Yang boundary stone. From time to time, earth-shattering explosions could be heard from afar, making Zhou Wen and company feel much more at ease. At least they knew that Shun was still battling the black-armored, white-haired ghost he hadn't been killed. However, they were also in a daze. And Shun only wanted them to rush back, but he didn't tell them what to do. Now that they were about to reach the Yin-Yang boundary stone, were they to cross it? There was no way out after being chased by ghosts. If they entered the netherworld again, it could only be worse. Zhou Wen, who was at the forefront, couldn't help but look in the direction of the Yin Yang boundary stone. When he saw it, his pupils immediately constricted, as though he had seen an extremely terrifying scene. Holy sh asterisk t! Li Xian also looked in the direction of the boundary stone, and immediately exclaimed when he saw it. Behind the boundary stone, was a group of red-dressed female ghosts. Their numbers were in no way lesser than the white-robed ghosts they were facing. At that moment, they were behind the boundary stone, like a sea of red flowers. However, the red-dressed female ghosts were somewhat different from Zhou Wen's ghost bride. Although they were dressed in red, they were only dressed in ordinary red robes. They weren't bridal gowns, nor were there red veils that covered their faces. Their faces could be seen. The female ghosts didn't look ugly, and were actually rather pretty. However, their faces were pale, and looked ghastly. Their fingernails were long and sharp. Although they didn't look ugly, they appeared extremely frightening. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. We are really in big trouble this time. Li Xian cried out loudly. His immortal god of combat life providence and the invincible Kane divine art made him nearly immortal as long as he wasn't immediately slain. But even so, such a crazy battle was a huge burden on him. Zhou Wen was also secretly lamenting. The white road ghosts had the black armored, white haired ghost that even in Shun was not necessarily able to beat. They definitely couldn't escape in that direction. However, 
The red dress female ghosts weren't to be trifled with either. Furthermore, after entering the dimensional zone, who knew what else was there? Perhaps, there was a large number of black armored, white haired ghosts inside. If they charged in, they would only end up dead. Instantly, the four fell into a dilemma. They could neither advance nor retreat, and could only fight the white robed ghosts with all their might. However, there was no way to continue fighting like this. Humans didn't have inexhaustible stamina. The Dao body could recover Zhou Wen's primordial energy, but it was impossible for it to completely recover his stamina. Zhou Wen was already beginning to feel exhausted, and he had no idea how long he could last. Li Xian's and Al Lai's situation wasn't any better. The depletion of their stamina wasn't any less than Zhou Wen's. Zhang Yuji was the worst. She limped as she barely managed to fight. She had already suffered quite a few injuries. If not for Zhou Wen, Li Xian, and Al Lai taking care of her occasionally, she would have long been killed by the ghosts. It's not a solution if this goes on. Instead of dying so pathetically, why don't we charge back and kill the black armored, white haired ghost with Brother Sheng? If we succeed, we can successfully escape. Even if we don't succeed, we'll just die gloriously in battle. It's better than dying here because of being overwhelmed, Li Xian said. Zhou Wen scanned his surroundings and suddenly said, Don't go back yet. Let's approach the Yin Yang boundary stone a little closer. With that said, Zhou Wen had already used the Granding Wind to lead the way as he charged towards the red dress female ghosts. However, his Granding Wind was only used to fan the white robed ghosts away. He didn't attack the red dress female ghosts. Although they did not know what Zhou Wen was up to, Li Xian and Al Lai followed without any hesitation. Soon, they arrived in front of the boundary stone. At that moment, they discovered a strange scene. None of the red dress female ghosts standing behind the boundary stone charged over. As for the white robed ghosts, none of them came close to the Yin Yang boundary stone. They gathered on the other side of the boundary stone as they bared their fangs and brandished their claws at Zhou Wen and company. The white robed ghosts, and the red dress female ghosts looked at each other across the boundary stone. The ghosts on both sides were eyeing Zhou Wen and company covetously, but none of them charged forward. It made the four who were trapped around the boundary stone feel alarmed yet relieved. After fighting for so long, the four of them were exhausted. They leaned close towards the Yin Yang boundary stone, but were unable to rest. The white robed ghosts and red dress female ghosts on both sides were less than a meter away from them. The terrifying ghastly claws that were waving around seemed to be able to pierce a few holes into their bodies at any moment. Old Joe, are we saved now? Li Xian said with a sullen expression as he looked at the ghastly claw waving in front of him. The food and drinks are all in the car. We are trapped here. Even if these ghosts don't harm us, we won't be able to live for long. Do you think we are saved? Zhou Wen sized up the Yin Yang boundary stone. He hoped that he could find a way out. However, beyond that was ghastly and terrifying. Fog was everywhere, making it impossible to see what was inside. Suddenly, the potent collisions in the distance vanished as the night turned silent. It made Zhou Wen and company feel their hearts in their throats. Did Brother Sheng win? Li Xian swallowed his saliva with great difficulty. If in Sheng didn't win, he probably had been harmed by the black armored, white haired ghost. This also spelled doom for them. Their gazes were fixed on the road. Soon, Zhou Wen and company's expressions became extremely nasty. They saw the black armored, white haired ghost fly over in the sky, its head of white hair fluttering in the wind like a devil coming into this world. Chapter 230 Ghost King Let's charge in. Zhou Wen gritted his teeth when he saw the black armored, white haired ghost charging at them. He got up and charged towards the Yin Yang boundary stone. With the granding wind clearing the path, the red dress female ghosts were sent flying dozens of meters away. Li Xian and company also knew that facing the black armored, white haired ghost would only lead to death. Without any hesitation, they followed Zhou Wen past the Yin Yang boundary stone. Despite the granding wind sending many female ghosts flying dozens of meters away, there were just too many red dress female ghosts. Soon, more red dress female ghosts surrounded them. Zhou Wen fanned again, blowing away the female ghost in front of him as he ran desperately inside with the trio. Not long after the four of them ran in, the black armored, white haired ghost charged to the Yin Yang boundary stone. However, he didn't hesitate like the white robed ghosts and rushed straight in. The moment he entered, the red dress female ghost seemed to break into a frenzy. All of them began screaming as their hair stood on end. They charged at the black armored, white haired ghost fearlessly. Zhou Wen and company were pleasantly surprised when they saw this. Holy sh asterisk t, all hell's breaking loose. Li Xian cried out in pleasant surprise. However, their pleasant surprise didn't last long. When the group of red dress female ghosts pounced at the black armored, white haired ghost, the black gas emitting from the latter suddenly blasted outwards, producing a shockwave. 
It instantly obliterated all the red-dressed female ghosts within a 20-meter radius. The black-armored, white-haired ghost ignored the red-dressed female ghosts and flew towards Sho Wen and company. The four of them felt their hearts turn cold. The black-armored, white-haired ghost could kill a group of red-dressed female ghosts without even laying his finger on them. Such strength was a calamity for them. Although the red-dressed female ghosts continued charging forward fearlessly, they had no effect on the black-armored, white-haired ghost. Just a surge of his black gas evaporated and dissipated them, leaving only a few ghost crystals falling to the ground. The four of them only managed to run for about a hundred meters before the black-armored, white-haired ghost caught up to them. He extended his ghastly claws and grabbed at Zhou Wen. The black gas condensed into the shape of a ghastly claw and, despite being more than ten meters away, appeared in front of Zhou Wen instantly and was about to hoist him up. Zhou Wen held the banana fan and fanned it at the black gaseous claw. The grinding wind swept over, blowing away all the black gas. However, before Zhou Wen and company could rejoice, the black-armored, white-haired ghost released another claw. A gigantic ghastly hand, formed from black gases grabbed at Zhou Wen, its speed so fast that it was almost impossible to dodge. The grinding wind had just been used and Zhou Wen's primordial energy had yet to recover. Unable to use it again, all he could do was pull out his bamboo blade and slash at the black gaseous claw. Ghost Bride and Truth Listener attacked the black gaseous hand at the same time. The Yin Wind Claw and the Golden Beam of Truth Listener's claws almost struck the black gaseous claw simultaneously. Bam! The black gaseous claw was shattered by the two pets, but Zhou Wen felt his hands go numb as his primordial energy was nearly drained. Run separately! Zhou Wen could tell that he was the black armored, white haired ghost's target. He immediately ran in another direction. The black armored, white haired ghost indeed chased after him without any hesitation. The red-dressed female ghosts that approached him were dissipated, as though he was a demon king in the flesh. Zhou Wen felt worse than the black-armored white-haired ghost. By using the great Yin wind to rid the red-dressed female ghosts in front of him, there was no way to deal with his pursuer. Furthermore, the black-armored, white-haired ghost was obviously much faster than him. In a blink of an eye, he had caught up to him. As though he knew that the black gaseous claw was useless against Zhou Wen, the black-armored, white-haired ghost grabbed at him with his hand. It was as fast as an illusion. Zhou Wen switched his primordial energy art to the small perfection of Wisdom Sutra and used the bamboo blade to produce transcendent flying immortal. Instantly, the sky lit up as Zhou Wen's speed suddenly increased. Like lightning, he slashed at the black armored, white haired ghost's body. Clang! 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 Sounds of metal ringing sounded incessantly as the extremely sharp bamboo blade struck the black armor of the white haired ghost. It was unknown what the armor was made of but it looked like black jade. When the bamboo blade struck it, only white scuff marks were left behind, failing to split the armor apart. The black armored, white-haired ghost floated in the air, blocking Zhou Wen's attack without even lifting his palm. The instant transcendent flying immortal ended, the black armored, white-haired ghost extended his hand and instantly appeared in front of Zhou Wen, moments from grabbing his neck. The difference in speed was too great, so Zhou Wen didn't even have a chance to dodge. Truth Listener appeared on Zhou Wen's shoulder, as a golden light flashed across its claws. It was as though it was wearing a mysterious hex seal as it moved towards the black armored, white haired ghost's palm. Bam! Its palm was branded with a golden mark that made him retract his hand as if he had been pricked by a needle. As for Truth Listener, it was sent flying. It tumbled in the air a few times before landing on the head of a red dressed female ghost. She was so frightened that she didn't dare move. Truth Listener didn't look injured. After baring its teeth and crying out loud, it leaped up once again, rushing towards the black-armored, white-haired ghost. The ghost shook his hand, and immediately, the golden flame-like branding on his palm was drowned by the black gas. Then, he shot out a plume of black gas, immediately sending Truth Listener flying. W. Truth Listener was only at the legendary stage. Despite being struck by the black-armored, white-haired ghost twice, it remained unharmed. However, there was nothing it could do about the black-armored, white-haired ghost. Before it could reach him, it was sent flying by the hand formed by the black gas. Zhou Wen felt a little depressed. If Truth Listener could advance to the epic stage, it would probably be able to fight the black armored, white haired ghost or even suppress it. Now, it could only be trounced. The black armored, white haired ghost seemed to know that Truth Listener was a nemesis of ghosts, making it difficult to kill. Therefore, he only sent Truth Listener flying before ignoring it. With his body phasing away, he appeared in front of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen was already prepared as he fanned him sending the black armored, white haired ghost flying back more than a hundred feet. However, just as he retreated, the white haired ghost's figure blinked again. 
It was so fast that Zhou Wen had no time to recover his primordial energy. It was already too late for Truth Listener and Banana Fairy to save him. Zhou Wen could only use Ghost Bride to ward off his assailant, but Ghost Bride appeared to be extremely afraid of the black-armored, white-haired ghost. She didn't dare rush forward to help Zhou Wen ward off the disaster. Zhou Wen immediately cursed inwardly. Typical companion beasts were absolutely obedient. They wouldn't hesitate even if they were ordered to commit suicide. Only a mythical pet like Truth Listener and Banana Fairy had a certain level of self-awareness. He never expected Ghost Bride to have her own consciousness, and even no fear. However, with the Ghost Bride's hesitation, Zhou Wen immediately fell into peril. He watched as the black-armored, white-haired ghost's palm grabbed at his neck. Chapter 231 Fight to the Death Chapter 231 Fight to the Death The chick that had been standing on Zhou Wen's shoulder suddenly spat out a golden flame that sprayed onto the black-armored, white-haired ghost's palm. When the golden flame touched the white-haired ghost's palm, it was as if a spark had encountered gasoline. It immediately ignited, and the ghastly hand caught fire. Good bird. Zhou Wen was overjoyed as he turned around and continued fleeing. Although the chick was magical, it had not long been born. Its level was too low now, so no matter how powerful its flames were, it would probably not be able to burn the black-armored, white-haired ghost to death. Indeed, the black gas emitted by the black-armored, white-haired ghost surged out, extinguishing the golden flames that engulfed his palm. His charred palm also rapidly recovered amidst the black gases, and his eyes showed anger as he chased again. What a haunting presence. Joe Wynn suddenly felt that at times, people really couldn't believe in superstitions. Ever since he had the bamboo blade, his luck had really deteriorated significantly. On this return trip, a new dimensional zone had appeared out of nowhere. There were even creatures that had broken out of containment, and they were unlucky enough to encounter them. Truth Listener and Banana Fairy rushed over to help Joe when fend off the black armored, white haired ghost. Joe Wynn had also pushed Dragon Gate Fairy's skill to its limits, hoping to escape the calamity. However, the black armored, white haired ghost had extremely high intelligence. He already knew that Truth Listener's and Banana Fairy's weakness was that their levels weren't high, so he ignored them. He sent them flying and continued targeting Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen kept ordering Ghost Bride to fight, but all she did was tremble as she slowly floated towards the black armored, white haired ghost. Clearly, she was horrified. Zhou Wen dodged in the air like an eagle several times, but he failed to completely dodge the black armored, white haired ghost's palm attacks. He was just seconds from having his neck grabbed. Seeing his furious gaze, Zhou Wen had no doubt that he would snap his neck. After I return, I'll definitely stay at home and game in peace. I won't come out again no matter what, Zhou Wen thought to himself as he prepared to activate his Sigh of the King. Although the Sigh of the King was potent, his body couldn't withstand such immense power. Furthermore, it was unknown if it was effective against the black armored, white haired ghost, but now, using it meant a last ditch effort. If his attack failed, death was certain for him. The white haired ghost dodged the flame spewed out by the chick. Just as it was about to grab Zhou Wen, a bolt of lightning suddenly descended from the sky and struck the white haired ghost's head. It was Li Xian who cleaved down with the Thunder God sword. The white haired ghost frowned slightly. He moved his body sideways and flipped his hand, sending the ghastly gases to blast Li Xian and his sword away. Bam! Li Xian's body slammed into the ground paved with stones, shattering the area. Li Xian! Zhou Wen cleaved at the white haired ghost while shouting. Li Xian did a backflip from the rubble and charged at the white haired ghost again, his thunder god sword weighing him down. The white haired ghost's figure flashed as he grabbed the bamboo blade with one hand and grabbed the thunder god sword with the other. He violently flung Zhou Wen and Li Xian to the ground. As gravel flew, Zhou Wen felt his face deform from being smashed. It was possible that his bones were fractured as blood gushed out from his nose. Li Xian's condition wasn't any better as he crashed into the stony earth. The white haired ghost's body descended and its feet were just about to step on both of their heads. Bam! All I rushed over and kicked the white haired ghost in the chest, sending him flying backward. Zhou Wen didn't hesitate any further as he channeled the sigh of the king. Instantly, the strange power blasted out like a volcanic eruption. A beam of light descended on Zhou Wen. Li Xian and company couldn't see the shadow, but Zhou Wen could sense that it was a woman, but he couldn't see her clearly. Terrifying power instantly filled Zhou Wen's entire body, making him feel like he could blast through everything. He was unwilling to waste any more time, since the sigh of the king's power only grew stronger. If too much time passed, the power might explode his body. Zhou Wen had to finish off the ghost king before his body crumbled. Seeing the ghost king charge at him again, Zhou Wen didn't hesitate to use transcendent flying immortal. His body transformed into a lightning flash as he faced the black-armored, white-haired ghost. Crack! 
The bamboo blade slashed at the Ghost King's black armor once again, tearing open a deep rift. The black gas in it immediately surged out like a fountain. The black armored, white haired ghost's expression changed. His figure flashed like a ghost and disappeared into thin air. The subsequent attacks of transcendent flying immortal mist due to the target suddenly disappearing. When the black armored, white haired ghost appeared again, it was already tens of meters away. Its trajectory didn't show, as though it had teleported over. Zhou Wen felt the power in his body turn increasingly violent. Without any hesitation, he used Transcendent Flying Immortal again. Originally, with his primordial energy, he could only use Transcendent Flying Immortal once before being innervated. However, with the Sigh of the King, Zhou Wen felt that he could use Transcendent Flying Immortal countless times. He didn't need to worry about overexerting his primordial energy, as though his body had infinite primordial energy. This feeling made Zhou Wen excited and extremely worried. He was like a baby swinging a sledgehammer, he could hurt himself at any moment due to his lack of power. His body's strength was insufficient to control the sigh of the king. Transcended flying immortal streaked across the sky instantly and appeared in front of the black armored, white haired ghost. However, his figure phased away and vanished once again. It made Zhou Wen unable to sense his aura, preventing him from locking onto it. This transcended flying immortal missed again. Zhou Wen's expression changed slightly as his body showed signs of overexertion. If he couldn't quickly finish off the white-haired ghost soon, he would probably implode. However, the white-haired ghost possessed a technique that was similar to teleportation. No matter how strong or fast he was, it was useless if he couldn't touch the white-haired ghost. When the white-haired ghost appeared again, Li Xian charged forward and slashed at its head with the Thunder God sword. The white-haired ghost was somewhat afraid of Zhou Wen's strength, but he thought nothing of Li Xian. With a slight blink, he dodged Li Xian's Thunder God sword and pressed Li Xian's head to the ground with one hand. Bam! Rocks flew everywhere as Li Xian's head crashed into a huge crater on the ground. Blood splattered out along with the rubble. Zhou Wen was alarmed. This strike had probably crushed Li Xian's head. However, just as the white-haired ghost was about to retract his hand, Li Xian suddenly grabbed his arm with both hands and leaped up. He clung tightly to the white-haired ghost and shouted at Zhou Wen. Kill him! Chapter 232 Slaying Ghost King Chapter 232 Slaying Ghost King Zhou Wen didn't hesitate. With Transcendent Flying Immortal, he traversed more than 10 meters in an instant and slashed his bamboo blade at the white-haired ghost like a bolt of lightning. The black gas exploded from the white-haired ghost's body, causing Li Xian's blood to spray. He didn't know how many bones had been broken, but he refused to release his tight grip. Realizing that he couldn't shake Li Xian off, the white-haired ghost tried to teleport with Li Xian. However, Ao Lai, who had rushed over, hugged his other leg. The ghost was clearly much slower attempting to teleport with the two of them allowing Zhou Wen to discover the secret of his teleportation. It wasn't teleportation at all. It was just a fast-moving art, but because it was so fast, it looked like it was an instant transmission. Li Xian risked his life to hold him back, and with Ah Lai joining, his speed immediately slowed down, allowing Zhou Wen to see the white-haired ghost's trajectory clearly. Transcended flying immortal moved like lightning as they intertwined and slashed at the black-armored, white-haired ghost. The extremely hard armor was cleaved apart by Zhou Wen's redoubtable strength, as if it was tofu, as cracks appeared one after another. Large amounts of black smoke spewed out from the cracks in his armor, and soon, his body appeared close to tearing apart. However, a strange scene happened at that moment. The black-armored, white-haired ghost gave a long roar as it enveloped the entire land that was the nether realm. The white-robed ghosts and red-dressed female ghosts turned into streams of ghost aura that surged towards him. As there were too many ghosts around him, large amounts of ghostly aura surged into his body, quickly restoring the damage to his body. The armor that was on the brink of collapse was stabilized. Zhou Wen knew that this wasn't going well. His body was almost at its limits. If this strike couldn't kill the black-armored, white-haired ghost, he still had a high chance of killing him by using Transcendent Flying Immortal again. However, his body would probably not be able to withstand it either. He would probably implode while using Transcendent Flying Immortal. Just as Zhou Wen was lamenting the turn of events, Ghost Bride beside him let out a scream as she emitted a red glow. In the domain of the black-armored, white-haired ghost, her ghostly aura was also sucked away, preventing her from escaping. Finally, she unleashed all her potential. Although it was said to be all her potential, there was only one talent skill that she had never used. It was also the Jinx's husband's skill that he had no idea how to use. When the red glow radiated outwards, Zhou Wen and company didn't feel anything, despite being illuminated by the red light. The black-armored, white-haired ghost was also illuminated by the red light. Immediately, the ghostly aura in his body was thrown into chaos. The ghostly aura that had been sucked into his body to heal it turned chaotic. 
Not only did it not repair his body, it even affected his own ghostly aura. Die! Zhou Wen released all his strength as the remaining half of Transcendent Flying Immortal was unleashed with even more terrifying might. It transformed into bolts of lightning that meshed together, striking the black-armored, white-haired ghost. Bam! The black-armored, white-haired ghost's body was shattered as the black armor was scattered everywhere. The ghostly aura in his body also exploded, sending Li Xian and Ali flying. Zhou Wen retracted the power of Sai of the King and landed back on the ground. He lost his balance and fell to the ground. His skin was crimson red, a result of his blood vessels and meridians bursting. Under such immense pressure, all his bones would have fractured. If he had delayed a little while longer, he would have been killed by his life providence without needing the black armored, white-haired ghost to do the honors. Li Xian on lie, are you alright? Zhou Wen struggled to stand up, but it was to no avail no matter how hard he tried. His bones were fractured and he couldn't stand the pain even if he didn't move. Any movement made it excruciating. Meanwhile, Ali helped Li Xian up from the rubble. I'm fine. Li Xian's condition isn't too good. I won't die. Li Xian was covered in blood even his face was indiscernible, making him look extremely terrifying. With his powerful recovery abilities, he still didn't show any signs of improvement, proof of his serious injuries. They had just said a few words when their expressions turned nasty. They were already unable to continue fighting, but the red-dressed female ghosts suddenly surrounded them. They bared their fangs and brandished their claws, as if they wanted to skin them alive. If this were in the past, Zhou Wen and company wouldn't have been afraid of the red-dressed female ghosts. No matter how many of them blocked their path, they could still charge out. But now, three and a half of the four were equivalent to trash. They were not combat fit. More critically, they didn't even have the ability to escape. They could only stand their ground and await death. I never expected that I, Li Xian, would die in the hands of a female ghost. All right, dying in the hands of a beautiful female ghost is better than being eaten by those ugly beasts. Li Xian also knew that he was unlikely to survive today, but he didn't feel any fear. He looked up and said to Zhou Wen, Old Zhou, I'm afraid you and I are both going to hell. When we go to hell, remember me. Don't forget me. When the time comes, let's wreak havoc in hell. All right. Zhou Wen also knew that there was no way they could survive this ordeal, as he nodded in response. Ali sighed softly. It's a pity, I still haven't remembered what happened in the past. Zhang Yuji hobbled towards Zhou Wen in company with her injured legs, but she collapsed to the ground. Only Zhou Wen's pets were still fighting, but the red-dressed female ghosts were like an unending tidal wave. With the opening the red-dressed female ghosts detected, they lunged over and threw the four into despair. Suddenly, a beam of light flashed as the heads of the red-dressed female ghosts flew into the air. At the same time, a figure appeared in front of them. Brother Shen, you aren't dead? Li Xian was overjoyed when he saw the person. It was in Sheng. However, when he saw in Sheng's appearance, Li Xian's expression turned odd. He saw that in Sheng's clothes were ironed and his shirt was clean and white. Even his hair was neat and tidy. There was no messy hair, and there was a smile on his face. He did not look like he had gone through an intense battle. Furthermore, it was clearly very strenuous for him to kill the ghosts previously, but, this time, this strike had managed to behead dozens of red-dressed female ghosts. This was clearly different from his previous performance. Don't tell me you're bluffing? Li Xian asked with widened eyes. The others looked at Nsheng as well, but Nsheng said with a smile. Didn't I mention that I would take you to a few dimensional zones for training? This Inyang ghost world that just appeared is one of them. I originally thought that I would save you when you were on the brink of death, but I never expected that you could actually kill Ghost King. You did pretty well. Don't you feel a sense of achievement? Li Xian did not say a word as he showed and shung his middle finger. He suddenly understood why many people in Luoyang called and shung the devil's adjutant. And Sheng wasn't angry either. He played with a dagger in his hand and casually killed the red-dressed female ghosts until they fled in fear, no longer daring to lunge forward again. He walked to the spot where Ghost King had died and picked up something before stuffing it into Zhou Wen's hand. Young Master One, this is your spoils of war. It's very meaningful. The experience gained from life and death is something that no amount of wealth can compare with. Zhou Wen didn't have the strength to speak. He received the primordial energy skill crystal that emitted black gas and flipped and shung off as well. Chapter 233 Afraid You'll Be Unhappy I should have realized it long ago. With Ah Shang's meticulousness, why would he take us on such a dangerous path? Besides, He's the one who led us here. Zhou Wen shook his head slightly. He was glad that Ah Shang wasn't an enemy, while also warning himself. This time, An Shang was not their enemy. But if their enemy treated them this way, how would they deal with it? Zhou Wen could only warn himself that he had to be more careful in the future. However, he didn't lose trust in anyone because of this matter. 
At the very least, Li Xian and Ah Lai had chosen to fight alongside him in the life and death situation, instead of running for their lives. Between trust and distrust, Zhou Wen knew that he needed to find a balance. There was one thing and Shun was right about. A battle that threatened his life was far more memorable than Zhou Wen gaming. Some things were difficult to understand unless it was a life and death situation. The penalty of death and game ultimately failed to reach the bottom of his heart. On his way back, Zhou Wen was fiddling with the Ghost King's primordial energy skill crystal in his hand. And Shang told Zhou Wen that the Yin Yang world had only appeared recently, and it was difficult to kill a Ghost King. In fact, a Ghost King was very rare as well, not something that would be encountered every time. Therefore, up to now, very few primordial energy skill crystal had dropped. The one in Zhou Wen's hand was the first. Even in Shung didn't know what primordial energy skill the Ghost King would drop. And Shung also said that he had watched Zhou Wen and company's entire battle process. If it wasn't for the strange powers of Ghost Bride restraining the Ghost King, the outcome would have been completely different. The restrictions Ghost Bride had on the Ghost King were too great. It was a very effective weapon against him. If Zhou Wen was interested and had the time, he could use Ghost Bride to earn money here in the future. There would definitely be people who would hire Zhou Wen's Ghost Bride. It was also in Sheng's first time finding out the abilities of Ghost Bride. In fact, he had never seen a Ghost Bride before, and this was also his first time seeing her. Not long after the Yin Yang world was discovered, all in Sheng knew about were the red dress female ghosts, white robe female ghosts, and the Ghost King. However, and Sheng had the ability to control dimensional creatures like ghosts. Therefore, even if two Ghost Kings appeared at the same time, he was confident that he could protect Zhou when in company. That was why he brought them here to experience the sensation of life and death. At the same time, he wanted Zhou Wen to experience the dimensional creatures of the ghost type. Otherwise, he wouldn't be mentally prepared when facing them in the future. What kind of primordial energy skill is it? Zhou Wen didn't directly absorb it. It was an epic primordial energy skill crystal, so directly absorbing it was too dangerous. Zhou Wen planned on absorbing it in game after returning to the college. Nothing happened on the way back, as in Sheng successfully got them to Luoyang. When they passed by Eastern Capital, Zhang Yuji got out of the car and thanked them. She even added them as friends on social media. Did everything go well on the way? And Tianzhua asked casually as he read the documents in the military camp. It went well. And Sheng answered. That's good. And Tianzhua frowned slightly as he continued reading the documents. However, after waiting for a while, he still didn't hear Sheng speak. And Tianzhua looked up at Sheng, who was standing by the side, and asked. Don't you have anything to say? Overseer, do you want to know about my matters? Or do you want to know about Zhou Wen's matters? If it's the former, you can feel at ease. I was very safe the entire journey. And Shun said with a smile. Humph, you are becoming more and more presumptuous. And Tianzhu's face sank as he reprimanded in Shun before continuing. I heard that he caused quite a stir in Holy City. I'm afraid he will bring trouble to our own family. In terms of the ability to stir up trouble, he definitely can't compare to you, Overseer. Besides, even if he were to cause trouble, the Yin family would be the one causing trouble for him, don't you think so? And Sheng blinked as he spoke. Ah Sheng, have you been living too comfortably recently? Do you want to go on a training expedition at the front lines? And Tianzhu put down the documents in his hand and glared at Sheng. Overseer, calm down. I'm just afraid that you won't be happy if I say something that I shouldn't say. And Sheng said meekly. I'm very unhappy right now, said Tianzhu with a cold expression. And Sheng wasn't afraid as he blinked and said. All right, I'll tell you then. If you hear something you don't like, don't be angry. Do you believe that I'll throw you to the chess mountain to guard it? And Tianzhu said. If I were to guard the mountain pass, who else would know your preferences? They wouldn't even know what tea you like to drink or the ratio of warm water to use. I'm afraid you wouldn't be able to get used to it. And Sheng smiled as he made tea for Tianzhu. Do you think I'm apprehensive about dealing with you just because of this? Do you believe that I can find a more capable adjutant to replace you tomorrow and throw you to guard the mountain pass? With that said, and Tianzhu laughed. Yes. And Sheng placed the teacup in front of Tianzhu before saying seriously. You should already know about Zhou Wen's situation in Holy City. So what are you asking about? Your evaluation of him. And Tianzhu took a sip of tea and slowly said. Like I said, I was afraid you would be unhappy. And Sheng said. Speak. And Tianzhu only said one word. I think he's even stronger than you were back then. And Sheng said. And Tianzhu immediately put down his teacup and glared fiercely at Sheng. Don't use those exaggerated words. No matter how well you praise him, he will not catch my eye. And Sheng said, You said that you wouldn't be angry. If you want to hear lies, I'll just do as you wish. That Punk Zhou Wen is extremely weak. He was capable of defeating six families, 
and Lance not because he's strong, but because the children of the six families are too disappointing. Sho Wen nearly enjoys undeserved fame. The reason he could kill the Ghost King is because of his sheer luck. Ah Sheng, you seem to think highly of him? And Tian Zuan narrowed his eyes, and asked in Sheng. Eyes Yo Naro. I just feel that Zhou Wen is just what Mr. Ouyang said. He's someone that can be trusted. And Sheng said seriously. Is that so? I don't think so. Said in Tianzua indifferently, as he picked up the document and read it again. And Sheng knew in Tianzua's habits, so when he saw him pick up the document, he didn't say another word. All he could do was sigh inwardly. And Tianzua's temper was the same as Zhou Wen's. It was useless for anyone to say anything once he had made up his mind. Now, and Shun only hoped that the two of them wouldn't become enemies in the future. Otherwise, it would be a disaster. After Zhou Wen returned to his dorm, he took the mysterious phone to snap the Ghost King's primordial energy skill crystal. However, he received the notification that his stats were inadequate. Zhou Wen took a look and realized that the Ghost King crystal was the same as the mutated fairy crystal from before. They both had stat and primordial energy art requirements. The stat requirement was the same as transcendent flying immortal 21 points of speed. As for the primordial energy art, it required in type primordial energy art. The few primordial energy arts that Zhou Wen was proficient in now were more neutral. The ancient imperial sutra was clearly more inclined to Yang, and a Buddhist type primordial energy art like the small perfection of wisdom sutra was definitely not in type. As for the first order of chaos, it had yet to advance to the legendary stage. The only one left was the god fiend era. Zhou Wen didn't have much confidence, while switching his primordial energy art to the God Fiend era, all he wanted to do was give it a try. After all, the God Fiend era hadn't appeared to be in type in nature. At best, it could only be considered a little more feminine. To his surprise, the mysterious phone successfully captured the Ghost King's crystal into the game, and successfully absorbed it once he switched to God Fiend era. Absorb Ghost King Crystal. Attain Primordial Energy Skill. Ghost Steps. Chapter 234 Ghost Steps. Ghost Steps a moving technique of a ghost with a mysterious, unpredictable effect. Zhou Wen tested ghost steps and discovered that it was a movement technique that resembled the ghost king's instant transmission. Ghost steps wasn't true teleportation, but an instant burst of extraordinary speed. Due to the sudden burst of speed and suddenness, it looked like one vanished. Previously, with Li Xian and Ah Lai holding back the ghost king, Zhou Wen had seen his trajectory due to the lowering of his speed. Although it wasn't true teleportation, it was already enough to pleasantly surprise him. The speed at which the ghost steps erupted in an instant was too astonishing. Now, Zhou Wen was only at the legendary stage, so the speed attained from using ghost steps exceeded some at the epic stage. However, ghost steps was similar to that of transcendent flying immortal. They had higher primordial energy requirements, so even Ghost King himself was unable to continuously use ghost steps. Zhou Wen was the same, although he could switch to the Tao body to increase his frequency. Typical primordial energy was impossible to support ghost steps consumption. If I were to maintain the Psi of the King State, with infinite ghost steps and transcendent flying immortal, I'm afraid no one at the same level as me could withstand such terrifying attacks. What a pity. Although Zhou Wen had such thoughts, he knew that it was unlikely he could accomplish that in a short period of time. The next morning, Zhou Wen took some gifts to meet Wang Mingyuan and his seniors. He also asked Wang Mingyuan about the ivory pendant. The ivory pendant emitting a chill to resist the flames of the sun in the Sun God Temple had clearly made it extraordinary. Wang Mingyuan casually said, That's not ivory. It's a type of tooth I found in Dragon's Well. As for what kind of creature it is, it's hard to say for now. I've carved a total of four pendants. One for each one of you. Consider it a memento. Wang Mingyuan didn't care about such worldly possessions. Although he knew that these teeth pendants had magical uses, he did not take them to heart. Zhou Wen asked him some questions regarding combat techniques, and Wang Mingyuan answered them casually. After Zhou Wen consulted him on Lance's combat tactics, Wang Mingyuan told him, It's not that combat tactics can't be used, but the average person's reaction can't reach that level of thinking in battle. Therefore, most combat tactics are inflexible. It doesn't change on the spot in a targeted manner. A completely inflexible combat tactic is easily seen through by others, so it has to be used appropriately unless one's thoughts can reach the standard of a supercomputer, allowing one to react in almost every way possible. Otherwise, it can only be used as support. Don't deliberately seek out such tactics. Zhou Wen naturally couldn't reach such a level, so he chose a more normal path, a path that could match both reality and virtuality together in a versatile manner. By being versatile, faking out the enemy was a competition with the enemy on a psychological and physical level. Although this gave the enemy some time to think, he too would have the time to think and see who was better. Zhou Wen learned from Wang Mingyuan. 
Zhong Zia and Jiang Yan were in the lab every day while Hui Haifeng often went out. He was considered the most active one of Wang Mingyuan's disciples. The more Zhou Wen learned from Wang Mingyuan, the more he found Wang Mingyuan's knowledge unfathomably deep. Furthermore, he had a mild personality and wouldn't force him to learn anything, nor would he assign him to take a particular path. He was like a lamp that illuminated the world ahead of him. As for the path an individual wanted to take, they could choose it themselves. The sun was scorching, and the familiar cries of cicadas made the summer feel even hotter. It was rare for Wang Mingyuan to take the four of them to a classroom. He borrowed a projector and explained some relatively advanced theoretical knowledge and equipment to Zhou Wen and company. Wang Mingyuan was not only a researcher of dimensional forces, but he was also very accomplished in science. Zhou Wen wasn't too interested in technology, so he sat quietly at the back and played games. Hui Haifeng listened attentively, but it wasn't clear if he was really interested or had other plans. Zhong Zia was lying on the table sleeping, but the cicadas chirping irritated him so much that he couldn't fall asleep no matter what. He lay there weakly, his eyes staring blankly at the blackboard. Jiang Yan supported his face with one hand and looked out of the window, as if he was looking at the cicadas on the tree outside and with great interest. Wang Fei walked to the door and peeked inside the classroom through the gap. She wanted to know how Zhou Wen's progress under Wang Mingyuan's teachings. Upon seeing this, she couldn't help but feel a little depressed. She thought to herself, Uncle Mingyuan's personality is just too nice. He spoiled these guys. How can he let them off like this? Although she had such thoughts, Wang Fei didn't enter the room to say anything. Firstly, this was Wang Mingyuan's class, so she had to respect him. Secondly, Wang Fei knew that reprimanding a person like Zhou Wen was useless. Furthermore, Wang Fei had also heard what Zhou Wen had done in Holy City. Although the six families had started a news lockdown, the news couldn't be kept under wraps forever. Wang Fei was Ouyang Lan's best friend. She had long known from Ouyang Lan, and the tone she used to flaunt him made Wang Fei feel contempt. Forget it. It's already very difficult for this fellow to find an opponent among his peers. It's unlikely that I can come up with very good ideas to encourage him to continue working hard for the time being. I'll let him be smug for now. After some thought, Wang Fei decided to ignore Zhou Wen for the time being. After all, Zhou Wen was only a first-year freshman. Compared to the other students, Zhou Wen's improvement was extremely fast. However, after Wang Fei returned, she still raised the difficulty of her homework missions. This led her students crying foul. The students never expected that their homework missions became harder because of Zhou Wen. Wang Lu walked out of the building with the baby tiger and, when she saw Zhou Wen return after class, she went forward to greet him. Zhou Wen, are you interested in heading to Dragon Gate Grotto to hunt dimensional creatures? I'm actually caught up with something. I'm afraid I don't have time, Zhou Wen said. What else do you do? Isn't it just gaming? Wang Lu curled her lips, displeased with Zhou Wen's perfunctory answer. That's right. There's a part of the game I can't get past. I wish to make a breakthrough as soon as possible, Zhou Wen said with a nod. With ghost steps and transcendent flying immortal, Zhou Wen planned on attempting to kill the golden flying ant again, or see what was inside the white cocoon. He had not been able to raise his primordial energy and constitution to 21 all this time, so all he could do was place his target on something tangible first. Gaming nerd. Wang Lu puffed up her cheeks and left. Zhou Wen returned to his room and switched on his phone. He chose to enter the ant nest and headed straight for Ant City. Chapter 235 Setting Up a Stall When the blood-colored avatar arrived in Ant City again, it no longer acted as cowardly as before. Zhou Wen's pets could easily resolve the ant horde without him needing to do anything. After clearing all the ordinary ants, Zhou Wen took his pet to the ant nest at the apex. The golden flying ant charged straight out. Its speed was extremely fast, even faster than the ghost king when not using ghost steps. Its feet shot out a terrifying golden beam like a blade. Zhou Wen had allowed the saber shield knight to lead the charge, using his shield to block the golden beam. However, he could only block once. Although he had used a shield primordial energy skill, the shield cracked from the strikes. If another blow landed, the shield would definitely be destroyed. The silver wing flying ant attacked from the side, but was instantly killed by the beam shot from the golden flying ant's eyes. Its wings and body were penetrated. Truth listener attacked from the flank, but was taken down by the golden beam. Immediately, it retreated with a tragic cry. Its stats couldn't resist the golden flying ant's strength. It was not as powerful as when it faced the ghost king. Even its fur revealed a wound. However, this was already considered very strong. Ordinary legendary creatures would have been killed instantly. With a banana fan in hand, Zhou Wen fanned at the golden flying ant and instantly sent it flying backward. Taking this opportunity, Zhou Wen used the Dragon Gate Fairy skill and charged towards the white cocoon. 
it was still difficult for him to kill the golden flying ant alone, so he decided to first see what was inside the cocoon. The golden flying ant's speed was extremely fast as it instantly charged back. A golden beam shot out of its eyes, trying to kill Zhou Wen on the spot. Zhou Wen stepped on the nest's wall and suddenly vanished, leaving the golden flying ant stunned. By the time Zhou Wen appeared again, he was already in front of the white cocoon. His palm struck the white cocoon in a bid to blast it apart. However, the strike that was powered by golden palm made Zhou Wen feel as though his palm had struck a spring. After the cocoon slightly caved in, it immediately bounced up, sending Zhou Wen flying. The golden flying ant flashed over to him, and the blood-colored avatar that was sent flying back was instantly killed by the golden beam. The game screen turned black. My full strength strike failed to deal any damage to the white cocoon. Zhou Wen was slightly surprised as his curiosity towards the white cocoon increased. Unfortunately, there's no way to bring the bamboo blade in game. Otherwise, it would be much easier to use bamboo blade in game to split open the cocoon. Zhou Wen wanted to try it again, but the antelope was displeased. It ran over and bid Zhou Wen's clothes as it pulled him out. All right, I got it. Zhou Wen helplessly put away his cell phone and took the antelope out to eat. During the period Zhou Wen wasn't around, he had requested Wang Lu to take care of the antelope. Zhou Wen had originally planned on getting Wang Lu to give it some fresh vegetables. However, who knew that after Zhou Wen returned, this fellow insisted on heading to the school's cafeteria to eat steak every day. You are an antelope. You eat grass all right? Zhou Wen cursed inwardly as he felt a little depressed. He could have just fed it some vegetables without spending much money like in the beginning. But after Wang Lu's feeding for a few days, the fellow insisted on eating steak daily. If it wasn't for Zhou Wen's robbery of many companion eggs on his trip and his plans on selling them for a good price, it was unlikely that he could afford to rear it. It's true that one is marked by the company one keeps. I definitely can't let my pets have anything to do with Wang Lu in the future. Zhou Wen subconsciously touched the chick on his shoulder. After the meal, Zhou Wen planned on selling all the companion eggs he had on hand. The money he obtained could be invested in Huang Ji's game. It wasn't likely to be a problem to sell so many companion eggs for one or two million. He definitely would have some money for the investment. There was a trading market in the school, so students could purchase or sell the companion eggs they obtained there. Zhou Wen scanned the companion eggs he had obtained with his mysterious phone, and after seeing their types and attributes, he labeled them. Each companion egg was labeled with its species and price and nothing else. Zhou Wen began setting up a stall for the first time. When he arrived at the market, the place was bleak. There was almost no one there, other than two people. As most of the students were at the mortal stage, they were unable to use legendary companion eggs. Furthermore, mortal companion eggs were extremely rare. Therefore, typical students would never come here. Those who came were basically the top students of the school. Typically, students who could advance to the legendary stage by now were students with good family backgrounds. They didn't usually lack companion eggs, so they wouldn't go through the trouble of selling the companion eggs they obtained. Therefore, Zhou Wen looked at the empty market and began suspecting if his companion eggs could be sold. Isn't this Zhou Wen? Are you here to buy a companion egg? Come and see my companion eggs. They are all excellent grade. After the only two stall owners in the market saw Zhou Wen, one of them, a senior named Li Yu, immediately had his eyes light up as though he was a wolf seeing its prey. He nearly pounced at him. The other person, who had set up a stall was actually Huang Ji. Senior, why are you setting up a stall here? Zhou Wen asked Huang Ji. My lack of money. What else can it be? Huang Ji said embarrassedly. By the way, senior, didn't you say you were going to the Holy Land? Why didn't I see you? Zhou Wen recalled how Huang Ji had mentioned that he was going to the Holy Land, but when Zhou Wen was there, he didn't manage to see Huang Ji, despite especially looking out for him. You didn't see me, but I saw you. You were impressive. Huang Ji gave a thumbs up. I was compelled. Did you obtain anything from your trip to the Holy Land? Zhou Wen asked again. I did gain something. I obtained a god power crystal, but that item can't be exchanged for money, so I'm still short of cash. Wang Ji said as he sized up Zhou Wen and said with a smile. You seem to have obtained quite a number of companion eggs in the Holy Land. You should be able to sell them for quite a bit, right? Do you plan on investing in my game? Once I sell them for money, I'll immediately invest in your game. Zhou Wen said with certainty. However, he was somewhat puzzled. Wang Ji had actually said that he had obtained a god power crystal and knew that Zhou Wen had robbed many companion eggs. That meant that he had likely gone to the Holy Land, but Zhou Wen was puzzled why he hadn't seen him. Then what are you waiting for? Hurry up and set up the stall. Wang Ji's eyes lit up. Zhou Wen set up the stall beside Huang Ji, but other than the three of them sitting in a row, there was no one to be seen. The trio looked at each other without saying a word. 
Having nothing to do, Li was given a fright when he saw the four companion eggs Zhou Wen had placed out for sale. Zhou Wen, isn't your label fake? Isn't a companion beast like the broken winged angel something only found in the West District? Also, this Cyclops behemoth is unique to the West District, isn't it? This ice frost bear is something from the North District, right? We don't typically get to see any of this over here. Chapter 236 Selling on Behalf Chapter 236 Selling on Behalf The companion eggs Zhou Wen had snatched were legendary companion eggs, which were specially prepared for sale by the various major merchants. Most of them were unique to certain regions and were very few in number. They were considered rather rare types that were scattered all across the globe. Even if one went to a large companion egg store in Holy City, it would be very difficult to see so many different types from so many different regions. You'll know if it's true if you buy one, Zhou Wen said. That's fine, but isn't your price too high? Li Yu glanced at Zhou Wen's bid. The broken winged angel was worth 188,000. Typical legendary companion eggs could be bought at 10 to 20,000. The rare ones went for about 70, 80,000. Only excellent grade eggs could exceed 100,000. I referenced the price on the internet. It's non-negotiable, Zhou Wen said. He had checked the prices on the internet, but due to the frequent appearance of dimensional zones across the world, traffic was greatly obstructed. The supply chain had become slow and unsafe, and there were often severe losses of goods. Therefore, the scale of internet transactions was gradually shrinking. If he couldn't sell it in the college, Zhou Wen could only try his luck at Luoyang's market. If he still couldn't get a buyer, he could only sell it to merchants. If that happened, the price would be very low. Li Yu smacked his lips. Zhou Wen, I don't have the money to buy such things. However, if you try here, I'm afraid you won't be able to sell it either. Why don't we do it this way? Why don't you hand over your companion eggs to me for selling? I'll take a 10% commission for my hard work. Why will you be able to sell it if I can't sell it here? Zhou Wen looked at Li Yu with interest. Li Yu handed a business card to Zhou Wen. To be honest, I've already been accepted by the Royal Pet Store. Although I haven't graduated yet, I'm already an official employee there. As you can see, there's no one here. I'm only setting up a stall here due to the company's requirements. If your companion eggs are real, I can help you sell them through the company's channels. The prices will definitely be high, on the premise that these companion eggs are definitely real. Unfortunately, most people didn't know of the battle in the Holy Land, nor did they know what Zhou Wen had done in Holy City. Otherwise, Li Yu wouldn't have suspected the authenticity of these companion eggs. There's no need. I'll just sell them by myself. After all, I have nothing to do. Zhou Wen knew that Li Yu was planning on doing a lossless business. The risk was all Zhou Wen's, but the profits had to be shared with Li Yu. Furthermore, Zhou Wen didn't know how much Li Yu would sell them for. However, Zhou Wen knew that the fellow wasn't reliable based on the name of the Royal Pet Store. Together with three other pet stores, it was known as one of the top four scammers in the league. They were well known to purchase at low prices and sell at high prices, and they liked to play cheap tricks. Zhou Wen wasn't too busy himself. He could game while running a stall, so there was no rush. Let's do this. Since it's not easy to sell these companion eggs, why don't you sell them to me as a package deal? As long as you can guarantee their authenticity, I'll give you 80,000 each. Four of them makes it 320,000. Let's round it off to 300,000. How about that? Li Yu added. Non-negotiable. Zhou Wen said as he gained. This ice frost bear is clearly too expensive. An ordinary ice frost bear companion egg is only 70, 80,000. Why are you pricing it at nearly 200,000? Li Yu pointed at the frost bear companion egg. It's worth every penny. Zhou Wen's ice frost bear was indeed priced very high, but that was because he had seen its stats and knew that it was worth the price. If you do business like this, you won't even be able to sell it in the Luoyang market, much less here. Li Yu had never seen Zhou Wen's sales tactics before. He decided to wait and see. He believed he could buy Zhou Wen's companion eggs at low prices after Zhou Wen realized the cruel reality of the world. There were very few people in the market. Occasionally, students would come for Li Yu. From the looks of it, his identity as a royal pet store employee wasn't fake. Occasionally, the student council would entrust him to sell the companion eggs they obtained from the dimensional zone. Although he didn't offer a high price, the benefit was that money could be directly received without going through the trouble of selling it themselves. However, the ones that were sold to Li Yu were mostly common companion eggs that were nothing spectacular. How about it? Did you see that? The students acknowledge me. The price is fair and honest. The price I gave you isn't low. Li Yu took another companion egg and flaunted it at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen ignored him as he continued gaming. By the side, Huang Ji was also doing something on his laptop. His fingers were rapidly tapping on the keyboard, having no time to chat with Zhou Wen. 
Seeing that Zhou Wen was ignoring him, Li Yu couldn't help but mumble. That's not the way to do business. You definitely won't make any sales. As he spoke, another person walked over. When Li Yu saw that person, his eyes lit up. Gu Dian, you got another companion egg? Li Yu hurriedly went forward to welcome him warmly. When Zhou Wen heard Gu Dian's name, he looked up and indeed saw the devilish looking man walk in. How much can these companion eggs be exchanged for? Gu Dian threw a bag in front of Li Yu. Li Yu hurriedly opened the bag and was overjoyed when he saw more than 10 companion eggs inside. As he appraised them, he said in delight, This should be a golden warrior companion egg. Others will pay at most 5,000 to buy them out. On account of us being old friends, I'll give you 5,500 for it. Zhou Wen looked at the companion eggs with his cell phone and couldn't help but be astonished. Li Yu was indeed quite capable. His appraisal of the companion egg species was right on the money. However, the price he offered was nothing but a scam. It was basically less than a third of the market price. A golden warrior companion egg might only be an ordinary legendary, but it was an excellent pet for tanking. They were sold for rather high prices on the market. However, the price Li Yu offered was much lower than that of a typical legendary companion egg. He was truly unscrupulous. Gu Dian, are you selling these companion eggs? Zhou Wen asked Gu Dian. Gu Dian was ultimately a member of the Xianwen Club despite only being recruited to make up the numbers. Zhou Wen didn't wish for him to be cheated right under his nose. A person like Gu Dian spent all day in the dimensional zones without even having a friend. He definitely wouldn't know the market prices, so Zhou Wen reckoned that he had been scammed by Li Yu in the past. Yes, replied Gu Dian. Since I'm also selling companion eggs, I'll sell it for you if you trust me, Zhou Wen said. All right. Gu Dian grabbed his bag and placed it in front of Zhou Wen before turning to leave without a word. Li Yu was somewhat infuriated as he said to Zhou Wen with a cold expression. Zhou Wen, that's quite an asterisk asterisk whole thing to do. Don't you know the rules of doing business? I don't know much about business, but Gu Dian is a member of our club. I'm not breaking the rules by helping him sell them, right? Zhou Wen said. All right, let me watch you sell them here. Li Yu was in no hurry. He had to sell the companion eggs through the Royal Pet Store's channels. It was practically impossible to sell them here. Chapter 237 Rich Zhou Wen ignored Li Yu and wrote the name and price on Gu Dian's companion eggs before sitting behind his stall to continue gaming. Li Yu glanced at Zhou Wen's prices. One of the eggs was extremely expensive. How dare you price a gatekeeper lion companion egg at 100,000? It's ridiculously high even for a retail price. It will be a miracle if you can sell it, thought Li Yu. Just as he was thinking about it, another person came to the market. This time, it was a young student who looked extremely handsome, like a movie star. When Li Yu saw this person, his eyes lit up as he went forward again. Brother Luo Xian, are you here to buy companion eggs? I recently obtained quite a number of good items. Luo Xian went over to Li Yu's stall to take a look at the companion eggs, but when he saw Zhou in stall, he couldn't help but take a look. He was immediately interested. I'll take all four of them, Luo Xian said as he pointed at the four companion eggs Zhou when had placed for sale. Brother Luo, don't just look at the name. How high are the chances of us obtaining a companion egg like the Broken Winged Angel or the Ice Frost Bear? Although Li Yu didn't say that Zhou Wen's companion eggs were fake, it was obvious from his tone. Luo Xian smiled and said, A person like Zhou Wen wouldn't lie on such matters. Even if they're not fake, aren't they too expensive? If you really want them, I'll get the company to transfer some over for you in a few days. The Ice Frost Bear is at most 100,000. Zhou Wen had ruined his business plans. So Li Yu didn't want Zhou Wen to have an easy life. Luo Xian smiled at Zhou Wen and said, Zhou Wen, can your companion eggs be cheaper? No, they're worth every penny. You can buy them for 100,000 elsewhere, but that's the price for mine, Zhou Wen said without looking up. Brother Luo, look at his attitude. He's clearly trying to scam you, Li Yu said. Luo Xian thought nothing of it as he directly transferred the money to Zhou Wen. All right, I'll take all four of them. Help me wrap them up. Sorry, I forgot to bring any bags. You'll have to hold them yourself. After receiving the payment, Zhou Wen realized that he didn't even have a plastic bag. Li Yu's face turned livid as he watched from the side. He thought to himself, Luo Xian sure is silly and rich. He's buying those things just like that? This is really letting Zhou Wen luck out. Luo Xian didn't mind. He opened his backpack and stuffed the four companion eggs inside. Then, he looked at the companion eggs placed on Zhou Wen's counter and asked in surprise. Why is this gatekeeper lion companion egg so expensive? The market price should be around 20,000, right? This is a mutated gatekeeper lion egg. It's no ordinary gatekeeper lion, Zhou Wen said. Mutated gatekeeper lion? 
Li Yu was slightly taken aback as he carefully looked at the companion egg, but he failed to notice anything amiss. It was identical to an ordinary gatekeeper lion egg. He couldn't help but sneer inwardly. It's true that Zhou Wen is very talented, and I admit that I'm inferior to you, but when it comes to the appraisal of companion eggs, it's my specialty. What I studied for three years wasn't for nothing. Even I can't tell the difference, but you can? What a joke. This is the first time I've heard of a mutated gatekeeper lion. What difference does it have from ordinary ones? Luo Xian's interest was piqued. Zhou Wen said, Mutated gatekeeper lions are quite rare. It's normal that you haven't heard of them. They have higher stats than the typical gatekeeper lion, and they have an additional lion roar as a skill. It's a relatively rare sonar wave attack. Just having this technique alone makes it worth more than 100,000. I never knew that. I'll buy it. Luo Xian said extravagantly as he waved his hand, wanting to transfer the money. Brother Luo, I've heard of mutated gatekeeper lions, but they are very rarely produced. None of us have seen them before. However, I've heard that not every mutated gatekeeper lion has lion roar, so it's still probabilistic. Without the ability of a lion roar, there's almost no difference between a mutated gatekeeper lion and a normal one. No one knows if it's really mutated. Li Yu was speaking the truth, but he was also suspecting that Zhou Wen was selling an ordinary gatekeeper lion as a mutated gatekeeper lion. Luo Xian looked at Zhou Wen who said indifferently, I can only guarantee that this is a mutated gatekeeper lion egg. I can't guarantee anything else. When Li Yu heard Zhou Wen say that, he immediately beamed with joy. Only a fool would buy something like that with you saying that. I'll buy it. However, Luo Xian waved his hand, causing Li Yu to be dumbfounded. His mouth was agape for a long time. He knew that Luo Xian was rich, but he never expected him to be so rich. He was secretly depressed. If I had known that Luo Xian was such a fool, I would have asked for higher prices in the past. Seeing that Luo Xian no longer had any interest in the other companion eggs on Zhou Wen's counter, Li Yu hurriedly took out the few valuable companion eggs he had. Although they couldn't compare to Zhou Wen's ice frost bear and the rest, they were rare ones produced at the college. Brother Luo, this is a rare white wing red tail crane. Its skill is extremely rare, and it is very rarely produced. I was lucky to acquire one. I spent 98,000 on it. For you, I'll charge you 110,000. After witnessing Luo Xian's wealth, Li Yu automatically increased the price to a whole new level. Yes, not bad. Luo Xian nodded slightly. It's good that you like it, brother. Do you want to pay by card or bank transfer? Li Yu was secretly delighted. I only brought so much money today. It's all spent. Perhaps next time, said Luo Xian with a smile. Li Yu was somewhat dumbfounded. He felt depressed. The asterisk a minute, you can just swipe your card and not use your wallet. What do you mean by not bringing that much money today? Luo Xian ignored Li Yu and took out the mutated gatekeeper lion egg. He directly injected his primordial energy and hatched it. When Li Yu saw Luo Xian doing so, he couldn't help but nod inwardly. From the looks of it, Luo Xian isn't really silly. By hatching the gatekeeper lion on the spot, he will definitely settle scores with Zhou when once he discovers that he has been fooled. Zhou Wen can't deny it even if he wants to. Li Yu folded his arms and waited for the development to play out. Gu Dian was the one who had brought the gatekeeper lion egg here. Even Gu Dian himself didn't mention anything about a mutated gatekeeper lion, and Li Yu couldn't tell. Therefore, he refused to believe that Zhou Wen would be able to recognize a mutated gatekeeper lion. He believed that Zhou Wen was likely deliberately scamming Luo Xian in a bid to earn more. Soon, Luo Xian hatched the gatekeeper lion. A majestic stone lion appeared in front of him. Li Yu took a look and saw that it looked identical to an ordinary gatekeeper lion. It looked nothing like a mutated gatekeeper lion. Just as he was waiting to see Luo Xian and Zhou Wen fall out, he suddenly heard Luo Xian say, It's indeed a mutated gatekeeper lion. Apart from its speed, all its attributes are no less than 17. Lion Roar is indeed excellent. Zhou Wen, if you have such good stuff in the future, contact me directly. Li Yu felt as if he was dreaming as he watched with his mouth agape as Luo Xian and Zhou Wen added each other as friends. Chapter 238 Ever Victorious To be honest, my family owns a pet store, but it naturally can't compare to a chain store like Royal Pet Store that covers the entire league. Our store is a small shop in Luoyang. In the future, if a companion egg is sold or if you want to buy a companion egg, you can look for me directly. Luo Xian sent Zhou Wen a message. I still have some rare legendary companion eggs that are about the same as those four rare ones. What kind of prices would you pay for them? Zhou Wen replied to Luo Xian. The two exchanged a few words with information, and after confirming the price, Zhou Wen immediately packed up and prepared to leave. The price Luo Xian offered was rather fair, and was close to the true value. Therefore, 
Zhou Wen didn't wish to waste time here. He planned on selling Gu Dian's and his companion eggs to Luo Xian. Zhou Wen. Just as Zhou Wen was about to pack up and leave, Li Yu called out to him. He turned to look at Li Yu. Li Yu hesitated for a moment before saying, How could you tell that it was a mutated gatekeeper lion? Is that very difficult? Zhou Wen asked in return before bidding farewell to Huang Ji. He carried the bag half filled with companion eggs and left the market. Li Yu was stunned for a while before he came back to his senses. He couldn't help but smile bitterly and say, If that isn't considered difficult, then what's the point of me studying for three years? Zhou Wen arrived at the spot he had agreed on with Luo Xian and gave Gu Dian and his companion eggs to him. And without any bargaining, Luo Xian transferred the money to Zhou Wen at the agreed price. Ignoring Gu Dian's portion, Zhou Wen had obtained more than two million. This was the first time he had received so much money. He felt like a nouveau riche. Are you interested in becoming an appraiser at my pet store after graduation? I can give you some shares, said Luo Xian. I'm not interested in the appraising business. Zhou Wen thought for a moment before asking. Do you have any legendary weapon type companion beasts? The ones with extremely powerful destructive power, it's best if their destructive power can reach the epic stage. If someone were to ask that, I would definitely say no. In fact, I would even look down on him. However, since that's what you asked, I'll tell you that they exist, but they are very expensive, said Luo Xian. How expensive? Zhou Wen was in desperate need of a weapon that could break through the white cocoon. The power of the banana fan was the wind. If it evolved to its limits, it could blow an entire mountain away. However, its power was not concentrated enough and its destructive power wasn't potent enough. This was incomparable to a single target skill. If one wanted to destroy something, heavy weapons were more practical. At the very least, they needed to be weapons like swords and sabers. Luo Xian muttered to himself, I wonder if you have heard of a companion beast like Overlord Snake. It's a very rare companion beast, and it has immense strength. It can be considered a top strength type companion beast at the legendary stage. Its companion form is a spear, and we give it a nickname Overlord Spear. After pausing for a moment, Luo Xian continued, The Overlord Spear is considered top notch among legendary weapons. However, if it's compared to an epic stage weapon, it's definitely far inferior. However, there are always exceptions. Just like the best offensive pet, Thunder God General, if it possesses the ability of Thunder God Augmentation, the lightning power it produces will be able to stand head and shoulders above its peers. It's the same with Overlord Snake. The typical Overlord Snake isn't strong, but if you have a mutated Overlord Snake, there is a possibility of it having the talent skill, ever victorious. With this skill, Overlord Spear will be able to penetrate most objects. Even the typical epic creature can't withstand its sharpness. It's a pity that mutated Overlord Snakes are very rare, and the mutated Overlord Snakes with ever victorious are even rarer. Our family had hired people to grind in the snake cavern for six months before we obtained an overlord snake with ever victorious. And that's under the circumstances of having excellent luck. Now, that mutated overlord snake is one of our store's crown jewels. It's not for sale, but if you want it, I can make the decision to sell it to you. But I must warn you, it's very expensive. How much is it? Zhou Wen asked. 10 million. Luo Xian named the price. It's indeed very expensive. I can't afford it. Zhou Wen shook his head. There's nothing we can do about it. An overlord snake's level isn't considered high, but it's very rare for it to have ever victorious. Furthermore, we got someone to specially incubate it. If you want it, the person needs to sacrifice his own cultivation level and damage his body to transfer overlord snake. That will require a huge sum of money as well, said Luo Xian. Zhou Wen nodded. Everyone wanted the good stuff. Although their levels were about the same, the high price was understandable. Zhou Wen couldn't afford Overlord Snake, but Luo Xian's words reminded him that even though he couldn't afford it, he could try to grind one at Snake Cavern. Snake Cavern was near Old Dragon Cave. Zhou Wen had heard Zhong Zia mention it before, but he hadn't paid much attention to it back then. Besides, Zhong Zia didn't know that mutated Overlord Snake had the ever victorious skill. After separating from Luo Xian, Zhou Wen transferred Gu Dian's money to him. Zhou Wen had already added him as a friend when he entered the Xianlin Club. After Gu Dian received the money, he only replied with two words. Got it. Zhou Wen contacted Huang Ji again and confirmed some matters regarding the game. In the end, he confirmed his investment of 1.5 million. This investment was split into two tranches. The initial investment was 500,000. After Huang Ji completed a demo, he would fund him with the remaining 1 million investment. After returning to his dorm, Zhou Wen took out his mysterious phone and went to Snake Cavern. There were python-like snakes everywhere. Legendary overlord snakes had peerless strength 
and were considered top-notch legendary creatures. Furthermore, they lived in groups with numerous numbers. Typical legendary students wouldn't dare enter Snake Cavern. Zhou Wen naturally didn't have any qualms. He summoned his group of companion beasts and wreaked havoc in Snake Cavern. Soon, Zhou Wen understood why overlord snakes were so expensive. He had killed nearly a hundred of them, but not a single overlord snake egg dropped, much less a mutated one. In the next few days, other than studying at Wang Ming Yuan's place, Zhou Wen spent the rest of his time grinding the overlord snakes. However, he had nothing to show for. Over the past few days, he had only obtained an ordinary overlord snake egg. He managed to encounter a mutated overlord snake, but nothing dropped. It's no wonder Luo Xian said that they were extremely lucky to have a mutated overlord snake egg drop after six months. Zhou Wen thought of the matter of luck and thought of Wang Lu. With Wang Lu's luck, if she were to be taken to the snake cavern, she might be able to have a mutated overlord snake egg drop. However, Zhou Wen had no intention of seeking help, so all he could do was continue grinding. After repeatedly grinding, Zhou Wen nearly vomited when he saw the snake. Ding! Zhou Wen killed another mutated overlord snake. Suddenly, he heard a crisp sound as a black snake egg dropped and landed on the ground. Mutated overlord snake egg. Zhou Wen was delighted as he hurriedly got the blood-colored avatar to pick it up. Then, he prayed inwardly, Please let it have the ever-victorious skill. If I keep grinding, I'll go hysterical. Chapter 239 Sky Spider Chapter 239 Sky Spider Mutated Overlord Snake Legendary Life Providence Born Overlord Strength 19 Speed 16 Constitution 18 Primordial Energy 15 Talent Skill Death Coil Companion Form Spear It doesn't have ever victorious. Zhou Wen was very disappointed. Although the Mutated Overlord Snake stats were not bad, it was useless without the ever-victorious skill. After putting away the mutated overlord snake, Zhou Wen had no choice but to continue grinding at Snake Cavern. He had to get the mutated overlord snake with ever-victorious to drop no matter what. Boom! As Zhou Wen was grinding the overlord snake, he suddenly felt his house shake violently as though an earthquake was happening. Zhou Wen hurriedly exited the game and rushed out of the building to see what was happening. By the time he rushed out, and Jing and Wan Lu were already standing in the yard. Furthermore, the two of them were looking up into the sky as though they were looking at something. Wasn't it an earthquake? Why are they looking up at the sky? Zhou Wen also looked up at the sky and was alarmed by what he saw. Up above, there were crystalline silk crisscrossed like a huge net that covered the entire sky. Perhaps not just Sunset College, but all of Luoyang. And on the net, there was a spider with eight eyes that resembled jade. It kept spewing out spider webs. A breakout creature? Zhou Wen was alarmed. The spider was so huge that the web it spewed out nearly covered the whole of Luoyang. Just its aura alone meant that its level was definitely not low. At this moment, an attack aircraft appeared in the sky and launched an assault on the spider and spider web. However, the web moved and wrapped around the attack aircraft. The attack aircraft immediately stuck to the web and exploded very quickly. The flames created by the explosion failed to destroy the spider's web. The bullets and shells fired by the plane were also stuck to the spider web, making them seem completely useless. The spider in the sky let out a silent roar, but Truth Listener's ability allowed Zhou Wen to hear the strange shriek. Then, many ventilation holes in the spider's abdomen opened up. When they opened and closed, white spheres were spat out which landed in various locations. Two of them landed in the direction of Sunset College. Zhou Wen focused his gaze, and only when the sphere was closed did he realize that it wasn't a sphere. Instead, there were countless white spiders entangled together, making them look like a sphere. Just as they were about to land on the ground, the sphere exploded, causing a sea of spiders to land everywhere in Sunset College. Instantly, the entire school was filled with spiders. All teachers and students, may I have your attention? Please eradicate the invading spiders. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. The school's announcement system urgently sounded. Epic stage counselors had already streaked across the air, killing many spiders that had yet to land. However, there were too many spiders and there were still many that landed throughout the school. Quite a number of spiders had fallen into Four Seasons Garden. There was one not far from Zhou when in company. The spider was snow white in color, and its hair was white. Its claws looked like translucent jade, and it was bigger than a human, but it didn't look terrifying. Instead, it looked like a furry toy. And Jing and Wang Lu were still sizing up the spider out of curiosity, when Zhou Wen summoned the overlord snake and thrust forward with penetrating pierce. After the battle in the Yin Yang world, Zhou, one was instinctively wary of dimensional creatures. Regardless of their looks, he had to first ensure that he wasn't being threatened. 
Zhou Wen's penetrating pierce only managed to cover half the distance when the spider spat out a strand of web that wrapped around the overlord's spear. Then, with a flick of its head, Zhou Wen felt a powerful force surge towards him, making him feel like he couldn't hold the spear. He hurriedly tightened his grip on his spear as the man and spider were locked in a stalemate. Zhou Wen was momentarily unable to pull the spider over. Into. And Jing quietly summoned a long sword that dazzled with divine light. She then slashed at the spider. The spider spat out another strand of silk. When the sharp sword beam touched the silk, it ended up stuck as well. It left the three of them shocked. To have a power that allowed a spider web silk to cling to a sword beam was somewhat terrifying. The crux of the matter was that Zhou Wen and company didn't know if the spider was a dimensional creature or a puppet summoned by the spider in the sky. They felt a headache coming on. The spider's mouth kept spewing webs, trying to immobilize the trio. Soon, the webs covered a large area. Wang Lu summoned a whip, but just as she lashed it out, it was stuck in the spider's web. She couldn't pull it back no matter how hard she tried. In the sky, an epic expert had already flown over on a flying bird. He slashed a stunning sword beam at the spider, but despite having the power to slice through a mountain, it ended up stuck to the spider's web the moment it made contact with it. It was unable to move forward, and vanished without a trace moments later. After the spider silk bound the flying bird, it strangled the bird into two like blade like steel silk. There were already five epic experts from the military, but despite using all sorts of abilities, they were unable to do anything to the huge spider in the sky. From time to time, it would spit out spider spheres that scattered across the city, causing the entire city to fall into a panic. Wang Lu and Jing were also attempting to fight the spider but to no avail. Their attacks were blocked by spider webs, making it impossible to pose a threat to the spider. Zhou Wen snapped a picture of the spider with his phone, hoping to see if he could obtain its information so as to find a way to kill it. However, the information he obtained left him somewhat disappointed. The information only mentioned that it was a sky spider puppet, so it didn't look like a dimensional creature, but a puppet formed from the spider's powers. Zhou Wen summoned the banana fan and fanned a grand in wind at the spider. The cold wind tore through the spider web and swept it over the spider's body. Instantly, the spider flew up and slammed into a tiny building in front, causing the walls to crack. An icy glint flashed in Jing's eyes, as she grabbed the opportunity to pierce the spider's body with her sword beam. Boom! The spider's body exploded, and it immediately perished. Zhou Wen, your fan is very useful. Let's quickly finish off the other spiders to prevent the other students from being harmed. Wang Lu said to Zhou Wen, overjoyed. However, Zhou Wen wasn't as optimistic as Wang Lu. The number of spiders that came raining down was just too many. It was already difficult for them to deal with them, so how would ordinary citizens cope? It was likely that Luoyang City was already facing an apocalyptic scene. Before the trio could rush out of Four Seasons Garden, they saw other special admissions students battling the spiders. They weren't much different from Zhou Wen and company. The attacks were of little use against the spider puppets, so it was extremely difficult to fight them. Chapter 240 Chaos of the Sky Spider Chapter 240 Chaos of the Sky Spider None of the special admissions students of Sunset College were weak. Although they were unable to kill the spider, they still used various methods and abilities to deal with the spider. They were not in danger at all. However, with the increasing number of spider webs surrounding them, the amount of space they and their companion beasts could move in became restricted. The battle became somewhat difficult. Four or five spiders spewed out spider silk in Four Seasons Garden. Bright, crystalline spider webs could be seen everywhere. A companion beast had already been stuck to one, preventing it from struggling. Having already discovered the spider's weakness from her previous battle, and Jean stabbed forward like a bolt of lightning, instantly pinning a spider to the ground. This was the first time Zhou when had seen and Jean fight seriously. Her swordplay was extremely intense, and each strike carried a dazzling glow, as though the void had been penetrated as well. Zhou would immediately recognize the primordial energy art that Jing used. It was no doubt the sun strafe art. Her sword techniques were somewhat extraordinary, and although they looked simple, each strike made them look extremely gorgeous. The sword flashes were like dazzling divine beams. She was so powerful that she looked as good as Lance. It was just that she and Lance used two completely different styles. Lance's technique was unparalleled, but in Jing's every strike was like a bolt of lightning. If she could kill her opponent with one strike, she definitely wouldn't require a second attack. I deserved losing back then. With in Jing's strength, Zhou Wen was indeed no match for her back then. Seeing that in Jing could deal with the spiders in Four Seasons Garden, Zhou Wen immediately rushed out and saw that there were indeed spiders spewing out spider silk outside. A student was stuck to the spider web as the spider crawled towards him. Zhou Wen raised his left hand and chopped down with astral slash blade. The blade aura transformed into thin threads that sliced through the spider web. 
The remnant forces continued on and sliced the spider into two. The schoolmate was still in shock. Before he could thank him, Joe had already rushed elsewhere. There were many experts on campus. Besides the epic counselors, there were also quite a number of students who could kill the spiders. The spiders in the school were quickly subdued. All students, may I have your attention? All students who have the ability to kill spiders, please enter the city immediately to aid the military. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. All students who participate in the hunting of spiders will be rewarded with credits. The broadcast rang again. In fact, Joe had already run to the school's entrance and ridden a mutated lotus flower and out of the school. The situation in the city was indeed much worse than the school. From afar, Joe could see the intertwined spiderwebs in the middle of buildings. The city looked like a spider forest with webs everywhere. Many citizens had already been stuck to the spiderwebs. Quite a number of people had already been killed. The military were firing with their assault rifles in all directions. However, the effects looked limited. It was only possible for them to kill a spider after several consecutive shots hit the target. Moreover, the spiders moved very agilely, and they were protected by the webs. When a bullet hit the web, it was stuck and had its effects limited. A mother carrying a child was bound by a spider web and was left hanging in the air, suspended in the middle of the building. They were just seconds from having the spider pounce at them. The eyes of the soldiers below were bloodshot, but they didn't dare fire. It was too close to the mother and son. If they shot, they might accidentally hit the innocent. Just as the spider was about to bite the mother and son, a figure flashed across the sky. The spider web and the spider were split into two. The duo who fell were grabbed by the figure before landing safely on the ground. The soldiers came over to rescue the mother and son, leading them to seek refuge. A soldier asked Joe Wen, Are you a student at Sunset College? Yes. Joe Wen nodded slightly. Please provide assistance to the Duke of Joe Temple. That area has become a spider disaster zone and is spreading outwards. The soldier said to Joe Wen. All right. Joe Wen replied before riding the mutated lotus flower ant towards the Duke of Joe Temple. The person that worshipped a Duke of Zhou Temple was Ji Dan. He was King Wu of Zhou's younger brother, had been regent twice, and helped King Wu of Zhou in clinching victory at the Battle of Mai. He was also involved in the establishment of rites, and the creation of music, earning him a consecration from future descendants. Zhou Wen stormed through and killed several spiders on the way, and rescued some citizens. However, along the way, many citizens had already turned into corpses. They looked as if they had been sucked dry as they hung on a spider web attached to skyscrapers. Just one breakout creature can cause such a disaster. If the various dimensional zones are unable to trap those dimensional creatures, what will the world become? Zhou Wen felt that his strength was minute. The battle in the sky continued as a few epic stage experts rushed over. In the sky, they were fighting the sky spider, but the situation didn't look good. No one could pose a threat to the sky spiders. Instead, their companion beasts were stuck to the spider webs. No matter how much they struggled, they were unable to escape. Zhou Wen, are you going to the Duke of Zhou Temple as well? Zhong Zia charged over from another direction and happened to meet Zhou Wen. The thin sword in his hand was unbelievably fast. Wherever the sword passed, the spiders would have their foreheads instantly penetrated by a sword beam, leaving only a wound that resembled a needle hole, accentuating their deaths. There was a soldier who said that it needs reinforcements. Zhou Wen said as he tore open the spider webs. Me too. Let's go together. Zhong Zia rushed over with his sword in hand. Zhou Wen followed. Soon, he met a few other students who had been invited by the military to reinforce the Duke of Zhou Temple. The military's epic powerhouses were rushing into the sky to fight the Sky Spider. If they didn't get rid of the Sky Spider as quickly as possible, the spiders that it spat out would be endless. All they could do was leave the spiders below to ordinary soldiers and some legendary military officers. Zhou Wen and the other students from Sunset College would become officers if they chose to join the army after graduation. There was no need for them to start off as enlistees. Usually, when the students were together, it was difficult to tell who was truly strong, but when it came to real battles, everything became obvious. Zhou Wen had never seen some of the powerful students in the school rankings before. A person like Zhong Zia was definitely not weaker than Wei Gu, the president of the student council. He could even be stronger, however, he didn't have a ranking. The pair of siblings from the Wu family were terrifying as well. Zhou Wen couldn't help but marvel at how many hidden dragons and crouching tigers there were at Sunset College. Just as they were about to arrive at Duke of Zhou Temple, Zhou Wen saw Hui Haifeng leading a group of people in a battle with the spiders. The surrounding soldiers were also watching the front lines as they fired crazily. They had yet to see the Duke of Zhou Temple, but the number of spiders ahead of them was uncountable. It was unknown how many of them were crawling out. 
This city has become a spider's nest, Zhong Zia said. Cut the crap. Hurry up and provide reinforcements. We can't hold out any longer, Hui Haifeng shouted. Zhou Wen, Zhong Zia, and the rest of the students rushed forward and blocked the swarm of spiders. It was a chaotic scene where they killed countless spiders. Yet, the number of spiders that charged out from the Duke of Zhou Temple remained constant. Chapter 241 Entering the Temple Zhou Wen rushed in front of a military officer and asked, How long have you been here? How many spider balls have landed here? We've been here for nearly an hour. We saw a total of three spider balls landing near the Duke of Zhou Temple. The officer answered, The three spider balls can't have that many spiders. Have you sent someone to charge in to take a look? Zhou Wen asked again. As the officer fired, he shouted, We also suspect that there's something wrong inside, but there are too many spiders. We can't charge in. We've tried, but suffered heavy casualties. There's no point in this endless killing. Zhou Wen and Zia, charge in with me to take a look. Wei Haifeng said, as he charged towards the group of spiders with his shield. His charge was extremely ferocious, but he was quickly stuck by a spider web and could no longer break through. Zhou Wen and Zhong Zia charged over and sliced the spider web in front of them with their saber and sword. There were a few students standing behind them. They huddled into a group as they charged in, fighting ceaselessly against the tidal wave of spiders. A few drops of blood landed on Zhou Wen's face. They were from Hui Haifeng. A strand of spider silk had swept across his face leaving a bloody mark. The temple was in front of them, but they couldn't see the main body of the temple at all. It was completely covered by the spiderwebs, as if it was covered in snow. Zhou Wen and company could see large numbers of spiders crawling out of the spiderwebs without stopping. There must be something wrong with the temple. Otherwise, how can there be so many spiders crawling out from such a tiny place? Zhong Zia said. The webs have sealed off the area. If we head in, just making contact with a few spiderwebs will trap us. When that happens... We won't even have a chance to hide. A student said. Let us rush in and take a look. Help us watch our backs. Two military officers rushed into the temple. Zhou Wen and company tried their best to block the surrounding spiders as the two officers entered one after another. Not long after they entered, they heard a scream as another officer flew out. What happened? Zhou Wen caught the officer and asked anxiously. There are too many webs in there. There's no room for movement at all. You'll get stuck with any slight movement. The third platoon commander. The officer's eyes were red, and he couldn't continue speaking. He got up and wanted to rush towards the temple again. Don't go, it's useless even if you go. The spider webs are like a lair. Anyone who goes in will die unless it's an epic expert who forcefully tears through those webs. Zhong Zia held the officer down and prevented him from entering. If we don't resolve the problem here, the spiders will rush out like a tidal wave. There's no way we can defend our ground. When the time comes, the entire Luoyang city will be finished. The red-eyed officer struggled out of Bong Zia's grasp as he tried to charge inside. Everyone fell silent. They naturally knew that it was impossible for such a small group of people to fend off so many spiders unless an epic expert came. But right now, the epic experts were attacking the sky spider, so how could they come here to support them? I hate these fellows who risk their lives for no good reason. It's as if everything can be resolved as long as they are willing to risk their lives. Zhong Zia pursed his lips disdainfully and continued. Please help me watch the area outside. I'll go in and take a look. As he spoke, Zhong Zia raised his sword and leaped over the officer, before entering the opening. Zia, I'll go in with you. Hui Haifeng pushed away the spider in front of him and entered the lair like temple. Stay outside for now. Before we come out, you must hold the ground no matter what. Don't let the spider swarm spread out. Zhou Wen said to the officer as he rushed into the temple. The spider web wrapped around the doors and walls like yarn. Mere contact would cause the spider silk to cling onto them like death's grip. When the time came, they wouldn't be able to break free, making dodging the spider's attack extremely difficult. They would then be like a fly caught in a spider's web. When Zhou Wen rushed in, he saw that the ground was covered in spider webs, and that if his feet were to touch the ground, he would likely be stuck to it. However, he wasn't flustered. He circulated the ancient sovereign sutra and slashed out with his primordial energy. Immediately, he tore open the spider web in front of him, and his legs landed on the ground. The moment his feet touched the spider silk, it immediately melted like snow meeting embers. It failed to stick to Zhou Wen's body. When Zhou Wen was outside, he had already tried all sorts of primordial energy arts, and discovered that the ancient sovereign sutra was highly effective against spider silk. When they encountered the ancient sovereign sutra's primordial energy, they would immediately melt. This was why he dared to barge in. He hadn't gone far before he saw Hui Haifeng's body covered with spiderwebs. He resembled a dumpling wrapped in white silk. However, 
he could still charge forward. The nearby spiders, who had crawled out failed to hurt him due to the spider silk that formed a protective net. Zhou Wen scrutinized Hui Haifeng and realized that the spider silk on him had clearly been put on by him. It wasn't connected to the spider silk outside. Although he looked terrifying, he was still able to move freely. That's a good move. How did you think of that? Zhou Wen charged over and rendezvoused with Hui Haifeng, killing all the incoming spiders. Hui Haifeng said, These spider silk threads look scary, but if you take a closer look, you'll see that there are actually two types. One is a sticky kind of spider silk, the other is a type that doesn't stick. Those spiders are also walking on the non-sticky spider silk, so I use those as a form of protection. The non-stick spider silk helps against the other kind of spider silk, so it prevents me from being stuck. With that said, Hui Haifeng sized up Zhou Wen from head to toe. Dude, how did you get in? You weren't stuck by the spider webs? My strength perfectly counters these spider silk threads. They can't stick to me. Zhou Wen asked again. Where's Zia? He rushed to the front. He's too fast, and I can't catch up with him. I reckon he should already be in the main hall of the temple by now. Hui Haifeng said. Then take your time. I'll head in and take a look as well. As Zhou Wen spoke, he used his bamboo blade to storm open a bloody path and charged into the Duke of Zhou Temple. Wait for me. Hui Haifeng rushed in with Zhou Wen. However, because he was covered in spider webs that made him look like a snowman, his actions appeared somewhat clumsy. The bamboo blade was extremely sharp, and with Zhou Wen's ancient sovereign sutra's primordial energy, it was the nemesis of the spiders. Wherever the blade passed, the spider webs and spiders were sliced apart. The two of them charged forward and killed countless spiders. An intense battle sounded in front of him as Zhou Wen hurriedly called out to Zia. He immediately heard Zhong Zia's voice. I'm here. Quick, help me. This fellow is a tough one. Chapter 242 The Team for Putting Out Fires Zhou Wen heard the sound coming from the backyard, but it was already covered in beads of silk, like a snow cave. Truth Listener's ability allowed Zhou Wen to see what was happening inside. Zhong Zia was fighting a group of spiders, and in the yard, there was something like a well. Spiders were pouring out of it, and, clearly, that was the problem. I'll be right there. As Zhou Wen spoke, he circled around to the backyard. Indeed, he saw Zhong Zia embroiled in a battle with a horde of spiders. He didn't have any spider webs on him, and his powers were clearly unable to restrain the spider silk like Zhou Wen's. However, his movement technique was extremely odd. He was like a boneless snake as he swam through the silk, preventing it from sticking to him. Zhou Wen took a closer look and realized that when Zhong Zia's body touched a strand of silk, he would land on the non-sticky spider silk. The spiders could do nothing about him. However, Zhong Zia wasn't in the best of conditions. Although normal spiders couldn't do anything to him, there was a very strange spider that left him in peril. The spider was also snow white in color, but on its back was a unique blood red pattern. The pattern looked like a human face, making it stand out among a group of snow white spiders. The blood pattern spider kept darting through the horde of spiders to avoid being attacked by Zhong Zia. Zhong Zia had been pursuing it the entire time, but there was something that left Zhou when somewhat puzzled. When the blood pattern spider burrowed into the pile of spiders, Zhong Zia would lose his target. When he saw it again, he failed to recognize it immediately. Zia, what's the situation now? Hui Haifeng noticed something amiss as well and hurriedly asked. That spider is the problem. Quickly kill it, Zhong Zia said. I see, but why does it look like you don't want to kill it? Hui Haifeng said as he rushed over. If I could recognize it, I would have killed it long ago. It's very cunning. It's always burrowing into the spider horde and mixing with other spiders. It takes me a while to determine which one it is, Zhong Zia said. It can't be. Can't you see the blood-colored patterns on its back? Hui Haifeng asked, puzzled. I'm colorblind and particularly can't identify red. Zhong Zia's answer nearly caused Zhou Wen and Hui Haifeng's jaws to drop to the ground. If it weren't for this critical moment, they would never have believed that such a strange illness existed in this world. Hui Haifeng charged forward and punched the blood pattern spider. It moved at rapid speed, allowing it to easily dodge Hui Haifeng's attack. Speed wasn't Hui Haifeng's forte to begin with, so now that he was wrapped in spider silk, he became even clumsier. He ultimately failed to catch up to the blood pattern spider, but he did kill several ordinary spiders. Without another word, Zhou Wen used Go's steps and charged forward as though he had teleported. The bamboo blade cleaved the blood pattern spider into two. Unlike the other spiders, once the blood pattern spider died, it didn't reduce to dust. It was actually a true body of flesh and blood. What's going on? Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. He thought that all the spiders were puppets, but this one was clearly not. The moment the blood pattern spider died, 
the underground well exploded and large amounts of white liquid spewed out. After that, no spiders crawled out. When Joe and his company had slaughtered all the spiders, he walked to the well and saw that it was only a few meters deep. It resembled a huge pot, so he couldn't work out how that many spiders managed to crawl out of it. The military was firing wildly outside and killing the spiders that crawled out earlier. However, the effects were getting worse. Quite a number of soldiers were hung up by the spider silk, and some of them even had their bodies snapped into two by it. Despite almost failing to hold the defensive line, the significant drop in spiders that crawled out of the temple allowed them to gradually stabilize the situation. They succeeded? The officer in charge was surprised and delighted. He ordered the soldiers to increase their firepower and quickly eliminate all the spiders. By the time Joe Wen and company came out, most of the spiders outside had already been killed by the troops and other students who had rushed over to reinforce them. Students, thank you for everything you've done. The officer was about to say something when he suddenly received an urgent notification. There was another spot in the city where another spider horde had gathered. The troops there were asking for reinforcements. Students, if it's possible, can I ask you to come with us? The officer said in embarrassment. How troublesome. Where is it? Jones asked. Hence, Joe Wynn and company became an emergency team that was made to put out fires. They constantly shuttled through the city, in charge of clearing locations that constantly produced spiders. There were more than 10 places like this in Woyang City. And these were the discovered ones. It was unknown how many in the suburbs had yet to be discovered. The three of them should have split up and gone to different locations. But Hui Haifeng couldn't catch up with the blood pattern spider and Zhong Zia was colorblind. So they had no choice but to rush over together. Thankfully, with the two of them opening up a path, all Zhou Wen needed to do was focus on killing the blood pattern spider. The effects had increased significantly. After killing a few blood pattern spiders, Zhou Wen discovered a companion egg inside a blood pattern spider's body. Zhou Wen glanced at it with his mysterious phone. Sky spider larva, legendary youngling, life providence, son of the sky, strength, 19, speed, 20, constitution, 17, primordial energy, 20, talent skill, sky spider silk, sky spider sanguine venom, companion form, sky spider glove. Zhou Wen knew what was going on when he saw the annotation of a youngling. Typical companion beasts didn't have any room for growth. Legendaries were legendaries, impossible for them to further evolve. However, with the youngling annotation, it meant that there was still room for growth. As for the level of advancement after becoming an adult, that depended on its bloodline. Since it was a youngling of a sky spider, it would probably grow into existence like the sky spider in the sky. The three of them continuously moved to help the military kill the sky spider younglings. Many officers recognized them, but they didn't know their names. Zhou Wen and company had killed another sky spider youngling and were rushing to the next location when they suddenly saw the sky light up. It was daytime with the blazing sun high in the sky, but the radiance was even more dazzling than the sun. The trio couldn't help but look up. They saw a brilliant sword flash sweep across the sky as though it had swept across the entire horizon. The gigantic sky spider was instantly killed. The sky spider had been sliced in half and fell from the sky. It was unknown where it landed, but it caused the entire city to experience tremors for a moment like an earthquake. Joe Wen looked up into the sky. At the spot where the sword beam disappeared, a man in an officer's uniform and trench coat stood in midair like a god of war. And Tianzhua? Although he couldn't see in Tianzhua's face due to the distance, the latter's figure immediately made him recall in Tianzhua. Chapter 243 Deserving of a Commendation The calamity of the sky spider was finally over. The damaged city could be repaired, but the dead would never come back to life. Bury our brothers who died properly. Arrange to disperse the bereavement money as quickly as possible. Make sure that not a single cent goes astray. Also, if they have any problems at home, do your best to take care of them. We can't let their family cry while our brothers are bleeding. And Tianzhua sat behind his desk as he looked at the list of casualties and Sheng had brought over. His expression wasn't the best. He had said that he wanted to protect Luoyang, but today, Luoyang City nearly became a ruin. Everything has been arranged. Do you want to attend their funeral personally? And Sheng asked. Yes. And Tianzhua nodded with a heavy expression. Also, this is the list of those who contributed from below. Most of them are fine, but since many students from Sunset College had participated in the battle, our subordinates have also submitted their names. Three of them were personally added by Deputy Governor Qin, but... And Sheng paused for a moment. But what? And Tianzhua asked. Those three students didn't report to the military headquarters for registration, so they don't know their names. Deputy Governor Qin only mentioned three students, but didn't write their names. And Sheng said, Since they didn't head for the military headquarters, 
it means that they don't care about the rewards. They likely come from the big and powerful families. It's fine if they didn't register, but why would Uncle Chin especially highlight them? There should be some reason for this, right? And Tianzhu said thoughtfully. Overseer, you're wise. These three students helped our troops destroy 16 spider wells, significantly reducing our casualties. The officers below wish to report their names, but they don't know them. Deputy Governor Chin especially highlighted them after learning of the matter. I believe he hopes we can find out who they are and give them the commendations that they deserve. And Shun said, There aren't many youths these days who are so responsible. Such acts are indeed worthy of commendation. Find them and hold a commendation ceremony at Sunset College. I want to personally award them a reward and set them as a classic example. And Tianzhu nodded slightly when he heard that. Yes, overseer. And Shun replied. He took note of this matter and went to settle it after he was done with his other more pressing issues. The two clearly didn't realize that Zhou Wen was one of the three. This was because, from their understanding of him, Zhou Wen was clearly not someone who was willing to take risks. To be able to do such a thing as venturing deep into the spiders, Lair was definitely an action a hot-blooded youth would take. And Zhou Wen's character was clearly not one. When Zhou Wen returned to his dorm, the shocking sword beam from Intienzwa still appeared in his mind from time to time. From the looks of it, I'm still very far from Intienzwa. It's no wonder Lan said that he wants to advance to the peak of the epic stage before challenging Intienzwa. That does make sense. Zhou Wen also hoped that he could reach that level one day. Of course, thinking about it was useless. Therefore, Zhou Wen took out his mysterious phone and planned on continuing to enter the game to hunt monsters so that he could quickly increase his strength. Before Zhou Wen could enter the instance dungeon, the antelope came over to tug at his clothes. Zhou Wen knew that it wanted to eat again, so he took out the soy sauce beef he had placed in the chaos space. When he picked up the soy sauce beef, Zhou Wen saw a necklace beside it. Only then did he recall that he had snatched the necklace from John. John was immune to the granning wind from Banana Fairy because he was wearing the necklace. Although it was because the level of the Banana Fairy was still low, it was undeniable that the power of the necklace gave him a strong resistance against the wind element. However, Luoyang basically didn't have any wind elemental dimensional creatures. It hadn't come in handy after Zhou when had received the necklace. He took it out and saw that the gems embedded in it seemed to have a swirling vortex within. It was rather magical. Banana Fairy, who was flying around on a banana leaf, flew over when she saw the Goddess of Wind's protection. She landed on Zhou Wen's hand that was holding the necklace. She looked pitifully at Zhou Wen with her large eyes, her mouth producing a voice that Zhou Wen couldn't understand. It was unknown what she wanted to say. You want this necklace? Zhou Wen asked Banana Fairy. Banana Fairy hurriedly nodded as she looked at Zhou Wen with anticipation. What do you want it for? You can't wear such a huge necklace. You can't treat it like a snack, right? Zhou Wen casually asked. However, just as Zhou Wen finished his sentence, Banana Fairy grabbed the gem on the necklace and bit down. The stone that seemed to have wind flowing within was devoured by her. Hey, hey! I was just making a remark. Why did you really eat it? Zhou Wen's heart ached. This item was a treasure that could make him immune to wine-based attacks. Zhou Wen was prepared to take it to Sky City. Sky City was mostly filled with wind elemental creatures. With this necklace, Zhou Wen could kill dimensional creatures there without any worries. Now that Banana Fairy had swallowed the gem, he didn't know if the necklace had any effect. However, the Banana Fairy looked at Zhou Wen with a puzzled expression. She didn't quite understand why Zhou Wen was acting so sad even though he was the one who had asked her to eat it. However, this expression didn't last long. After swallowing the gem, wisps of wind gushed out from Banana Fairy's body. The wind turned into something visible to the naked eye as it spun around Banana Fairy and the banana leaf. Furthermore, the wind was getting stronger and stronger as it gradually formed a storm. The tables and chairs in the room were all swept up. If this continued, the entire building would probably be swept up by her. Joe Wynn hurriedly stowed away Banana Fairy into the chaos space as he wondered in surprise, could it be that Banana Fairy is going to evolve? She's already at the legendary stage. If she continues to evolve, wouldn't she be at the epic stage? The hurricane in the chaos space continued as Joe Wynn's consciousness entered. All he saw was a heavenly pillar like hurricane swirling, preventing him from seeing Banana Fairy's figure. The storm was getting more intense, and it didn't seem like it would stop anytime soon. Seeing the mess in the room, Zhou Wen couldn't help but shake his head slightly. He began packing up the items on the ground and just as he was done packing, he heard his cell phone ring. Little one, let me ask you something. Did my father ever give you anything special? Oh Yang Lan's voice came through the phone. I used to eat at the former principal's place often, but it seems like he never gave me anything. Sislan, has something happened? 
Zhou Wen noticed that Ouyang Lan's tone was somewhat odd. We've established contact with the expedition team, and they said that they lost contact with my father. I plan on making a trip to Zhuolu myself to figure out the situation. During my absence, you have to take good care of yourself. If there's anything you need, find in Sheng. He will help you. Ouyang Lan said a few simple words and hung up before Zhou Wen could ask about the situation. Chapter 244 Movement Technique Zhou Wen hurriedly called back, wanting to meet Ouyang Lan and tell her about the name card and number. However, it wasn't convenient to call her over the phone. It could be troublesome if the call was monitored. However, when Zhou Wen called, he heard the notification that the person he had just called had switched off their phone. He thought for a moment before calling and Sheng. Thankfully, and Sheng's call went through successfully. And Sheng, I called Sislan just now. Why is her phone switched off? Zhou Wen asked. Madam has already set off. She left in a hurry, so she didn't take any deeters. She's flying straight to Zhuolu County. On the way, she will pass through many areas with abnormal magnetic fields. It'll probably be very difficult to contact her on her phone. And Shun said, What happened? Why did Sis Lan leave in such a hurry? Zhou Wen frowned slightly. We aren't sure of the actual situation. All we know now is that one of the people who went to the dimensional zone for research with Mr. Ouyang has returned. He said that some accidents happened in the dimensional zones. They were separated from Mr. Ouyang, and many of them died. Only he escaped alive. Later, they sent a few more groups of people in, but the outcome was terrible many people died. Madam was really worried, so she went alone. Overseer couldn't stop her, so he rushed people over. You don't have to be worried. And Sheng, can you take me along? I also want to go to Zhuolu. Zhou Wen asked after some thought. There weren't many people in this world who didn't ask for anything in return. The former principal was one of them. Although Zhou Wen was a rather cold and aloof person, he wished to do something for the former principal. Zhou Wen knew that he was lacking, so it was useless entering the dimensional zone. However, he had the mysterious phone. If he could find the tiny palm symbol there, he could explore the dimensional zone in the game's instance dungeon and learn of the dangers ahead of time. It might be of help to the former principal. That ancient battlefield is extremely terrifying. Previously, those who entered with the principal were all experts at the epic stage. Even so, only one of them survived. It's useless for the average person to go. Don't worry, we will do our best to save old Mr. Ouyang. And Shun said, I don't feel any staying here either. I wish to wait at Zhuolu so that I can immediately learn the latest news about the former principal and Sislan. Zhou Wen said. And Shun hesitated for a moment before saying, The first group of people has already set off for Zuler. I'm afraid we won't be able to catch up. Wait another two days first. The people that Overseer has hired will arrive then. When the time comes, you can follow them. All right. Zhou Wen had no other choice but to agree. This world is changing too quickly, but my growth and strength is just too slow. Zhou Wen recently had an increasing feeling that his improvement was too slow. However, he didn't realize that typical college students who advanced to the legendary stage before they graduated from university were considered fast growers. He had already advanced to the legendary stage in his first year of university, so he was indeed a little too impatient at wanting to advance to the epic stage. Even with a background like the six families, with virtually unlimited resources supporting them, it would be difficult for students to advance to the epic stage in just a few years. I wish to slowly advance too, but this world isn't waiting for anyone. Zhou Wen sighed inwardly. He went to the golden flying ant once again. This time, Zhou Wen used Ghost Bride, hoping to use her ability to be immune to physical attacks. He wanted to see if she could pass through the white cocoon to see what was inside them. When he arrived, Ghost Bride was actually able to ignore the golden flying ant's attack. This delighted Zhou Wen greatly. But just as she was about to pass through the white cocoon, she was repelled by the cocoon. Is it still impossible? Zhou Wen was somewhat disappointed. All he could do was continue grinding Overlord's snakes, hoping that he could get one with Overlord's spear as soon as possible. Zhou Wen, can you do me a favor? Hui Haifeng suddenly asked while he was studying at Wang Ming Yuan's place. What is it? Zhou Wen asked in surprise. Can you practice movement techniques with me? In the past, I've been too focused on strength and techniques but I neglected my movement techniques. When we went to kill the spider, Zia, and you showed me the importance of movement techniques. I want to practice them, but it's not an ordinary technique. I developed a technique that's most suitable for me, so I need someone to help me, Wei Haifeng said. I can do it in the next two days. However, I might have something to attend to in two days and have to leave the school, Zhou Wen said. It should be done in two days. I don't have any clue, so I need to find a direction in actual combat. It shouldn't take too long, Wei Haifeng said. All right, let's begin now. 
Zhou Wen agreed. When he got to the training field with Hui Haifeng, Hui Haifeng had Zhou Wen attack him with all his might, but all he did was block or dodge. Hui Haifeng was rather well-rounded. He was a person with a relatively balanced development, but in terms of movement techniques, he was weaker than Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen pushed Dragon Gate Fairy skill to its limits and constantly attacked Hui Haifeng. Hui Haifeng seemed to have learned a few movement techniques that constantly swapped. Yet, he was still constantly struck by Zhou Wen. However, Hui Haifeng had improved very quickly. After familiarizing himself with Zhou Wen's movement techniques, the number of times he was hit began to decrease. The progress was extremely smooth, but after reaching a certain level, Hui Haifeng could no longer dodge Zhou Wen's attacks. No matter how hard he tried, there was no progress. The pressure on me isn't enough. Faster, Hui Haifeng said. All right. Zhou Wen switched to God Fiend Era and used his levitation ability to push his Dragon Gate Fairy skill to an even higher level. He flew across the sky and attacked Hui Haifeng from all directions, making it even harder for Hui Haifeng to dodge. The number of times he was hit increased. Hui Haifeng gritted his teeth as he constantly changed his movement techniques. The number of palm imprints on his body increased, but he had no intention of giving up. He continued to persist, hoping to find a path that was most suitable for him to break through while under heavy pressure. It's useless. It's still useless. My speed isn't as fast as Zhou Wen's. Nor do I have such powerful aerial combat capabilities as Zhou Wen. What can I do? Hui Haifeng didn't feel vexed over his flaws. Instead, he was searching for a chance to resolve the problem with his own abilities. Under Zhou Wen's relentless assault, Hui Haifeng gradually found a path that belonged to him. Suddenly, Hui Haifeng seemed to come to a realization. His movement technique changed drastically, one completely different from the movement technique he had used earlier. It was quite a bizarre change. Rather than saying that it was a movement technique, it was more accurate to say that it was a variation in the footwork and a fist technique. Hui Haifeng's movements were very tiny, but such tiny movements were very fast like an explosive impulse. This kind of movement couldn't be maintained at high speeds, but the continuous impulse movement caused Hui Haifeng's trajectory to become unpredictable. Chapter 245 Movement Technique 2 Haha, I finally found a suitable movement technique for myself. No matter how fast I am, I can't compare to you and Zia. I can't maintain a high speed like the two of you, but I can use my explosive impulse to accelerate myself to a speed faster than the two of you for a moment. And I have good endurance and can sustain such continuous impulses. This is the most suitable movement technique for me. Hui Haifeng laughed heartily. It's indeed a pretty good movement technique. Zhou Wen praised. Hui Haifeng wrapped his arm around Zhou Wen's shoulder and said, This movement technique was completed with your help. Half the credit goes to you. I'll give you half of the naming rights. You and I can think of one word and we'll use it as the name of this movement technique. In the future, when it becomes famous, your name will definitely be recorded in history. There's no need. I'm just a sparring partner, Zhou Wen said with a shrug. It's different. My movement technique was inspired by your movement technique. Half its name has to come from you. Come, quickly think of a name for it. I can't wait to perfect it. Hui Haifeng took out a piece of paper and a pen and handed them to Zhou Wen. He asked him to have a think before he wrote a single word. Although Zhou Wen found Hui Haifeng's method of naming rather ridiculous, he thought for a moment under Hui Haifeng's insistence and wrote the word, true, on the piece of paper. After the two of them finished writing, they unfolded the pieces of paper together and saw that there was also the word, true, on Hui Haifeng's paper. When they saw the words on the paper, they couldn't help but be slightly stunned. Hui Haifeng laughed. It looks like we're both like-minded and thought of the same thing. Let's do it this way. It won't be interesting to write another name. This movement technique shall be called Double True. Double True. Double True. True Double. This name sounds a little. Zhou Wen repeated it a few times before he realized, one, that something was amiss. After Hui Haifeng said it out loud, he clearly realized this problem. However, he didn't mind it and said with a smile, Double True movement technique doesn't sound nice, but since it's decided by fate, let's call it Double True. With that said, Hui Haifeng ran off. He couldn't wait to head back and continue researching and perfecting the double true movement technique. Zhou Wen shook his head and said, Wang Ming Yuan's disciples are all talented geniuses, but their personalities are weird. I originally thought Hui Haifeng was a normal person, but from the looks of it, he isn't very normal. And Sheng needed to do a lot of work. Not only was he and Tian's was adjutant, but he was also the unfamily's butler. He had to handle the matters of the military and the unfamily. Therefore, and Sheng had to organize people to handle many matters. When he received a name list, his expression turned extremely odd. There were three names written on the list one of them was Zhou Wen. These three names were specially written by Qin Wufu. 
and Tianzue had also mentioned that he wanted to personally reward the three. None of that was a problem, but one of the three names was Zhou Wen. Are you sure this list is correct? And Shum looked at the intelligence officer in front of him and asked. He had to be sure of this matter, or else there would be a huge problem. Yes, many officers have seen the three of them before. We have also checked the surveillance footage of some shops nearby and compared them to the school's database. We have confirmed that it's the three of them. Furthermore, we have also brought a photo to show those officers. It's confirmed without a doubt that it's the three of them. The intelligence officer said with certainty. Very good. You did well. Go ahead and busy yourself. And Shum looked at the name on the list, and a strange smile appeared on his lips. He took some documents, and got up to head to Ntianzwa's office. Come in. And Ntianzwa was handling some documents, clearly in a bad mood. He already had a headache over the various breakout creatures from the dimensional zones. Now that Ouyang Lan had gone to such a dangerous place, he was very worried. If it wasn't because there were too many problems in Luoyang, and he couldn't split himself, he yearned to fly to Zhulu immediately and get Ouyang Lan back. However, he knew Ouyang Lan's temper very well. Even if he went, it would be impossible for her to return because his temper was inherited from her. He knew very well that no one could stop her once she made up her mind. Overseer, the list of students who have rendered meritorious services has been compiled. The three students who helped us destroy the spider wells have also been found. The commendation ceremony has already been prepared. Should we start as planned? And Shum walked over and handed the document to Ntianzua. Act according to the plan. Go ahead and do it. Ntianzua didn't look at the documents. Usually, such matters were handled by Nsheng. He didn't think there would be any problems with such trivial matters. Yes! And Sheng took back the document and left in Tianzhu's office. Zhou Wen was constantly grinding at Snake Cavern, but he hadn't had a mutated overlord Snake Drop with Ever Victorious. Therefore, he planned on inviting Wang Lu to try it out at Snake Cavern. Wang Lu was listening to music in the living room when she heard the doorbell ring. When she opened the door, she couldn't help but be surprised that Zhou Wen had actually knocked on her door. It was unbelievable. Wang Lu, how much money do I need to hire you to accompany me to the snake cavern to hunt dimensional creatures? Zhou Wen asked Wang Lu. You want to hire me? Wang Lu was stunned before looking at Zhou Wen with interest. Yes, if it's possible, we can head to the snake cavern now. Zhou Wen nodded with certainty. You should know that I don't lack money, right? Wang Lu said with a smile. Zhou Wen was slightly disappointed. Sorry for disturbing you. With that said, Zhou Wen prepared to leave when Wang Lu hurriedly said. Hold on. It's not impossible for you to hire me, but I don't want money. I have one condition. What condition? Zhou Wen asked. I want to go shopping tonight. Be my lackey and help me carry things. Wang Lu said. No problem. I'm going to the snake cavern to kill the mutated overlord snakes. I wish to use your luck to have a mutated overlord snake egg drop. Zhou Wen shared his motives. It shouldn't be a big problem, as long as there's a mutated overlord snake there. Said Wang Lu with a smile. Zhou Wen and Wang Lu headed to Dragon Gate Grotto where Snake Cavern was. Zhou Wen was already very familiar with the place, so killing Overlord Snakes was very simple for him. He only wished to meet a mutated Overlord Snake. After all, it wasn't something that could be found at any time. If there wasn't a mutated Overlord Snake, it wouldn't matter how lucky Wang Lu was. However, Zhou Wen had clearly underestimated Wang Lu's luck. Not long after they entered Snake Cavern, they saw an Overlord Snake that resembled Black Jade. It was a mutated overlord snake. One, double in Chinese lingo can mean clueless slash idiot. So flipping the name becomes true idiot. Chapter 246 Cracking the Cocoon Zhou Wen was delighted when he saw the mutated overlord snake as he ordered the Saber Shield Knight to charge forward. The Saber Shield Knight had a life providence of offense and defense. Furthermore, his shield skills, Saber skills, and battle aura skills were very powerful, making him the best at restraining overlord snakes. The mutated overlord snake charged over as the saber shield knight activated the everlasting shield. The cross symbol on his shield immediately lit up with a holy radiance, as though it was a holy light that enveloped his entire body and his mount. He used the shield technique to block the mutated overlord snake's attack before chopping down with the saber in his right hand with cross sword sword beam to kill it. This was what the saber shield knight had always done. However, this time, the mutated overlord snake slammed into the shield, tearing it apart. It opened its mouth and bit down on the saber shield knight's head. Zhou Wen hurriedly got the demonized general to charge forward as he struck out with astral fist, sending the mutated overlord snake's body flying out. The demonized general and the saber shield knight attacked the overlord snake together, but they were still at a tiny disadvantage. When its tail swept, whatever was in its way directly shattered. Could it be that this is the ever-victorious skill? 
Zhou Wen was delighted instead of shocked. The mutated overlord snakes he had encountered in the game weren't that powerful. Baby tiger, attack, bite it. Wang Lu let her lucky baby tiger help. The abilities of lucky baby tiger were considered inferior amongst the epic stage, but it was naturally much stronger than the legendary stage. It was very agile as it dodged the attack from the overlord snake. It pounced forward and bit down on the overlord snake's neck, splitting it into two pieces. Zhou Wen allowed his pet to withstand the attacks of the other overlord snakes while he took bamboo blade and peeled off the overlord snake's head. Immediately, he saw two crystals inside. One crystal was obviously a stats crystal, while the other was a black metal egg. It was none other than the mutated overlord snake egg. Mission accomplished. Remember to be my lackey tonight, said Wan Lu with a cheeky smile. All right, I'll definitely be there on time. Zhou Wen put away his companion egg and rushed out of snake cavern with Wan Lu. After returning to his dorm, Zhou Wen hurriedly used his cell phone to snap the mutated overlord snake companion egg. Mutated overlord snake, legendary. Life providence, born overlord. Strength, 20. Speed, 19. Constitution, 20. Primordial energy, 16. Talent skill, death wrap, devourer, ever victorious. Companion form, spear. Zhou Wen was delighted to see this. Indeed, it was an excellent grade mutated overlord snake. Not only did it possess the ever victorious skill, but it also had another skill, devourer. It was much better than the one which dropped for him previously. Luck is indeed useful. From the looks of it, I have to think of a way to have a lucky baby tiger drop. Zhou Wen already had the urge to head to the Binyang Cave to grind for one. He now had the two epic skills, Ghost Steps and Transcendent Flying Immortal. He also had the Overlord Spear with Ever Victorious. There was likely a chance for him to kill the weakest epic tiger alone. However, what was most pressing for Zhou Wen was still the White Cocoon protected by the Golden Flying Ant. Therefore, he headed to Ant City to try it out first. After hatching the mutated Overlord Snake, it didn't take long for a black metal spear that was about 12 feet long to appear in Zhou Wen's hand. Its entire body was made of black metal, and the two blades on the spear emitted a cold glow that sent shivers down one's spine. Zhou Wen had never practiced with spears before, but he had a legendary primordial energy skill penetrating pierce. It possessed decent armor piercing strength, which suited Zhou Wen's current use. He waved his overlord spear a few times to familiarize himself with its weight and center of mass before putting it away and opening the Ant Nest Instance Dungeon. After storming all the way to Ant City, Zhou Wen couldn't be bothered clearing the ordinary flying ants and armored ants. He allowed his pets to battle the ant horde before taking Truth Listener and Ghost Bride to the Golden Flying Ant's nest at the top. The Golden Flying Ant lunged forward at an astonishing speed. Zhou Wen used Ghost Bride to lure the Golden Flying Ant, while he used Ghost Steps to instantly charge to the side of the White Cocoon. With the Golden Flying Ant being led to the other side by Ghost Bride and how Zhou Wen's Ghost Steps were ridiculously fast, making him no way slower than the Golden Flying Ant, it was already too late for it to rush back. Zhou Wen held the Overlord's spear and used Penetrating Pierce. At the same time, he unleashed all his strength and stabbed the White Cocoon. The spear's blade chafed against the White Cocoon, making metal grinding sounds. It was harsh to the ears. Zhou Wen was alarmed. The Overlord's spear's tip had only stabbed a few inches in, failing to completely penetrate the cocoon. The Golden Flying Ant had already flashed over. It released golden beams at the blood-colored avatar furiously. The silver wings on the back of the blood-colored avatar flapped as Zhou, when used Ghost steps again, and charged out of the nest. At the same time, he ordered Ghost Bride to attack the white cocoon to attract the golden flying ant's attention. The golden flying ant was fooled as expected. It stopped chasing after Zhou Wen and charged at Ghost Bride. Golden beams of light shot through Ghost Bride's body, but they didn't injure her. Zhou Wen couldn't help but sigh. The strength of a dimensional creature isn't absolute. If one's attributes and skills are restrained, even an inferior companion beast might not necessarily be useless. Using Dao Body to keep replenishing his primordial energy, Zhou Wen charged into the nest and stabbed the same spot again. However, he failed to completely pierce through the white cocoon and only broke a portion of it. Zhou Wen's attack was augmented by Ever Victorious and the armor-piercing strength of Penetrating Pierce, making the destructive power extremely terrifying. Yet, the cocoon remained resilient in a shocking manner. After exiting the nest once again, Zhou Wen used the same trick to constantly entice the golden flying ant and repeatedly attack the white cocoon. He repeated it dozens of times until Zhou Wen struck the same spot on the white cocoon again and felt the tip of the spear lighten as though he had penetrated half the spear into it. It penetrated. Zhou Wen was delighted as he hurriedly pulled out his spear. When Zhou Wen pulled out the overlord's spear, he saw a beam shoot out from the hole. It was orange-red in color and looked extremely bizarre, but it didn't seem to have any lethal force. 
It was like the light of an electric lamp. Zhou glanced at the white cocoon's hole and saw that it was entirely orange inside. And the source of the orange red light was actually a curled creature. The creature looked a little like a human. Its body was curled up and its hands hugged its legs as it curled into a ball. Its orange long hair covered most of its body. On his head, there was a pair of strange feelers and on his back, there was a layer of translucent thin wings. The thin wings were very soft and looked like they hadn't fully matured. Inside the white cocoon is indeed a dimensional creature, but it doesn't look anything like an ant. Joe and dodged the golden flying ant's angry attack as he thought to himself. Chapter 247 Taboo Joe and timed his opportunity and once again charged to the side of the white cocoon. He thrust the spear in again, but this time, he stabbed straight at the strange creature inside the cocoon. Ding! Joe had heard a crisp sound like the sound of jade colliding. The spear tip failed to stab into the supple-looking skin. Instead, it felt like it had collided with a metal wall. So hard. Joe Wen was alarmed as he began to suspect the level of the dimensional creature within the white cocoon. However, at this point, it was impossible for Joe Wen to give up. All he could do was try, again and again, hoping to use repeated attacks to tear through the creature's skin. Unfortunately, it was clearly futile. The continuous attacks failed to break through the creature's skin. It was as if it was an indestructible piece of rock. At this point, how could Zhou Wen be willing to give up? He gritted his teeth and activated the power of Sai of the King. The strength, primordial energy skills, primordial energy art of a life providence was different. To the typical person, it was a different kind of strength mode. However, to Zhou Wen, be it in game or in reality, using the Sai of the King was a very dangerous matter. Once life providence was activated, not only would the blood-colored avatar in the game be affected, he would even be affected by the power of the Sai of the King in reality. If it wasn't used properly, Zhou Wen would end up exploding to his death. Therefore, Zhou Wen wasn't willing to use the Sai of the King if he didn't have a reason to do so. Even if he could stop in time, he needed to lie in bed for a few days before his body and bones would slowly heal. The pain and itchiness he ended up suffering was unimaginable to others. Having used the Sai of the King twice, Zhou Wen already had a taste of the feeling. If it was possible, he was unwilling to attempt it a third time. But now, he had no choice but to use it again. With Overlord's spear with Ever Victorious unable to injure the creature within the white cocoon, it was unknown when he would have the ability to kill the creature inside. A terrifying force instantly descended upon Zhou Wen, causing the blood-colored avatar's strength to surge. He didn't dare to delay it all. With Ghost Steps and Transcendent Flying Immortal, the Overlord's spear in his hand brought with it the terrifying power that tore through space. Instantly, it stabbed into the white cocoon once again. When the spear beam struck the creature's skin, it shattered and scattered like glass shards. When the spear tip stabbed into the skin, it finally broke through its fair skin and stabbed a little deeper. However, it was just a little. It was probably less than a centimeter from the tip of the spear. This left Joe when alarmed. Although the sigh of the king's power had only just been activated, it was enough to kill an existence like the ghost king back in the Yin Yang world. And with such strength, coupled with the fact that he had attacked with overlord spears ever victorious, he had only barely torn open the creature's flesh. This made Zhou Wen suspect that the dimensional creature in the cocoon might very well be at the true mythical stage, as spoken of in legends. Although Banana Fairy and Truth Listener were also at the mythical stage, they were only considered half-mythicals. They might be able to advance to the mythical stage in the future, but that was not the case now. At the instant the tip of the spear stabbed into the flesh, the life form in the cocoon twitched. His head slowly turned, revealing part of his side profile. He looked flawless like a figure that had walked out of a painting. An orange-red, I also revealed itself as it stared at the blood-colored avatar through the hole bored through by the spear. The eye exuded an indescribable diabolical feeling. Its pupil was like an orange gem, without any impurities. However, with that gaze, even Zhou Wen, who was outside the game, had goosebumps. Bam! Almost at the same time, a force blasted out of the cocoon, instantly sending the overlord's spear and the blood-colored avatar flying. The blood-colored avatar flew right across Ant City's sky like a cannonball before slamming into a stone wall. Although the blood-colored avatar didn't die immediately, Zhou Wen could sense that all the bones in its body had broken. The pain inundated Zhou Wen's nerves, but this time, the bones weren't broken by Sai of the King, but by the terrifying force. That must be a mythical creature. A mere glance without any physical activity was enough to quake the blood-colored avatar that had activated the Sai of the King to the brink of death. Such power was just too terrifying. Clang. Nas. The overlord's spear that had been snapped into several pieces slammed into the stone wall. The outcome of the overlord's spear was worse than Zhou Wen's. After it snapped, it immediately vanished and dissipated like ash. It left Zhou Wen heartbroken. 
It hadn't been easy for him to obtain the Overlord Spear with Ever Victorious, but it was destroyed just like that. Although this was a game where a companion beast could be revived, Zhou Wen's first reaction when he saw the Overlord Spear destroyed was a heartache. But as the Overlord Spear disappeared, a drop of sparkling orange blood dripped down from the tip of the spear. It was a gem the size of a grain of rice. It just remained suspended in midair. Discovered mythical blood essence. Absorb it? With the notification popping in game, Zhou Wen didn't hesitate and hurriedly chose to absorb it. The blood-colored avatar stretched out its hand with great difficulty. The sigh of the king had already been deactivated, and the blood-colored avatar's bones were almost completely fractured. Both his arms and fingers were bent as he stretched out with great difficulty to touch the drop of blood. At the same time, the game screen suddenly turned black. Zhou Wen immediately had the urge to curse. The blood-colored avatar had failed to hold on and died right at that moment. If the blood was gone from the respawn, Zhou Wen's efforts and hard work would have all been in vain. Just as Zhou Wen was about to drip his blood and revive the blood-colored avatar, he suddenly felt a strange power flow out of the mysterious phone, instantly filling his entire body. Due to the heavy burden of using the Sigh of the King, he had already shown signs of internal bleeding in several spots. Under the nourishment of the strange energy, he gradually snapped to his senses and recovered at an extremely fast speed. In just a few seconds, Zhou Wen's damaged body returned to normal. As for the strange power, it remained fused into his body, giving him an indescribable sense of comfort. He felt as though all his cells had been revived, as though he had been given a new lease of life. After a long while, this feeling gradually disappeared. After everything returned to normal, Zhou Wen hurriedly dripped a drop of blood onto the mysterious phone, allowing the blood-colored avatar to revive, as he carefully read the blood-colored avatar's information. With this look, Zhou Wen immediately realized that his primordial energy stat had reached 21 points. Just like before, there was an additional word behind his primordial energy value. Taboo. Zhou Wen looked at the word, but he didn't understand what it meant. He thought to himself, strength has the postfix of sun because it absorbed the god power crystal of the sun god. Speed has trajectory as its postfix because it absorbed the god power crystal of the god of trajectory. Could it be that there's also a god in the cocoon? Is his name the god of taboos? Joey could only make this guess, but he was unable to confirm it. Chapter 248 The Hope of Advancing to Epic The blood he obtained from the cocoon allowed Joe when to see the hope of advancing to the epic stage. He was just short of his constitution reaching 21 points. Now, Joe Wen was aware of two locations where white cocoons could be found. One of them was at the nest of the chick's mother. Joe Wen didn't dare go there. Even Ah Shum didn't dare put up any resistance. Even if he were to activate Sai of the King, he would probably only be courting death. Besides, now that the chick was with Zhou Wen and had helped him before, Zhou Wen couldn't bring himself to touch the white cocoon that the giant bird was protecting. Then the only one left is the white cocoon that's protected by the WRM under the old dragon cave. Zhou Wen felt a headache coming on when he thought of the WRM. The WRM was obviously much more powerful than the golden flying ant. Perhaps the WRM itself was a mythical creature to begin with. If he wanted to tear it through the cocoon and obtain the blood of the living creature within, he might as well have a fight with the WRM and die a faster death. Although he knew that there was no chance, Zhou Wen was bent on trying. As expected, before he even reached the stone pillar, the WRM was jolted awake as it opened its mouth and roared, instantly killing the blood-colored avatar. Even Ghost Bride's soul body wasn't spared. Her soul was shattered by the dragon's roar. How can this be obtained? It's impossible. Unless my body can withstand the power of the Sigh of the King and allow its full powers to manifest, only then might there still be a sliver of a chance. Zhou Wen put down his phone, having no intention of trying it a second time. It was useless even if he tried. They were not at the same level. In front of absolute strength, everything was in vain. Zhou Wen, where are you? I've been waiting for you all day. Wan Lu called, her voice sounding rather angry. Sorry, I'll be there soon. Only then did Zhou Wen recall that he still needed to be Wan Lu's lackey that evening. He hurriedly washed his face and left the building. What's wrong with you? You're a man and you're late. You are in no way a gentleman, Wang Lu said angrily. I'm sorry. My bad? Zhou Wen felt that there was no way of explaining himself because he had indeed done something wrong. All he could do was lower his head and admit his mistake. Since it's your fault, you have to accept punishment. Do you have any objections? Wang Lu said. No. Zhou Wen shook his head. That's what you said. You are not to go back on your word. Wang Lu narrowed her eyes. Apart from committing murder, arson, and immoral acts, you can punish me for anything. Zhou Wen could only accept it. It's not that serious. Follow me. 
Wang Lu beamed even more, happy as she led Zhou when out of the school. Zhou had originally believed that randomly leaving Sunset College was a privilege of people like in Sheng. Evenly Xian couldn't casually leave the school, but Wang Lu had easily led Zhou when out. It's still good to be privileged. Zhou inside inwardly. There was already a car waiting outside the school. Wang Lu led Zhou when to the car, and they headed for the biggest commercial street in Luoyang. Xin Xiyuan Xiyuan Crystal Shop was also on the street. Wang Lu did not go to the crystal shop. She went to a store selling all kinds of cosmetics and clothes. Zhou Wen couldn't understand why Wang Lu was buying these things. Sunset College was a partially militaristic school. Back on campus, students were only allowed to wear uniforms. The school uniforms were basically simple military uniforms. Moreover, the college didn't allow students to put on makeup. It was alright to secretly put on some light makeup, but if it was a little more obvious, the student council would find out and carry out disciplinary action. Although Wang Lu was one of the elites of the college, Zhou Wen hadn't seen her wear makeup when he saw her in school. He really didn't know what those things were bought for. However, Wang Lu was very happy as she flitted through the various shops. Soon, Zhou Wen became a humanoid rack with various bags hanging over his body. They were all things Wang Lu had bought. Does it look good? Wang Lu walked out of the fitting room and walked around Zhou Wen in a lovely dress. She posed in a beautiful way as she asked Zhou Wen. Such clothes aren't suitable for practice or battle, right? Zhou Wen said as he looked at the various cloth decorations hanging from the clothes. Wang Lu glared at Zhou Wen fiercely. I'm happy, and it's all out of my own free will. This, this, and this. Give me one of the same. Color. Hence, Zhou Wen had a lot more bags on him. Although with his physique, it wasn't a problem for him to carry more, he just couldn't understand the point of buying them. The clothes looked identical, just in different colors. After shopping for nearly four hours, and having two sumptuous meals in the middle, Wang Lu was finally satisfied. She went back to school with bags of all shapes and sizes. Zhou Wen took the items into Wang Lu's building and was about to leave when Wang Lu stopped him. Are you leaving just like that? Wang Lu asked Zhou Wen. Didn't I already fulfill my promise? Zhou Wen looked at Wang Lu in puzzlement. The promise is fulfilled, but the punishment for being late hasn't been done yet. Don't tell me you want to go back on your word. Wang Lu's eyes were filled with doubt about Zhou Wen's character. Of course not. Tell me how you would like to punish me. Zhou Wen said as he spread out his hands. Actually, it's very simple. I only bought the cosmetics looking at the color palette. I can't see the real effects. Help me try them. Wang Lu said with a cheeky smile as she took out a lipstick. You want me to try this? Zhou Wen immediately widened his eyes. You want to go back on your word? Wang Lu's questioning eyes became more obvious. No. Zhou Wen gritted his teeth as the words seemed to be squeezed out through his teeth. That's good. Sit tight. Don't move. Wang Lu was immediately delighted as she took out all the new cosmetics she had bought and swept them across Zhou Wen's face. Zhou Wen sat there motionless, feeling as though he was sitting on pins and needles. Always angering me. Today, I'll let you know what happens when you anger me. A devilish tail seemed to grow behind Wang Lu. When it was almost midnight, and Jing returned from the device room. When she passed by Zhou Wen's building, she subconsciously took a glance and saw that it wasn't lit. Just as she was about to return to her own building, she heard the door open to the building beside hers. A figure walked out. And Jing originally thought nothing of it, imagining it was Wang Lu. But to her surprise, the figure walked to Zhou Wen's building and entered the yard's door. Zhou Wen. And Jing couldn't help but be taken aback when she saw that it was Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen also saw in Jing, but his relationship with her was never the great. He nodded slightly, as a form of greeting before opening the door and entering his building. Just a few results to show for, and he's already so brazen. Not only does he game every day, but he's also fooling around in the dorm of a girl in the middle of the night. I really wonder what grandpa and mom see in him. And Jing felt extremely unhappy, as her good mood instantly vanished. Chapter 249 Assembly After returning to his dorm, Zhou Wen entered Dragon Gate Grotto's instance dungeon and prepared to grind for the Lucky Tiger. Wang Lu had allowed Zhou Wen to realize the magic of the luck stat. Therefore, he wished to grind for a Lucky Baby Tiger to increase his luck stat. It would be easier to take the Lucky Baby Tiger along with him if he wanted any companion egg to drop in the future. The only problem now was that Zhou Wen needed to hatch an epic companion egg at the legendary stage. It would be somewhat difficult. Zhou Wen didn't know how Wang Lu had managed it. He planned on trying to use the Dao body's rapid recovery of primordial energy. The tiger was relatively weak to begin with, so the amount of primordial energy he needed probably would be reduced. Perhaps, he could give it a try. In reality, the tiger was in high demand, but there was no one in game to vie for it besides Zhou Wen. After Zhou Wen arrived at Binyang Cave, 
he quickly found the tiger. Without another word, he summoned his overlord's spear and circled to the back of the tiger with ghost steps and stabbed it in the rectum. The tiger's reaction wasn't slow. With a flying pounce, it dodged the fate of having its rectum torn through. In return, its tail lashed out like a steel whip. Jowen had already studied it thoroughly. As he dodged sideways, he thrust out again, stabbing the tiger's thin waist. The overlord's spear finally stabbed into the tiger's waist. With ever victorious showing its effect, the tiger let out a tragic cry when the spear stabbed through its skin. A blood hole opened up, and its pelvis was damaged. With its movements greatly restricted, Zhou Wing quickly finished it off. This was the first time he had killed an epic creature alone in game. Although it was the weakest epic, it gave Zhou Wen a sense of accomplishment. However, it was very unlikely that the tiger would drop a companion egg. Zhou Wen didn't expect to have the lucky baby tiger drop on his first try, he could only try in passing. It wasn't something he could keep respawning. This was because there was only one tiger in game every time, just like reality. After Zhou Wen killed it, he had to drip his blood to respawn, allowing the game's instance dungeon to be refreshed before he could kill the tiger again. It would be such a waste. Zhou Wen would kill the baby tiger every time he dripped his blood for respawning. Then, he would go elsewhere to grind for companion eggs or explore new instance dungeons. He waited until he died before respawning to have a chance of killing the baby tiger again. I wonder if there are any other companion beasts that can add to my luck stat. When Zhou Wen was free, he went online to search for more information. He discovered that luck stat was indeed rare. Although other companion beasts had similar effects, just like Little Tiger, they were targets that were vied for by many. It was difficult to obtain them. Besides the baby tiger, the other known companion beasts with a luck stat were extremely powerful epic creatures. Their combat strength was many times stronger than the lucky baby tigers. While checking on the information, Joe would also saw another companion beast with the opposite luck stat. It was born with bad luck or, in other words, filled with misfortune. One of the most famous ones in the East District was Tai Sui. If one had this companion beast, not only would it be the case of not having any luck with drops, but even buying a packet of instant noodles would come without any seasoning packets. Entering a dimensional zone would definitely result in trouble. It was an essential pet if one wanted to have a death wish. The last epic expert who had obtained Tai Sui originally believed that he had obtained a powerful companion beast. He had even shared the information he gained on his WeChat moments to flaunt it, but he ended up dying in a dimensional zone the next day. Who the hell would hatch such a companion beast? Zhou Wen carefully read the description of Tai Sui and remembered its appearance. It would be truly troublesome if he were to accidentally hatch it in the future. Just as they were about to continue grinding instance dungeons, the school sent a notice to all the students requesting that they gather at the field. It was unknown what had happened. When he arrived at the field, he saw Wang Fei and his classmates already lined up. Li Xian was waving at him. Zhou Wen hurriedly walked over and stood behind Li Xian as he asked, Li Xian, what happened at the school? Why are all the students suddenly gathered? Such situations were rare in Sunset College. It focused more on pragmatic education, so it was rare for it to organize any student assemblies. I have no idea. I was sleeping soundly when I was awoken by a message. I don't know what happened either, Li Xian said as he spread out his hands. Soon, all the teachers and students gathered. Zhou Wen found it odd that there were even rows of soldiers on the field. Although there were troops stationed on campus, they only guarded the school's entrance or special places, like the dimensional zone's entrances. They rarely interacted with students. Yet, the soldiers were participating in the student assembly held by the college. Moreover, the soldiers' uniforms seemed different from those of the ordinary soldiers. It seemed like they were not the usual soldiers in the college. After the managing vice chancellor went on stage to say a few words, Zhou Wen and the rest of the students realized that the student assembly was to commend the students who had contributed when the sky spider wreaked havoc. Zhou Wen didn't pay much attention to this because he, Hui Haifeng, and Zhong Zia hadn't reported their names. The school didn't include them, so even the rewards had nothing to do with them. It wasn't that Zhou Wen and company weren't willing to accept the rewards, but that they originally believed that the credits given weren't much. The trio weren't people who lacked credits, so they were too lazy to report it. When the time came, the military would have to verify it, and it would be extremely troublesome. Since Zhong Zia and Hui Haifeng found it troublesome, and Zhou Wen didn't have any strong desire for credits, the three of them hadn't bothered reporting. If he had known that there would be actual material rewards, Zhou Wen would have reported his name no matter what. But now, it was too late for regrets. As Zhou Wen was thinking about this, he saw a few military officers arrive in the field. They were being escorted by soldiers. The managing vice chancellor and the school's upper management hurriedly stood up to welcome them inviting the leading officer to the main seat. Wow, it's Overseer in. He's so handsome. 
I've been in school for three years, but this is the first time I've seen the Overseer in person. He's even more valiant and imposing than the legends. It's nothing to get excited about. We Luoyang locals often get to see him. Instantly, there was a commotion among the students. And Tianzhuo was like a god of war in Luoyang. Many of the students believed that he was a target and an idol to aim for in cultivation. In fact, a large part of the reason many outstanding students chose Sunset College was because it was the in-family's school and in Tianzhuo had also graduated here. Zhou Wen didn't feel anything special when he saw in Tianzhuo. He treated him like a passerby. And Tianzhuo had acute senses. Even among the thousands of students, he immediately sensed Zhou Wen's spot. However, he didn't even look at him, as though Zhou Wen didn't exist in his books. And Sheng nodded at Zhou Wen with a smile, but the smile seemed to carry a deeper meaning. Chapter 250 We are honored by them. The process of the assembly was very simple. There weren't many bigwigs speaking. Only An Tianzhuo spoke a few words. Although he didn't say a lot, his umph left many students boiling with excitement. They wished they could join the army and fight to protect their homeland. Many girls even had the urge to follow An Tianzhuo to battle on the battlefield, even if they died for him. Even Zhou Wen had to admit that An Tianzhuo was the kind of person who was born with the charisma of a leader. If someone else were to say the same words, it would only appear awkward and pretentious. However, An Tianzhuo's delivery was infectious. He had a convincing charm, but Zhou Wen found it odd regardless. Following that, it was the award ceremony for the students who had helped the army. All of them were named and invited on stage to receive their awards and military honors. Zhou Wen listened for quite a while, but didn't hear his name. It wasn't unexpected. And Tianzhuo was in a rather good mood today. Although he had had many troubles to deal with recently, he was in a better mood after seeing so many outstanding students at Sunset College. These people would imbue the army with fresh blood in the future. And Tianzhuo was waiting for the three most outstanding students' turn and was prepared to personally decorate them with the medals. Overseer, the rewards for the other students have been distributed. Only the three students with outstanding contributions are left. Do you want to personally announce them? And Sheng came to and Tianzhuo's side and handed a script to him. All right. And Tianzhuo received the script and stood up from his chair before walking to the stage. This was a very good opportunity to promote the military. And Tianzhuo hoped that more students would be inclined to join the military in the future. This was one of the reasons why he had personally come to hand out the awards. I'm very relieved that there are so many outstanding students in my alma mater. While the students from other colleges are still studying hard, you have already grown to become a cornerstone of the league. On the battlefield, you poured your blood, using your bodies to create a steel wall for our siblings, parents, and elders. You have not let down the name of Sunset College. And Tianzhuo read the script written by An Sheng and found it somewhat odd. It didn't seem to be his normal style. This fellow has been lazing off again. He must have gotten a subordinate to pen it. With this thought in mind, and Tianzhuo took a glance at the script before continuing. He had a photographic memory. Just one glance was enough for him to memorize the entire contents of the piece of paper in his head. There was no need for him to continue reading from the script. Among excellent students like you, three of you have made me proud. They aren't afraid of death, nor are they afraid of danger. They went deep into the spider's nest and destroyed the source of the disaster, saving the lives of countless citizens. They used actions to prove their excellence and, as a man, I'm glad that Sunset College has such students. I'm also proud that there are such men among humanity. Seeing them makes me see the League's future. It's a bright and glorious future. And Tianzhuo was almost done reading the contents of the first page, so he flipped to the second page and took another look. The content on the second page was very simple. There were only three names. And Tianzhuo continued, Let me invite these three outstanding students up on stage. I want to personally decorate them with a medal. Everyone, please remember their names. All of us should be proud of them. These three students are Hui Haifeng, Zhong Zia, Zhou, Wen. When he said the last name, and Tianzhuo's eyes glared at Sheng, as if he was shooting daggers at him with an extremely fierce killing intent. If looks could kill, Sheng would have been torn apart. However, Sheng lowered his head, as if he had not seen anything as he concentrated on taking notes. When Zhou had heard his name, he was slightly taken aback before his expression turned extremely odd. The words that had just been said left him feeling a little odd. Furthermore, it came from Tianzhuo's mouth, making him find it even stranger. And Jing was stunned when she heard Zhou Wen's name. She couldn't believe that Tianzhuo would use such words to describe Zhou Wen, much less believe that he was one of the three. Was the person that the overseer mentioned really Zhou Wen? Could it be someone sharing the same name? It wasn't only in Jing who didn't believe it. Even Wang Fei found it unbelievable. She had no way of connecting the selfish and indifferent Zhou Wen, who was engrossed in games, with the outstanding student Tianzhuo mentioned. However, 
Wang Fei soon realized that the school only had one student named Zhou Wen, so it was impossible for it to be someone else who shared the same name. Why are you still standing there in a daze? Hurry up and go on stage to accept the medal. This is a medal, not something meaningless like a commendation certificate. Furthermore, it's personally given out by Overseer in. I'm so envious. If I were to obtain such an honor, I could brag about it for three years. Li Xian said as he nudged the day's Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen hesitated for a moment. He didn't wish to have any interaction with Ntianzhua. Furthermore, with their past, it made him feel uncomfortable standing in front of Ntianzhua and letting him decorate him with a medal. What are you waiting for? Wang Fei came over and gave Zhou Wen a nudge. She felt gratified that she had taken Zhou Wen to Wang Mingyuan. Not long after, Zhou Wen had become so responsible and reliable. Although she found it a little unreal, this was her initial wish for Zhou Wen to go on stage to receive a medal. It was also a form of affirmation of her educational methods. It left her feeling honored. Seeing that Hui Haifeng and Zhou Zia were already on stage and how everyone was looking at him, Zhou Wen had no choice but to walk up to the podium. And Shun walked over with a tray in hand. And Tianzhui expressionlessly helped Hui Haifeng and Zhou Zia wear the medals before rewarding each of them with a companion egg. When it was Zhou Wen's turn, and Tianzhua walked over with a deadpan expression. His eyes met Zhou Wen's for a second before they repelled like magnets of the same polarity. Their eyes subconsciously darted to the side. And Tianzhua instantly returned to normal, as he expressionlessly put on Zhou Wen's medal. However, his actions were clearly much faster than when he decorated Hui Haifeng and Zhou Zia. Let us applaud Hui Haifeng, Zhou Zia, and Zhou Wen for their sheer fervor, bravery, and responsibility. And Shun said. The applause below the stage boomed like thunder. Zhou Wen and Ntianzhua felt uncomfortable standing together, and their expressions were extremely stiff. And Shang took a photo of the two of them and recorded this moment. After Zhou Wen left the venue, he immediately took off the medal and threw it into the chaos space. Then, he felt discomfort in his chest as he patted it, as though he was swatting away something. And Tianzhua got into the car and took off his white gloves, throwing them at Nsheng. With a cold expression, he said, Drive! 